Hi, Scissorin here with a very long episode called Everything Explained. This is going to be an extremely long video for those looking to get into Path of Exile. This is a great video for completely new players. Uh, we are going to try to explain every term in the game. I'm going to be leveling a character from a completely fresh start and um, it will go all the way until the campaign or close to. The majority of the information will be in the first two or three hours because it will be very content dense in the start. And if you don't like this long videos, then we do have shorter videos, but this is sort of based on something you can play along too. Other than that, it is going to be very similar to a regular stream, but it is, I'm not going to be focusing on chat so much and we are just going to be explaining a lot. So, uh, we will also have like feedback. Uh, there's the exclamation mark feedback command in my Twitch chat. So if you do have feedback on something that can be improved, uh, episodes like these are very hard to make, especially as an experienced player, because you don't always know what new people don't know. And if I do use a term that I for some reason haven't explained, I want to try not to do that. But uh, feel free to ask in the comments on the YouTube channel, and um, hopefully people will answer it. It's obviously very easy to use the term. That isn't super easy. So, this is going to assume they already have Path of Exile installed. We're not going to go that basic. And uh, we will, however, go very, very basic. So, once you log into Path of Exile, whether you're using Steam or the standalone client, and there's not like a large difference there, you will have the option to create a character. You have Standard, and then you have the Hardcore or Solo self on. Hardcore means that when your character dies, it goes back to Standard. Soul self on means that you cannot trade or play or interact with other players at all. And then, these, generally, I don't recommend standard for new players. This is because whenever you've played something called a challenge league or a temporary league, um, your characters will, at the end of the three months, which is how long the leagues last, go to standard anyway. So there's no reason ever to start in standard. You're always better off starting in one of the temporary three-month leagues. And this is like a huge expansion. They come around every three months, loads of new content, and you have to restart the game. For those that don't like restarting every three months, you can then continue playing your character on standard. You do not lose it. Um, and then obviously we have the same options, whether you want to play softcore or hardcore. Uh, so for example, Soul Cell Fun is also called SSF, and we'll be using those terms throughout. So... I have made a private league. It's just a feature for racing and stuff like that. But obviously I've already played on the leagues. So I wanted to make sure that I have a fresh start so I can remember to explain everything. Now we are going to play the duelist character. And something that's really important in Path of Exile, and it's great that you're here watching this video, is that, well actually it's a bad thing. It doesn't have really good respec options. In a lot of games, uh, I would very often recommend like, yeah, just play around and try, see what you like. And then, you know, if it doesn't go well, you can probably just change. Path of Exile does have respec options, but they're pretty punishing for a new player. So I recommend following a build guide. And we are going to open an old one. There will be a new one for this. We're not expecting a lot of nerfs um, this league. So I'm going to open the one we had for our last time. They're pretty detailed, very popular, and are very handholdy for new players. And you are going to need a third-party program called Path of Building, also called POB. Uh, you are also going to need a loot filter. And as you can see, we have like the things you need here. And they're very easy to install and understand. Now, obviously, Path of Exile is an extremely deep game. And this might already sound very daunting. But it is. I would recommend it heavily as a main game. It is a very good thing to spend a lot of hours in. Either way, we are going to copy paste this. We already have Path of Building downloaded. I'm going to show you how you import a build now. You open up, we click New. And we are going to be doing some changes to this build. And you'll also often see content creators not exactly following their own builds. Uh, very often, the reason for that would be something like, you know, a build is static. It'll be good. But maybe if you're playing hardcore, if you're playing solo self on, you're going to need to change some things for yourself, right? That doesn't mean that it's not safe for new players to follow. So here we have path of building. I'll uh, show you again because I think I did that a bit fast. We're going to click on new character, the import tab up in the top left. Click on import from website and then we paste it in here. Import and import. 
say that a bit fast out of habit. Um, there might be a few things like that because it's going to be a very long session. So, uh, thanks for the on YouTube. You can slow it down. This is also sadly going to be unedited. It would just take such a long time to compile. So whenever there's a break or something, you can just skip past it on YouTube. Sub alerts are off. I do appreciate them though. Right. So this is very daunting. This is the Path of Excel skill tree and you can see class ascendancies. This is like subclasses basically um, that dotted around the tree. And you can see the skill tree is just incredibly daunting. Very, very large. And this is why you want a build guide. So what I've done is, is if you click down here, you can see that we have different trees. That makes it a lot less daunting. What we do is we have a step-by-step -step version. So that instead of thinking you just have this one big tree and you have to wonder where to go first, you get to see it step by step. And um, this is just like seal trees in other games. It's just, you know, longer, bigger, and more complicated. We're also going to be changing it slightly for what we're going to change to the build guide next week. So it'll be pretty much what I'm very likely to be league starting next guide with this because we're not expecting any nerfs. So, um, for the skill tree, you have loads and loads of different nodes. Obviously, it's worth hovering over things and familiarizing yourself with it. But as you can see, it's so large that it's going to take you a long time. And uh, you're probably going to learn sections at a time. You have stats in Path of Excel. So, we have strength, dexterity, and intelligence. And then you can see loads of nodes do different things. So, we are also going to try... Like... I don't want to see well, there's no way of not overloading you with information because this is path of exile but we're also sometimes going to lie to you on purpose by saying sometimes things aren't possible there's a lot of weird exceptions that don't matter to new players so i think that's important so advanced players might be thinking well that's not correct it's correct for new players and that's all that matters for this video uh, it's just such a long game that it's important to explain it like that so you have normal like these are called travel nodes they're like smaller ones and they're usually between bigger, more important nodes. So you can see a bigger, more important node here has a name like Art of the Gladiator. Normally, uh, the chest, for example, would slow you down slightly. This makes you not slow down. It gives you attack speed, accuracy, which is good for attacking. And here we have life, right? You can see the bigger nodes are slightly better than the smaller travel nodes. And then finally, which we're actually going to be using pretty early in the build, we have things like keystones. These are like so kind of like superpowers. They're like bigger, bigger changes to the build. And uh, this one's actually not accurate. But um, yeah, they are like they change the build massively and sometimes have to be built around. So we are going to be starting off here and we'll just try to explain every single thing swift and strong. that we encounter. Do with your gifts, so this is everything. Now, this is actually softcore because I'm not going to be playing this character afterwards. I usually play hardcore. Um, there's no need for that. So you start on the beach here, and then normally you would make sure that you have a filter enabled, like we linked to in the um, the YouTube. That's in options. Any other settings that I think people should have? I don't think there's anything in graphics. Let's see. Ideally, you want to have lockstep on. It's uh, if you have more than a hundred ping, you want to have predictive on. If you have less, you want to have lockstep on. Let's see. Where's screen shake? That should go off. I think that's in UI now. They keep changing where it is. Enabling quest tracking is not a bad thing for a new player. And we'll explain quests and what's needed as we go. Um, for the map to look like the one I have, I like having it all the way left, all the way right. See, what else do I change? Should have played with default settings and then changed it. Would have been smarter. Always show sockets. This is very good. And for people that are colorblind, there are notches you can have. So they'll have different patterns. I think those are for colorblind, right? I'm pretty sure they change. Um, show full description. Hide remove only tabs. It's not needed. What else? Here. Gameplay. Show life and mana levels. Show fast buffs and show life bars. That means it'll be over your head. There. I think that is all the settings that you really need. 
to start playing, at least that I can think of. Disabled most notifications. I also changed my key binding slightly. That's not necessary, that's just preference. Um, I'll talk about some key binding changes later. And like I said, it'll be very, very content dense in the start with a lot of explanations. And yeah, it's fairly likely we'll miss some things, but we'll try not to. See, let me move to this screen. There. Right. This is Path of Exile. This is the Strand. If you decide to play hardcore, you will be visiting often. And we are going to pick up a weapon and equip it in our first hand slot. And we are just going to start killing the first thing we see. And Path of Exile has a lot of killing. We're going to click skip all tutorials. Now, these are definitely great to have on as a new player, but you're kind of already watching the tutorial. We're hopefully doing an even better job. So, what I've done now is we have removed default attack as our mouse button one key and removed it to move only. The reason for that is that we don't want to like accidentally attack monsters while we're just trying to move past them. We now have double strike our first attack on right mouse button. And this is already where Path of Exile differs a lot from other games. As you can see, our weapon has two sockets and this is a gem. We're going to have to re-explain and continue to explain this as we change, but this is how skills work. Characters don't have any innate skill in Path of Exile. If you played other games like, for example, Diablo, Diablo 2, whatever, your character has a skill tree with skills that you pick up as you level. And like in World of Warcraft, a mage would learn Frostbolt, etc. Path of Exile, all the skills, every aura, every buff, etc. is pretty much from skill gems. So here we've now socketed in. You can see the green gem is going into the green socket. And now I'm going to enable always attack without moving. That's just so that um, I don't run towards a monster before attacking it. It's really, really good to have full control of where your character is standing. Now you're provided with your first support gem. This is for altering the way skills work. And you can see that link between the two sockets. It's called a two link, even though it makes sense to only call it a one link, but we do call it a two link. Now you can see that a, a letter is added actually behind some things right now which is unfortunate but the letter e has now been added to our double strike which is uh how you know the chance to bleed is active now we're going to fight hillock you have to be a little careful and now you have to start caring about potions if you see on your one two and three key you have potions so we're just going to click those and i like to hit it when i'm around 50 percent you don't want to click it early either because if you run out you can actually die to hillock We were the first player to kill Hillock in this league. It's great. Right, let's see. We can right click that. That's just like a quest update. I'll try to do my best of providing you with that. And now we can consult our guide and see that this is going to be our first skill point. We're also going to be not exactly following the guide because we're going to have a new one for the next league 3.18. And it's going to be more similar to what that one is going to look like. Here you see we've picked up several items and you're already provided with unidentified items. We're actually not going to keep those. Um, and I'll try to explain everything as we find them. Path of Exile has a identification scroll and a portal scroll. It basically means that you will have to identify items to see what they do and to be able to wear them. So we are actually going to sell all these to the vendor. And um, the reason we're doing that is to get the resources. So unide unidentified items will always sell for transmutation shards. And then when they are identified, they'll sell for alteration or alchemy shards or potentially even orb of augmentation. And there are a large, large amount of different currencies in Path of Exile. This is a currency tab. You do not get that at the start of the game. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to simulate a completely new player experience by um, moving normal tabs forward. So normally when you start playing the game, you're going to have four brown tabs that look like this. That is more than enough for everything in this video and is more than enough for your first 30 to 50 hours of Path of Exile. Now, people will always ask, is Path of Exile pay to win? No, but it is more similar to buy to play. You'll most likely end up using at least 20 to $40 on stash tabs. There is no like in-game viable power, but they do sell you uh, inventory space. Or not inventory space, but stash tab space. 
And we do have videos where we recommend different stash types and stuff like that. And we have a lot of different ones. Path of Exile is really good in a way that you don't have to talk to the quest givers. You don't have to listen to what they say. You don't have to spam the G key infinitely. Um, there's, I think, probably only two or three things they actually need to talk to throughout the entire campaign. You don't need to pick up any quest. So we'll, we'll guide you through all that. For example, I don't need to talk to Bastul right now. I am going to talk to Tarkley because he is going to offer me the gem I need. I'm going to need Splitting Steel. So I'm going to take Double Strike Owl, and I can actually sell that to the vendor for a Wisdom Scroll. Because we have four, and then we get an additional fragment, putting it up to five. I'm going to look at the vendor and see if there are any... Uh, this is not too bad. I'd really like a two-handed weapon, though. But it also needs to have sockets. Uh, we can actually... So we're just going to have to teach things underway. So there won't be a super order. We'll just teach things as we discover them. So I might as well teach this. Actually, we can buy this. We're going to buy the rusted spike and we're going to buy two crumbed items. Path of Exile, like I said earlier, has a lot of different orbs and we can already teach you about one because we found it so early. So you can see these items, they're linked with red, green and blue sockets. And the links are very important. For example, this one has red, green and blue, but they aren't linked, so it will not serve the same function. But since they are linked, You'll actually be able to sell them for a chromatic orb. So there's a lot of recipes like this, literally hundreds, and you're not going to know or learn all of them, and you can look them up later as you play. But uh, it's a little little idea of, of what kind of game that you're looking at. It's a pretty deep game. There's another one there, but we want to save our last wisdom scroll. That being said, we now have two weapons. We can dual wield them, and the gem itself actually tells you a lot of information which is, it's honestly worth reading, even the top part. So we can start all the way at the top. You can see it's splitting steel, and below that it says attack, projectile, AoE, and physical. And this gives you a lot of information about the gem, on what other gems will work with it, so support gems, and how to scale the skill. So this is a projectile, so that means that we look here, Fury Balls gives us projectile damage, so we're going to be going there pretty early. Other than that, it's also an attack, physical, projectile, and AoE. So loads of good things there. Consume a steel shard to fire a single projectile that splits an impact of the targeted location. Dealing area damage when it splits and again when it splits explode and at the end of their flight. Requires a sword or an axe. Steel shards are gained with the Call of Steel skill. So what this means is that if I had a mace or something here, it would just try to attack with unarmed and it wouldn't use the skill entirely. Um, so it's important that both your weapons work. I normally, at this point, I would love to have just a two-handed sword. I don't really want to dual wield, but I also didn't have somewhere else that I had, um, gem links that I could use. So if I had, like, these, a red, green, green, but on a corroded blade, I would choose that instead. But this early, not that important. We are now going to put the Call of Steel skill, I put it on W, and then again, I'm enabling Always Attack Without Moving. The only thing I can think of that I don't want to always attack without moving on is dash. Dash is a movement ability that makes you go backwards. Other than that, I think pretty much everything should have it enabled. At least that I can think of. So, this, you notice that I only have one skill, but it's giving me two skills. And we'll show how that works now. This is basically ammunition, is a good way of thinking at it. Because this skill does very little without the charge there. And these are blue monsters. They're pretty much always worth killing. We're going to pick up a medium mana flask and a portal scroll. We'll be using the medium mana flask once we hit level 3. And that's the resource we need. We have no like, you know, there's no like rage or energy. It's pretty much mana for everything. And later on you can change that to be life. Right now we're using mana. We're just going to run through all the monsters here. There's not a super big reason to full clear or kill everything in this zone. We're going to be killing more than enough. We're just going to run through it all. And there's nothing wrong with killing. You do play a lot slower as a completely new player. And if I'm ever going too fast, just pause the video. Here we're coming up on a waypoint. This is the teleportation system in Path of Exile. And you'll be able to move through several and go back to areas. Pause. It's a stream. Yeah, if you're watching on Twitch, you're just... You're, you're going to have to be fast. 
I sadly will never be able to go as slow as a new player because everybody is going to do at different paces. And um, I don't think anyone wants, like, if someone went at a 16 hour pace, that would be a very long video. This is already long enough. Our gem has leveled up. So by uh, right clicking it, you would hide it. If you've ever done this by accident, they will appear down here. But uh, this is just so if you want to keep a gem at a low level for whatever reason. We don't. We want to level it. Leveling this will not give that much. But um, I will have other build guides as well for spell builds. This is probably the only thing that starts with attack that I actually really recommend as a starter. The reason for that is that spells are generally a lot better. And the skill that we're going to be using later, Explosive Arrow, acts a lot like a spell even though it is an attack. And the really strong thing about spells is that they gain a huge power boost per level. Roughly 15% more damage per level. And this is really good because a lot of attacks don't get this scaling. So you might get a 1 or 2% damage boost per level. So staying in an area and over leveling will not give the same benefit for an attack build as a spell build. Uh, so that's really good. And uh, attack builds instead have that you can have really powerful weapons that can scale your damage. Now, something that's important to pick up pretty early on is you'll notice that I have pretty fluid movement while attacking and walking. You can see that these enemies are charging me, but generally I am far away from where they initially charged by the time they actually get to it. So, movement, pretty important to pick up early, very important in Path of Exile. You can see I'm doing move, attack, move, attack, move, attack. And the more you're standing still, the, the more susceptible to damage you'll be. We've leveled up again. We'll click P to open up the passive skill tree, and we're going to assign attack speed. That's the next point we're taking. Here we have the first bust in Path of Exile. We have to find three of these, and that'll unlock the next area. Other than that, we're just going to be um, killing the monsters here. And you can see I'm like right clicking them and occasionally pressing W. For this skill, whenever I do press the W key, which is the Call of Steel, it's also providing like, you know, like a vacuum suck, which does actually damage. You can see on this monster now, it does take a slight amount of damage as it's basically... You can think of it as like Magneto from X-Men. You're just pulling back the metal shards that you put in the enemies. We're going to completely ignore the green things, but it's worth mentioning. This is the current league mechanic. It is unlikely to go core. We actually find out in eight hours. Unlikely to go core. But, uh, which would mean that it would be part of the game entirely. But there is going to be a new one that we don't know what is yet. I will be very quickly, whenever that comes out, making videos about it and explaining how it's best used. But we currently don't know. We will just be picking up, uh, so far we picked up some wool shoes and a scale vest. And now you can see a blue bar appearing. That's from my boots. Oh, one second. So, now we have Energy Shield. Energy Shield is the same as life, like 5 life is the same as 5 Energy Shield, but you cannot recover Energy Shield from potions. And instead, it recharges when you haven't taken damage for 4 seconds. Actually, just X amount of time. You can, you can change it. But after you haven't taken damage for a bit, you will start recharging. And say that you have 100 Energy Shield and you recharge 50, and then take damage, it'll stop recharging. You have to ideally continuously not take damage. We're just going to move through here and try to find the last glyph. Oh, this is a unique monster. It's actually a very scary one, and a lot of people will die to this. Oh, I have all three already. I just didn't realize I picked up all three. So as you can see, we've not actually picked up this quest yet. But we can still do it, which is really great. We're going to keep leveling up both our support gem and our main gem. I'll explain a little bit more about support gems here in a second. After the next mini boss, we're gonna go through support gems. My spirit is spent. Class for a bubble. We're actually not going to explain that. Not a very important thing. We're gonna skip that. Here is a rare item. So in Path of Exile, you have several rarities on items. You have white items, normal. You have magic items or blue. And you have rare items, or yellow, and you also have orange, or brown, or unique items. Um, and we'll explain more on stats as we start looking at them, especially items that we can use. So, now we're going to use the waypoint system. Instead of going all the way back to town, we're now going to go to the coast. We would actually have a small benefit of going back to town. We do get a new skill, but we're going to go here, save a little time, and do two things at the same time. We're also like, 
just lowering the amount of time we spend in time town let's have another level we're going to pick up the life nodes here so this is giving us evasion and life just an incredibly deep game and you can pick up a lot of things it's not bad to have a lot of items when you're going to town or know you're going to town soon because you can just sell them all for wisdom scrolls transmutes and once you've identified rare items which will show soon you'll be able to sell them for alterations and alchemies now we're gonna fight actually a pretty scary boss for some reason Hailrake has the most advanced ai in the game he's the only boss that'll track where you're going so if i'm running this way you'll see he'll actually hit me pretty often hit me so he actually tracks where you're going so you can see if i'm running like this he can never hit me because he's trying to hit where i'm going not where i am uh most bosses are not like this this is an indication of the future and what they want to do but for whatever reason he has the most advanced ai in the game currently so once you've dealt with Hailrake, and he actually can be pretty scary you're going to get a guaranteed portal scroll and you're going to get the quest again we haven't picked this up and um that is what we need here now you could now use the portal scroll to go back to town now instead people will either log out because there's obviously no reason to use a portal scroll at this point however near a league start we do actually all use a portal scroll the reason for that is that the servers will have a queue for at least an hour it's actually very fast to dissipate You can also go back to character select, but that is kind of risky. I usually portal at least here. Now we are going to get a utility flask. This is a flask that doesn't heal or give you mana. However, it gives you a buff. Now we're getting 40% movement speed from this flask whenever it is used. Now we have a bunch of support gems here, and we are going to take Onslaught. Onslaught is basically gives you, you can hold alt. And you'll get more information this is pretty much the same for everything everything will generally give you more information when you hold alt on it and it gives you 20 percent attack cast and movement speed there removing them here and it is now worth mentioning that Goodbye. they do not need to be in the weapon they could be here especially if they have the same amount of links and sockets uh but it, it does not need to be in the weapon we're just going to sell all of this. However, we're going to identify the Driftwood Scepter. So, probably going to have to re-explain this several times, but items in Path of Exile can have a max of six affixes. So, a rare item can have three prefixes and three suffixes. It can never have four prefixes and two suffixes. And, um, yeah. So, here we have spell damage, spell damage, Actually, it's, it's, it's good that we got it this early. So you can see when we're holding alt, it actually looks like it has one less. And that's because the, or one less stat. And that's because the, um, the top mod, caster, and the second mod, apprentice, merge the spell damage. This is hybrid. Um, some mods will have a weaker component that'll maybe have, for example, in this instance, mana and spell damage, but it'll be both be weaker and that'll stack with the other mod. For example, we could not have double spell damage. So like 50% increased spell damage with 50% increased spell damage. So there are like 8 to 10 maybe different hybrid mods that will stack with the main mod. But generally, you can't get like multiple mods stacking like that. So you can see now we're getting 13 alteration shards, 4 transmutes, and 2 scroll fragments. And later on, when we have enough, they will turn into an actual orb. Uh, let's see. Wait, we have nothing from Bestel yet. Um, Tarkley would now give us different skills. We are going to take Ancestral Protector early on. That is a bit of a different type of gem. It is a totem. I'll show how that works in a sec. And then we have our first movement ability. And you don't need to, like, I instinctively put it in my boots, but you can put it in your helmet and it doesn't have a difference. Now you can see I'm not clicking, always attack without moving on my dash. I'm going to put Ancestral Protector on E, where I prefer having it. I'm going to look and see if there's any two-handers for sale. Or a chest, glove, or boot with green, green, red. There is. Wait, I can start using two-handers now. I'm going to buy the iron gauntlet. 
I prefer two-handers for leveling. If we can get any. We could get that. Kind of slow. Uh, we could just use this corroded blade now. That's fine. Farewell. There. We can get rid of these. And we will be switching. There's a few benefits to having a two-hander or one-hander. For example, ideally you would want both of the one-handers to be well-rolled. Whereas, you know, with the two-hander you only need um, one. Let's see, can we... No, we're going to wait with that. Right, let's go back to the submerged passage. So we now have a three-link splitting steel. It has uh, onslaught and chance to bleed on it. And somebody in chat asked if I haven't done this before. Yes, I try to keep the videos up to date. The last video similar to this is uh, from two leagues ago. So it is going to start becoming more out of date. And I want to make sure new players have something um, current to be able to play and learn the game with. Because the build we're playing now is going to be one of the strongest builds. We are assuming no nerfs for this upcoming league. So we're just like moving along and killing. We just found our first whole orb is the orb of transmutation. This will turn a white item into a blue item and it will give it either one or two stats. We're just moving through right now. This is a unique monster and we don't necessarily need to kill them. They will give slightly better loot than the others. Um, we'll put E. Now you see the totem gem I got earlier, and you can see that that's just like attacking on its own within range. We can kill this now, just so you see. It will have slightly better drop rates, maybe drop some rares and some blues. Then you can click chest. It's not terrible in the start. Generally, most players are going to be ignoring chest most of the time. Let's see, we're going to pick up a chain belt. We do want to like fill the slots that we can. Like, we do want to wear what we can here. We get even more energy shield, and here we have an iron ring that is adding physical damage to our attacks. Put another skill point there. Found a rare item. And this bridge here is actually indicating where the next place to go is, but we are going to go into side area and do a little mini quest. There is another side area that we have skipped right now called the Fetid Pool. There's no reason to do this. I will give you some respec, po respec points later, but you can safely ignore that. It's not needed. We're just moving along. We're now level 6. That is the movement ability you can see. It leaves like a little imprint of where I was behind me. And what's really good about this build is that it requires nothing and going to be incredibly cheap. And it's actually going to be easier than what we're doing right now because you will have a league mechanic to use. I am not going to be using any league mechanic. that will just be the random green items you'll see. Um, so Path of Exile normally has something called a league mechanic, which will generally provide quite a lot of resources for your characters. I'll have a video on how to use and what's strong about the league mechanic whenever we know. But it'll give you a lot of stuff. What are the numbers above the blue sphere mean? That is your life and mana values. That is your life and mana values. There, we're going to pick up all the rare items. And we are also going to log out here. Go back to character select and we're back to town. Now we're going to get our first skill point. You managed to kill a granddaddy crab. Boom. Stay it's basically sharp. almost as good as leveling up. Now we have Art of the Gladiator. Get a nice attack speed boost. And you can see our inventory is full with a lot of random items. I'm going to identify one of the rare items. We're getting close to getting a alteration orb, which is nice. Yeah, we're actually going to get one now. And in the start, you're going to need a lot of both transmutes and alterations. They're used to buy gems from the vendor. You can see here that Nessa sells a bunch of different gems that you can try leveling with. Some will be for wisdoms, some will be for transmutes. Um, if you are ever super out of portal or wisdom scrolls, you can sell one portal scroll for one wisdom scroll. You can also sell transmutes for four. And later you'll find blacksmith whetstones and armor scraps. 
The main um, way to get wisdom scrolls early, obviously picking them up is good, is to sell uh, whetstones, armor scraps, and transmutes. And you do want to just you don't want to sell all your transmutes, obviously. Uh, we are actually going to sell one transmute now, just to demonstrate. And I also want to buy a second iron ring. These are really good early and will be a big part of my damage. Goodbye. Like these two are basically half of my damage, or almost. Right, we're going to continue from Submerged Passage, but we're going to move it towards the next place. Is it never worth to pick up and sell white items? Generally, no, you never do that. Your inventory will very quickly fill up just with blues and rares. You just sell those for transmutes instead. Never pick up white items. Another transmute? It's actually kind of lucky getting that many this early. There. So, this little staircase is how you know you're going in the right direction. Gonna kill this find this carry enemy here. Sora is not good. My spirit is spent. Here we have a blue boot. Boots can give you movement speed. We're gonna pick that up. Identify. It does not have anything. We are gonna put it on though. Don't need the old white boot we had, and the new ones give us some cold resist. We can do a brief explanation of resist in Path of Exile. If you open, if you click C and you open your defense tab, you can see you have fire, cold, lightning, and chaos resist. Chaos we're not going to cover now, but fire, cold, and lightning is very, very important. And incredibly quickly, the game expects that you have 75% on all of them. That is the max amount that you can get. And um, it will uh, be found on pretty much all gear. And we'll show you. A very, very, they will give you a big head start on most players because we're going to show you how incredibly fast you can get 75s. So, ledge, actually a lot of scary enemies here. And you will notice that Act 1 and 2 is kind of harder than the rest of the game. That is because they're currently in the process of sort of reworking the early game and making it more challenging and difficult. Um, so it, it will actually be... Surprisingly hard early on. A pretty difficult game here. Act 3 onwards is quite a lot easier. And especially later on, we will always have the option of over leveling. I'm actually going to show you how to do that now at the waypoint. So. Whenever you are... Um, whenever you are entering a zone, if you're holding control down... As you're clicking, then you will get this window, Instance Manager. Now I can create a new instance and all the monsters will have respawned. It'll be completely new. It won't have any of the items you've found already or like that lay on the ground. Completely new instance. So this is really good for if you want to like, say you're feeling slightly weak. Maybe you find yourself you're like level... Uh, let's say later on you're level 22 in a level 27 area and you're like, hmm, maybe I've like gone a little too fast here. So then you just stay in that area and you farm. Now, um, now you might be like, well, okay, well now I actually made a new instance halfway through the zone. In this zone specifically, there's a little trick here that if you see these three pillars, you're going the right way. There's a shrine. It'll give you a buff. And generally shrines will do damage to you or... Uh, benefit your enemies until you've picked it up. Generally, you also want to kill every blue monster. They give a lot more experience. I think it's either a blue monster is three monsters on average, and a yellow monster is five monsters on average, like white monsters. So they have a lot more experience than just killing a bunch of white monsters. We're just moving through. The chill ground is actually really good. Makes you a lot safer. Makes a big difference early on. But later on in the game, you'll just be like shredding through the game. It'll be a very different pace early game and later. And you do want to, as soon as you can, try to get a hang of like very smooth, fluid movement. So here we can see our item filter coming into effect. Normally, I'll turn off my item filter to show what it would look like if you hadn't turned it on. You really do want it for the game. 
pretty much unplayable without it. But you see, you can't really see a difference between them. But with it, you can. Uh, is there anything we haven't gone over? No, I think we've gone over everything we have found so far. Pick up more wisdoms. Like I said, you have multiple sources that you can sell to the vendor to get more. Here we are going to come to the holy righteous figure, figure of Kaduku. A lot of people pray to him when they want luck. Pick up another wisdom so we don't run short. We are also keeping an eye out um, on the ground for like better weapons. Now ideally we want it to be rare or blue. However, maybe maybe next zone or the zone after. We sh yeah, next zone we'll start being able to find level 8 weapons. I'll point that out to you when we find one. There. Yeah. We'll put on that. We get a little bit more damage from a rustic sash. Generally, I'm very lazy with what I gear early on, especially these starts. You'll see me rushing a lot more. Um, for a experienced player, going through the campaign is as fast as an hour 30 if you're super rushing or speed running. And generally, a good pace would be considered like three hours, four hours to maps. And uh, is not uncommon for new players to take as much as like 16 to 20 hours to maps. So don't like feel bad if you're going slow. It'll get faster and faster the more you play the game. Now, you'll notice these goats will explode when we're hitting them. They are actually extremely dangerous. And later at the end game becomes one of the scariest, if not the scariest monster. Um, there are quite a lot of different monster types in Path of Exile, literally hundreds. And similar to how often we're finding the old League mechanic, we'll most likely be finding whatever the le new League mechanic does at a very similar rate. Uh, league mechanics are active in every single zone, and there will be different mechanics that are used to be core or used to be um, temporary League mechanics that have been made a part of the game. Whenever a league mechanic does become part of the game, they generally choose to make it a 8% spawn rate in every zone. So for example, the shrine we picked up earlier used to be a league, and they were like, oh, this is good for the game, we're going to put it in, and uh, now it's just everywhere at a chance. My spirit is spent. We're just going to run past here. So you saw there was two unique enemies we just ran past. There's simply no reason to kill or engage with those. No reason at all. So we're just moving past. There's quite a lot of things like that that in, uh, do this just yet. it might not seem obvious that you can just skip it. It's to be a cage fight then. I can live with that. Right. Now we're in the lower prison. We're going to be able to find some new weapon bases here. We could also go to town and see if the vendor sells us a weapon base. We do have a corroded blade here. It does not have any good stats. There we're going to pick up fury bolts and then we're going to grab fu uh, bravery. Fury bolts is giving us damage and bravery is going to give us more defense. We can sell everything to the vendor. There's none of this we want except the ring. We will keep the ring slightly better than our normal white ring. Uh, and we can actually keep that for now. So these are too expensive. We actually can't buy them. We don't have a blacksmith whetstone yet, so we do need to find one. And once we get a blacksmith whetstone, we're going to be doing a recipe anyway. There. We're going to move back down, and we are going to move towards a boss that we actually do have to fight, and actually can be pretty difficult. Pulled Brutus. This is Chatters. There's... No reason to kill him. However, it doesn't hurt to like, especially for new players, to just kill some random uniques because they will drop more. You'll get some rares or blues. And now we did pick up a medium life flask. And uh, as you can see, the flasks have stats. They can never be rare. They can never, ever be rare. So uh, this one is instant when on low life. So if you're at 50% or lower, that will be instant. Hex Star Dragon. Thank you for the sub. We're going to identify that as well, giving us more intelligence. I am a lot smarter now. Very smart. But yeah, 
No rare flask. Not yet. Let's see, we'll move through and we are now in lower prison and then we're going to be moving our way to upper prison. And in upper prison, we're going to have to find and kill a boss called Brutus. Actually, it's pretty dangerous. My fans in Aureth will barely recognize me. And at the start of a league, you're always going to see loads of like global alerts like this. On software, you're going to see people leveling and hitting new zone projections. New zones. Uh, and on hardcore, you're going to see people dying and losing their character. And then they have to start all over again. You do not lose your stash when you die on hardcore. You only lose your character and your inventory and whatever's on your character. It's not a full restart. Didn't find a lab trial, but we'll go back to that later and explain those. You can see the zone level in the top right, and you can see the name of the zone and everything like that. Normally, as a new player, it's not bad to be very close to. So, like, being level 9 now or higher would be good. And if you want to go at a slower pace, it's not bad being 3 or 4 levels higher. So, being 12 or 13 here would make you quite a lot stronger. You'd have more skill points and stuff like that. Here's the weapon that we were wanting to buy earlier, but now we get it for free. This is pretty much twice as good, so quite a lot more damage, and you'll notice enemies will die faster. There's also a two-handed sword with a required level 8. Can't remember exactly what it's called. Maybe it's a broadsword? I think it's a broadsword. Very, very many. Oh, no, it's a longsword. Broadsword's the level 12 one. So a longsword would work as well. So you can see that this is faster, but does less damage. Give you more mobility. We'll just use the Jade Chopper for now. We're just going to run. The entrance is up here to the next zone. Now, um, someone might be wondering how I knew exactly where to go because it's not very uncommon in Path of Exile to be running around. You're running over there. You're running up here. You're running over here. You're down here. You get in a dead end. There's a dead end over here. And um, there is approximately between 20 to 40 zones in each different level. So like, there would be 20 to 40 different upper prisons and there would be 20 to 40 different lower prisons. And generally when you're doing speed running like I do at times, then you do memorize every single layout. And there's also like, you eventually learn tips and tricks for each layout. Now we're going to just move through here and we get to see Piety. You will be seeing a lot more of her. If you're wondering how I move them up, that's just with the arrow keys. And you can like see where you are. And um, to do, let's see, what's the key I have? Auto center map. Makes it so you, if you click tab, it'll center it again. I often know where to go, but not why. I just go to the exit. Yes, sometimes you will just like passively learn the map without necessarily knowing why. That's true. But now we're about to fight Brutus pretty scary i do so he has a lot of moves we're gonna wait with doing damage and just show his moves because he's actually pretty easy to dodge especially while running in a circle that move he'll always stand in place that is the slam he has four moves he basically has his uh, slam the ground as one move he has his chain hook that he'll try to hook you in like that and then he has a slam the slam will pretty much one-shot you, or very often one-shot you. We'll get hooked here to show that. They'll do some damage, make you bleed, and yeah. A good time to attack him is while he's um, doing his like, slam the ground attack. And then normally he will always chain after doing his slam the ground attack. So pretty simple boss fight when you know what to do. Now, a little bit annoying. If you die on software, you do have to run all the way back from here. Uh, we should die soon, actually, and show the death because um, there's two different menus. So, now you could actually instantly go back to town. You could log out now. You don't actually need to run out and get the waypoint up ahead. You automatically get that as soon as Brutus is dead. Um, so nobody actually ever runs out. We just log out. Now, 
This reward is actually not for killing Brutus. This is actually for entering lower, entering lower prison. So we already could have just taken that here. We just don't really have a use for it right now, which is why I didn't go back. But uh, we'll pick up Mame, which we'll see about using later. You do not need to enter his room. As soon as he dies, you get the waypoint. So we'll sell all of these. The only one we're going to identify is the boots because we're hoping for movement speed. We did not get that. Then we're going to sell it for alterations. Farewell. There, we can now pick up leap slam and uh, getting precision wouldn't be a bad thing. We are going to need that later. So we might as well pick that up now. We search with control F. Control click to buy. Farewell. I'll try to remember to explain everything like that. It's just hard to remember everything to be honest. We don't need um we don't need dash anymore. It is actually quite common to use two movement abilities because there are some movement abilities like whirling blades and shield charge that cannot go over things. Like a little ledge you would get stuck on, whereas leap slam or flame dash can. Um still at least start here you would actually run through. That's a good thing to mention. Um I normally, by the time I'm in Act 2, you can normally log out, but I would normally ask my chat. But very often, the queue is gone very quickly. Very, very quickly. We'll sell the small mana flask. We don't need that anymore. We again, still don't have anywhere to put the meme. Uh, let's see. So we have a few currencies we can explain now. Glass Barrow Bubbles, it gives quality to flask. Not super important. You're probably not going to find one this early, but you know. You can see that it makes it last slightly longer and it will make life flasks and mana flasks recover more life from mana. Um, you could level maim in the boots. Not super important because we are not going to be using it very long. Uh, we are going to explain some orbs real quick. So we have orb of transmutation, we have orb of alteration and orb of augmentation. So I can actually use the orb of augmentation now because if I hold alt down on these boots, you can see that I have a suffix modifier. That means that a prefix is missing and boots have a prefix called movement speed. I was hoping I would get it there so I could say like it looks like this, but we didn't get it. So we're going to have to find new boots because we do want movement speed. And with alterations, we can change. So if I used an alteration, which I'm not going to do, but it would re-roll the boot. And I could get either one or two stats, um, which would be different. We uh, could use the transmit on our weapon to try to make it better, but we're not going to do that right now. Right, we're going to go to Prisoner's Gate. We're still rank 1, that's really good. Sadly, we're also last. I'm the only person in this league. I'm lonely. More goats, these are slightly easier than the um, ones in the climb area. Oh, sorry. So we have an arbor scap. We are actually really looking for a whetstone. Blacksmith whetstone. And there's a recipe for weapons we're going to use with that. Armor scraps is really, really good to use on your armor. It will not matter to use early, however. It is mostly early on, only used for selling to get wisdom. You see, we're just killing things while moving, trying to keep a good pace and just move through. Might as well move in the direction that I'm going anyway. We are already a pretty great level. You'll always, whenever, if you're going slowly and explaining things, or you're new, you'll always be going slower than uh, when you're like super focused or trying to speed run. I'm gonna identify the sword, see if it has like loads of damage. It doesn't, we're not gonna bother switching. Would love to get a rare one. As you can see, it's more than enough with what we have right now. More than enough. And you do want to um, get in the habit of like keeping yourself topped up on life. You do have hotkeys. One, two, and three. To use the flask down there. I almost feel sorry for these doomed sea dogs. Another waypoint here. And now is another quest we're going to do in this zone. This is a... Um, this is a side zone, or there's a side zone in this zone that we're going to go into, which uh, will give us a skill point. Let's see, I hate those things. These are awful. They killed me in the last race. 
Some monsters from Act 1 are very, very scary at the end game. Like I said and mentioned earlier, that is because they were recently reworked. And whenever they go into the end game portion of the game, they're incredibly scary. Let's see, we're just going to throw that on the ground so we can pick up the Jade Chopper. That one is a lot better than the one I'm using, so we're going to put Leap Slam in there. It has attack speed and flat physical damage. Very great find. So, we are going to go down here now, the Ship Graveyard Cave. And this is the side zone that will... Give us a quest item that we need to get a skill point. Boots. Rare boots. Good chance for movement speed. Still didn't get any. Um, we don't really bother switching until we get movement speed boots. Socket pressure is very important in this game. And let's see. Keep moving here. So we're going to move towards this. Specifically this node. And we'll explain how it works when we take it. Uh, socket pressure is a very big deal in this game. So, very often for a new player, you're not entirely sure what to do. Do you try to wear good items that you find, or at least what you think are good items? Or do you focus on being able to use the links that the guide you're following tells you to? Like, obviously, right now, we're supposed to be using Onslaught, Chance to Bleed, and Splitting Steel, which is what we're using. But what if you find a really good weapon, but you no longer have the chance to use the links or sockets? Normally, I would say to always prioritize the sockets. And, uh, oh, I just realized I should play this as if I'm an entirely new player. So we don't actually get a crafting bench until, um, late act two. It's very weird and annoying. Um, you do not need to kill strangle charm at all. You can just run straight past. Great. That is what we're going to do. And we're actually not going to go back and do the quest right away. Because we already have a waypoint right next to where we need to deliver the quest. Got more boots. Wow, we have movement speed. Pretty much always prioritize movement speed. The faster a person is, the better they are. If that works. There. Pick up a large mana flask. You always want to keep upgrading them. Actually, we have a greater. We don't need the large. You always want to keep upgrading them just so you get a larger amount. Here we have the next zone that we're going to. And we also get a gem by entering this zone. You can actually pick that up. But before we go pick that up in town, we're going to go back through the ship graveyard cave. And since we have picked up the uh, all flame, we can now jump up here and talk to Fair Graves. Who's going to betray us? I'm sorry. My all flame, please understand it was all a betrayal. But we haven't even picked up the quest to begin with. We never talked to him to get the quest. We just went straight and picked up the quest item. So we don't feel that backstab because it's not like he sent us on a quest to begin with. Honestly, one of the really nice things in Path of Exile, I, I personally am not a big fan of running from NPC to NPC, picking up different quests. Um, he can actually hurt a bit, so it's not bad moving a bit here. But yeah, not a fan personally of that, so this is great for me. We can make a little bit more room in our inventory. Having a lot of transmutes early on is great. We're going to log out here. Now, if you are already, if you're just a new player, but you already have a hideout, we currently don't because we're simulating a new player, you can go and craft resist as early as now. And you will be able to do that on your second playthrough. Um, but we will wait with showing that until new players would actually be able to do it. Some people like using shattering steel at this point. I think it feels garbage. It's a lot more damage. It's like a shotgun. I just think it feels awful. So I'm not going to use it. We're instead going to be using Spectral Helix. I think it feels awful. So, we live, we are let's see. We can just put that there. Now, switching to Shattering Steel is a pretty good thing for a new player, because even though it does not feel very good, it um it is quite a lot of damage 
And personally, I like swapping between skills. So I would do, for example, a different skill for single target than I would for... Um... Yeah. Daring Monsters. Now we're going to show a recipe. So, we are about to fight Mervail. And Mervail does loads of cold damage. And we have 7% cold resist. So we're going to buy two. Any blue gems. It can be Frost Blink. It can be Frost Wall. We do want it to cost one Wisdom. So we want to save um, currency. We want to save our expenses. And we're going to vendor them. See that they're right now just giving Swirl Fragments and Alteration Shards. But now with the gems, they're giving two Sapphire Rings. So now we have 50% cold resist. Now, also pay attention to the fact that it did wipe the blue ring. So using this iron ring instead would have been good. And then we could have sold the uh, uh, the blue iron ring for some stuff. Um, and the only reason that I kept the other one is to show you that you can do red gem for ruby ring. Or you can do um, green gem for a topaz ring. So this is really, really good to get that early because... You do not have access to your crafting bench to uh, modify items until late act two. Now we're going to go to Mervale's Cavern. Actually, before we go, something that's pretty good is to show you that you can buy life flask and mana flask from the vendor. And we currently do not have a good life flask. So we are going to sell the armor scrap. And then pick up a greater life flask. Go back. Just going to destroy that. Boom. And we're back in Mervale's Cavern. And obviously, PoE is very, like, dense early on. See, we have no... Yeah, I don't really want to show War Banner in this. Not really needed. I'm going to try not to overload with, like, a shit ton of stuff. I think that's almost impossible in PoE. But we'll, uh, we'll show Auras once we use them. So, um... Oh, perfect. Let's try perform a rail too. See if we can get... We'll probably wait until we find one better base type. Because the weapon I have is fine for my rail. Why not switch to leveling with Helix? That's an excellent question. So normally people switch to Shattering Steel right now. Like I said, I don't like Shattering Steel. Um... And then you can also switch to Spectral Helix. That is a different gem and you could just swap it out one to one and it would be fine. I don't really like that either. I don't really like that either. I don't think this feels great either. So what I personally do is I literally swap. Because there's not that many bosses where I really need the damage of Spectral Helix. So what I would do personally, and you don't need to do this, you can use any of the other two skills I mentioned and we have that in the build guide too. But I would normally run around with Splitting Steel. And then I would use um, Spectral Helix only for like Mervail. And here you can see, and, and you do notice that the Splitting Steel doesn't have amazing damage. It is killing the boss fairly quickly. Um, but Spectral Helix will be better. It also doesn't have any charges that you have to keep up. We're at level 14, which is slightly overleveled, but nothing wrong with that. It's always better to be overleveled than underleveled. And especially later, once we switch to our final skill gem, Explosive Arrow, you will get a lot of damage by overleveling. It's actually why it's such a good league starter, because even if you're struggling on gear and stuff like that, you could end up just getting as much as like six levels, really, uh, and still be overleveled and feel great. Let's see, we might just switch to a long start after this. A pretty good one. It's pretty fast. Notice the monsters there slowed you down. You can get immunity to that later, but right now it'll be a very dangerous thing. So now we have three good life loss. We have 50 cold res. We have no fire res. You can notice on those enemies. Let's see. They do a lot of damage this early. Sapphire ring. And you can see now is a good time to explain implicit. So if I, uh, you see, this ring is 29 cold rest, this one is 21. That is called implicit. So no matter what I would do to this item, I could make it blue, for example. You normally wouldn't waste doing this. But um, 
you can make it blue and then it'll against stats and it'll always keep it implicit and then there's a different orb called the blessed orb that'll let you change that so if i for example want less resist then i could use that um so this goes between 20 and 30. There, um, so, like I said, you see now that I have pretty low damage. So now we can show, we can just switch. Ideally, you want to switch before you go in and not mid-fight, but that's fine. Um, so you can see that with, um, Spectral Helix, it does quite a lot more single target. It'll also be hitting a lot of the adds. It's a pretty good skill to use for boss fights. And Merveil has loads and loads of cold attacks. And the safest thing is very similar to the Brutus fight. It's just like move and attack. And if you're moving in a circle around, she pretty much can't attack you. And we're also not in much danger because we're wearing the two Sapphire Rings. You can see how little damage she's doing. Now, something feels off to me right now about the skill. And that's because I haven't clicked always attack without moving. So sometimes it'll just be moving slightly towards the boss, etc. I really hate not having that on. It's very noticeable. I'm gonna pick up all the rare items. Pick up some blues as well. Obviously, especially early league when something's just started, you really want to, you know, set up your economy early on. There, and honestly, we don't really have to change for a while. We're about to get a big damage boost that we'll explain soon too. Very good. It'll be less content dense later, and it's not even super important that I finish all the way to Act 10. Um, because most of the information in this will be um, uh, early on. And I have only got 8 hours for this entire session because that's when the, um, the newsy news comes out. The new Path of Exile announcement. But hopefully we'll get at least to Act 7 or something. And then we'll have most of the information a new player would need. And then tomorrow we'll be explaining other things more endgame related as well. And if you're arriving late and asking questions, I'm not going to re-explain something I've already explained earlier. This is also very intended to be a long video on YouTube. I'm just going to vendor all of this. Boom. Now, we are going to show you a recipe. So obviously you see that we already have a pretty good weapon, but we have... Um, oh no way, this is just a long sword. We want, we want a higher level base. Long sword is a level 8 base. We want at least a 12 or 13 base. The vendor doesn't have either, so we're going to wait until we find one. We could buy a wood splitter actually. Yeah, let's do it on a wood splitter so we show. So that's one transmute as an investment. Now I'm going to sell the transmute, the wood splitter, and the blacksmith whetstone. So there's two options here. And there's a lot of recipes. There's a lot of different recipes. This cannot be done with a white rustic sash. The rustic sash needs to be either blue or yellow, rare or magic, basically. And uh, the number will be higher. So if I had a if I had a rare belt, this would be 50, 50 to fifty nine percent increased physical damage. So that that's basically the recipe. The wood splitter doesn't need to be. Um, I think it can be blue as well. Uh, but at least it's fine that it's white. So one whetstone, rustic belt, either white or blue, or yellow or blue, and then a wood splitter. This is really, really good for a league start. It's used a lot for that. We're going to move that there just so it's easier to switch. There. And then we can sell our old weapon. So we have leap slam here, precision just wherever. Um, spectral helix, which is just for moving between those two whenever I want more damage. Ancestral Protector, we have Maim that we're leveling there. And something worth mentioning is that if a um, if a skill gem is like here on the right, finished leveling, it is not getting XP anymore. So if it's at level 3, max level, um, you're not gaining XP while it hasn't leveled to the next one. So do click them if you want to get experience. Um, we are meeting Einar now. If you talk to him, he will accompany you and start killing monsters for you. He's actually very strong early on. And now we're going to see a league mechanic. This is bestiary. It was a past league, but now it's, it's part of the game. 
So Einar will fight for you and kill monsters with you. And um, there will be yellow and there will be red beasts. The red beasts are the main ones. The yellow ones are basically filler. And um, the red one will determine what kind of reward you can get. We can show that later, but basically you can get um, unique weapons, unique armor. Generally, most of the stuff is unique. Think there's more to life than prize or perish. Most of the stuff is unique. And you'll meet Einar a lot in Act 2. And at the end game. So we'll kill some of the filler beasts. And here is another league mechanic. Back to back to back. Uh, this is great. We're going to use this when we're like level 17 or 18. And this is a muttering essence of contempt. This is actually incredibly lucky because there's like 8 different essences we can get at this point. And later on, I think a total of 13 or 15. And uh, it is basically like a chest. So I click it three times to engage the fight. And then you fight, well, in this case, a very weak monster. Sometimes a pretty strong one. Essences can be incredibly dangerous. And this is similar to another orb that we haven't found yet called an alchemy. Which is uh, like a better version of transmute. Alchemy just turns an item rare or yellow with up to six stats. And an essence does the same. However, it guarantees one stat. So it actually tells you what it does on it. Upgrades a normal item to a rare with one guaranteed property below. If you use it on a two-handed weapon, it will be an 8 to 15 physical damage. And then you really want to hope that you get percentage physical damage as well. If you use it on gloves, you get physical damage to attacks, etc. And yeah, you have to click three times on an essence to open it. If anyone sees somebody ask you a question that I've already answered earlier, so we don't like repeat too much for the YouTube one, um, try to help answer them as well. People will be coming in late. But I like that these are like a really good thing to like play along for people watching on YouTube. How can I know the level requirement of an item after using essence? Sadly, that's something I wish they showed on the essence. You don't. Um, so the higher the essence, so if you're finding it, right, you're going to be able to use it, right? There's no essence I can find right now that would make it higher level than I can use. But if it's your second character and say later on, you're going to use the screaming essence, that would make it, I think screaming is level 45, but you would actually have to look it up or test. It doesn't actually say on the essence. Um, honestly, Path of Exile is not a very new player friendly game. That is literally why we are doing this. It just does not tell you a lot. The area we're in now is a optional side quest. And the reason we're doing that is to get an additional Quicksilver Flask. That's to make us go faster. So we're about to encounter the Great White Beast now. And we have to... Wait. Oh. The dead end. It looks similar. We will be, uh, we will be testing that. Thank you, Khan. Where is the white beast? It's up here. Easy mistake. I've only played 23,000 hours. I actually don't do the den that much anymore. From pretty much just the league start. There, we've killed that. And now we can just continue to the next zone. And then we waypoint back to town. Path of Exile is a very strange game because very many people that have like a thousand hours in the game feel like a completely new player. There's a couple of reasons for that. One reason is that the game changes an incredible amount. Normally every three months is a big, big change. And you'll very often see uh, even advanced players that have like 10 to 20,000 hours uh, miss out on like mechanics because they're like, oh wait, no, it isn't like that this patch. So it's very different than most games. Very different than most games. So we're now moving through the crossroads. And just by following along and seeing, you actually get an idea of exactly what you have to do in the campaign. There are quite a lot of side areas and side quests that you don't have to do. Oops. Wrong one. There. So you can see you now the option between loads of different belts. Obviously, we could take a rustic slash. So we have a rare one to use for making a better weapon, but we're going to take a Quicksilver. Okay, that's an annoying Quicksilver. It's got less duration. We're actually going to use a first alteration. Sure, that's fine. Less effect of curses. Not very important. 
we're probably not going to be cursed at this point. But Quicksilver is good. Now we're going to explain our first keystone. 40% more attack damage if accuracy rating is higher than maximum life. Never deal critical strikes. And later on, we are going to be using Elemental Overload, which is something where we have to crit and then we'll get more elemental damage. So they would cancel each other out. So this is basically, we'll, we'll explain this in detail later, but this is a node that we're using uh, until we get this one. And this one has requirements. So if I now go to the crossroads, and this is why we picked up precision, you can see that I have 304 life. And specifically here, you don't necessarily want to just look at default attack and offense. You want to find the skill you're using, splitting steel, click on offense, and you see that I have now 283 accuracy. That means that I currently do not have enough accuracy. So my DPS is pretty low. If I turn that on, um, you can see that I gain, well, roughly 30%. So I now have 212 DPS instead of 150 to the left of the mana cost. So you get a big damage boost from that. Now, because of that, we're actually going to take some accuracy nodes pretty early. I don't really want to run precision unless I have to, um, because there are other auras we'll be able to use. Now that we're level 16, we just need to kill the next little mini boss. And then there are loads of auras we can use. That would be of great benefit to us. Great benefit to us. So I don't want to use precision. Uh, it's more of a... I've over leveled and taken a lot of life and not got enough accuracy. So we'll, we'll show those auras when we get to them. Now you can also go straight left. It's kind of just preference. I always go right first. Oh, sorry. I always go right first. That means I get auras earlier. I don't think, I think most people go right. All right, let's see. Um, there's a very interesting skill, a thing about movement skills that we can show. So, um, it's easier to notice when you're playing yourself, maybe harder to see, but the first time you use a movement skill, and this is the same for most, if not all, but at least uh, uh, this is very much the same on Flame Dash and Leaf Slam, you see that it is an instant cast when I first attack. You see, the second one is a lot slower. You'll You'll definitely feel it, especially with flame dash and that's because they have um it's completely instant the first time it doesn't use your attack speed as a start timer uh, it probably doesn't like come across that good in a video but you'll feel it yourself that if you're just spamming leaps them it'll be slow but um it's like every 0 0.3 or every 0 0.4 seconds a movement skill will be instant pretty interesting mechanic actually made the game feel really good so we are going to get the essence here. This is a greed essence that gives you life. They're also pretty dangerous to fight. You can see that we are getting red debuff stacks in the top left corner whenever we walk into those red things. They actually do quite a lot of damage. Now we have a greed essence that we put on something. We'll guarantee the life stat. Why do you play with the map in the middle of the screen instead of the corner? actually the main thing I look at is the map. I don't really look at the game itself. I mostly look at the maps. To see where I am and not get lost. Always have. Now we're coming up on our first lab trial. We actually usually find them earlier, but we haven't found one yet. So, oops. No lore, thanks. Um, so this is a lab trial. This is how we get our subclasses. So obviously we have a bunch of different classes. We didn't really go over anything else in Duelist because no real reason to right now. But, um, so we're a Duelist and they have the subclasses Champion, Gladiator, and uh, Slayer. And uh, to be able to access that, we have to do these trials. So you can see there's those traps. They deal percentage-based damage. So you can see that my HP goes away pretty quickly. If I have over leveled a ton, I will still take the same amount of damage. So they are percentage based damage. Now, what's really nice about traps is that they don't have a very high surface area. So if you're running through them, they don't get to do much damage to you. 
see and that monster that i just killed if you go back in the video and pause you'll see that it was called oops i think i didn't click it did i did i click it i must have clicked it right because the portal appeared um it did right sorry that was a bit fast uh but either way uh you need six of those yeah you're right i only get the portal when i click a bit too fast we'll keep that the reason that we're keeping that is a slightly bigger base than the gloves that I have. It's also higher item level. So if you hold alt on the item, we'll now teach you item level. Uh, this one's item level 5 and this one is item level 16. We have, there's a lot of third party websites that are incredibly useful in Path of Exile. Most of the information you need is not available in the game. So I'm going to show you the website I use the most. PWDB. So you can just Google like PWDB gloves. And then um, this is showing strength dex gloves, but not super important which type. Uh, but more importantly, we'll see that these are level 16. So you can say, see, for example, here, um, I can now get 12 to 17 resist, whereas my other gloves can only get 6 to 11. You can just do PWDB gloves. Then click on that there. So it's a bit overwhelming. Obviously, items can have a lot of stats, but it's uh, it's worth mentioning. A very very deep game. Maybe we should just like go super ham and scare off all the players early. <laughs> uh, let's see. Next up, we are gonna grab the accuracy nodes. The reason for that is that they give resist, which are really good early on, giving us closer to 75, um, which is max. And um, we are also going to drop precision when we can. We will have to use precision again at some point, uh, right before we're able to respite. But we want to use that as little as possible. This is not that good at Aura. This is a strong box. These are very scary to click. So as you see, the one I just clicked spreads costing ground, cost of crown. So it tries to kill you. It can also freeze you. It can detonate dead corpses around you. A lot of scary stuff. This myth boss, not worth explaining. We're never going to use one. Got to kind of pick and choose your battles in Path of Exile. And yes, like somebody brought up, you can identify strong boxes. Normally, most players will never identify strong boxes, especially on softcore. On hardcore, still usually not. Still usually not on hardcore. We do, however, on hardcore, try to make sure that we have a freeze immune potion before opening it. Um, this is a quest, so we're picking up the Baleful Gem. We're going to go back to town. Yeah, Craft of Excel is another really good third-party website that we'll show later on how to craft things. Right, we are going to... Uh, we might as well use Herald of Purity and Herald of Ash. I actually don't get Purity as a quest reward. I have to buy that. Any build recommendations for beginner next season? That's what we're doing right now. We'll identify the Topaz Ring. Nah. Is what we'll be doing. See, we can take this belt now since we sold the one we were using. And the belt gives life. Return if you must be. Let's see, we do we want to go to 17? It does have accuracy as well, and it's kind of fast. You know what? Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's get a big juicy upgrade right now. Because we're gonna be switching skill gems in not too long. Can we wait till 24? Maybe we'll wait till 24. We might as well. We'll wait. Right. Move to Crossroads. We are going to go do another little quest. And actually, we can do two more quests. So there is a side area down here. You don't always need to do this this early, but you might as well since you're getting good XP now and being more overleveled and having more gems. 
uh, gem levels and everything will uh, obviously help you. So this is going to, we're going to get another one of those trials where we're going to work on getting our character powered up with an ascendancy. And this build is eventually going to be going something called champion. It's an extremely defensive ascendancy. And the build we're playing gets an insane amount of damage, an insane amount of tank. Very, very strong. It is... I honestly cannot think of any League Starter build I've ever had that's been stronger than this. Ever. It's really, really good. Not everybody necessarily loves the totem play style. I don't mind it personally. It is incredibly strong. That's a Brutality Shrine. I really hate these. They like knock back enemies. They do make you do more damage, but I think a pretty small amount more. So what I normally do when I picked up a shrine that I don't like like this is I would right click the shrine and that will cancel the buff. Now you'll see how little damage um, Splitting Steel is doing with no ammo. You really do want to have those uh, steel shards. That's the thing? Yeah, you can cancel shrines. That's the beautiful thing about Path of Exile, is when you see veteran players that have thousands of hours in your chat at a time like this, and they didn't know a, a feature. And I remember I did a... can't remember exactly what it was, but one of the best racers in the world, Gucci, was in my chat when I was doing a tutorial version, and he was like, dot dot dot, I didn't know that. I always found it very funny. It's such a deep game and it changes so much that sometimes even the most advanced players can just not know that a feature exists. This will be on the test. So we're just moving and there is a second side quest here that gives you um, skill regrets. Like, you know, you'll be able to refund skill points. Do not need to do that now. And on this build, you should not really need many regrets at all. You get more than enough regrets from without even doing them, I think. Hey, Tai Tai. Here you'll see even more advanced traps. And as you can see, they do quite a lot of damage. So if you run like this, You'll take a lot of damage and they can kill you very quickly. If you're running literally just through them, you'll notice they don't have a lot of surface area. Can't do much with you. And if you have skills like Blink Arrow or Flame Dash, you can just teleport right across or over them without taking any damage. I do appreciate the subs and stuff like that. Thank, thank you. Now we can just log out, go back to town. So now we have two out of the six. There's a three... Uh, or sorry, 1 in Act 1, uh, 2 in Act 2, and 3 in Act 3. Let's see, we wouldn't mind new gloves, so we can do the Whispering Essence of Greed here. We got... They're not great. The reason they're not great is that they don't have an open suffix for um, Resist later. More advanced, we'll show that once we are... I was going to say level 18, but we still don't have the... Um... We still don't have the stupid crafting bench. Honestly, very strange how player new players get it so late. Honestly, it's too late. They really should move attacked one. It's very bad that new players don't get that. Unfair, actually. I guess they don't want to overwhelm players early. All good, Dale. Yeah. All good. We are still rank 1. That bodes well. It would be really bad if we weren't. Being the only person. This is a ghost. This is, in my opinion, the single worst mechanic that's still in the game. It is similar to treasure goblins in Diablo 3. Uh, but even more annoying. They will run away from you and they will try to possess rare monsters, making them stronger. They will also buff any normal monsters they go through. Uh, one particular one will um, be called a martyr. And um, it will make enemies explode. I really, really hate ghosts. By far, the mechanic, I hope they remove the most. But uh, yeah, they're, they're not really worth interacting with a lot. They will like possess monsters and make them drop more loot. They can also be deadly. Actually, very easy to die to. There, now we have Weathered Hunter. 
and we can explain mastery is the next level. I can now get rid of precision and actually I forgot to show the other auras and yeah other auras for that matter I only picked a pair of the Vash. Well we'll pick up pair of the Vash and we'll turn off precision now just to free up some more mana and we can see if we go to splitting steel that my accuracy is now 545 which is 150 more than my life and now I'm using Herald of Ash. We'll kill Kraten now. I do have so much damage at this point that I'm not bothering to change to my single target skill, even though I'm using splitting steel, which is nice. It is very nice. A pity your mind wasn't as swift there, as we will log out back to character select. Now that we've picked that up. So, um... That was a bandit and you have the option to either help or kill. Normally in Path of Exile, you will pretty much, thank you, you will pretty much kill them on every single character. The only characters that do anything else is crit characters will sometimes help Alira. Uh, and it's basically, it's a choice between do you want crit and resists or do you want uh, two skill points? And the skill points are very important for very many builds. It's gonna, we have a new weapon coming soon anyway. The is now we are going to pick up one more aura. We're going to pick up Herald the Purity. Later we want a different one. I don't have another red slot. Right, okay. We're going to try to get a new helmet. So I actually do want to use Purity. Could also not use it and just have more mana free. Hi, Pox. Um, this will work. It will cost us to transmute, which isn't ideal, but we actually have a lot right now. So that's fine. Especially when you're a new player. You're going to be going at a slower pace. At least are, so you will end up with a lot more transmutes and alterations. You'll probably be picking up more too. Especially when you're new to the game, you are going to hoard a lot. There, now we have Herald of Purity and Herald of Ash. Ready, uh, let's see. Stop here for a sec. Let's explain some buffs. So, Herald of... Uh, actually, let's turn one on all the time. First, we'll show off Herald of Purity. This is a solo aura. It does not affect other people you're playing with. Some auras will. Um, and kind of annoying that I nurse here, but that's fine. Whenever I attack things now, it will start spawning minions around me. They can both be good and bad. They can be bad because sometimes an enemy can target the Herald and end up killing you. But the main reason we're using Herald of Purity is just that it adds. It's, it's just flat physical damage. And again, it does not matter where that gem is socketed. However, links are very important in Path of Exile, so you do want to be careful that you don't socket it anywhere where a letter appears. So for example, you can see in my Herald of Ash, there's no letter, and it still has just a reservation of 25% mana. Um, but if you sometimes put like Arcane Surge or maybe something else next to a aura, it'll make it reserve more. Is that every support gem will have a multiplier. So you can see Onslaught here has a cost and reservation multiplier of 110%, so it'll make the aura cost more. And then different support gems will have different multipliers. Right, we're going to turn on Herald of Ash as well. Herald of Ash um, adds some of my damage as fire and also makes them sort of explode. Yeah, Mame is a great example. If I had uh, Mame here, with the Herald of Purity, that would support the Herald of Purity and make it cost more. It would also make the minions do more damage, but that's not what we want. We want to have a lot of mana free so that it's not an inconvenience and we have to spam class all the time. There, and you can see now that we've gotten like some auras and uh, we have a half decent weapon, it's starting to pick up the pace a little bit. Let's see, we can go here straight away. Doesn't really matter if you go straight up here or straight left first. Kind of like, especially in characters where I'm uh, killing Oak and uh, Alira, then I like killing Oak first so that I can get the skill point right away. Oak is actually pretty... It can be pretty scary. Um, he heals. So if you don't have enough damage, you can actually end up getting stuck here. So just to make sure we could uh, put in Spectral Helix instead of Splitting Steel. To make sure we have enough damage. 
If you have elemental damage, he shouldn't be a problem, but he actually gets immune to physical periodically. We also have a very good build at all stages. Some builds might struggle so much that they have to go back to Act 1 and get another seal well, called Frostbomb, okay. which uh, stops regen. The trees for audience. There, uh, let's see. Let's show one of the newest features in Path of Exile. It's called Skill Point Mastery. It's very, very cool. Incredibly strong. So, you'll see this on a lot of things. Not everything, like for example, the Fury Bolts cluster does not have a skill point mastery. All of these don't. But everything further out does. So if I hover over, so it's as soon as I've equipped the notable, then the accuracy mastery here will be available to me. And then we have different choices. We can make precision cheaper. Um, this will make it cost half, basically. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do dexterity's accuracy bonus. Instead, give three accuracy rating per dexterity. So there are different things for stats. You don't actually gain um, stats while leveling up. You do gain a small amount of life and mana. But um, uh, whenever you take strength, dex, or int on something, strength is every two strength is one life. Five strength equals 1% melee physical damage. One dex equals two accuracy. Or five dex equals 1% evasion. So you get both. Two int equals one mana. And five int equals 1% energy shield. So... Um, we can see our accuracy now is currently 548, and now it is 700. So now I could have 698 life, and um, I would still get the damage bonus. Uh, another thing worth mentioning, this is a little bit complicated, but hopefully it'll make sense. Um, on Precise Technique, you can see that it says 40% more attack damage, and some things in the game will say increased attack damage. There's a very big difference in this game between increased and more. And more is more better, is the important thing to know. More, always better. The reason for that is you can think of more as multiplicative and increased as additive, basically. More is always better. And then the counterpart, it would be less and more and increased and reduced. We're in the Western Forest, still a rank one. We're really killing it today. We are gonna go pay Alira a visit. Tell her why it is not okay to resurrect the dead. Orb of Fusing. That's the first one we've found, and this one lets you remake the link. So, for example, this would have a chance to make her helmet a three link. We're most likely gonna use that later on to make a four link. But yeah, so this is the window again. It's uh, here. We would actually have the option. This is one where you actually might consider helping. Um, very often on hardcore, people will help on day one. The mana region isn't bad. Five flat mana per second is great. She's actually incredibly strong compared to all the other ones. She's like six times stronger than all the other ones. The, the other ones have terrible bonuses. It's 15 all rest, 20 global crit multi, and five flat mana per second. We are still going to kill her because two skill points are more valuable for our build. But, uh, yeah. You can change this later. But it is semi-expensive. But it's very common on day one for hardcore players to help. So yeah, rest kept very early. So now we have all the three medallions. And together they will form the Apex. Letting us um, fight the boss of Act 2. And yes, there will be drops on Twitch later. We're going to run to the end of the zone. It's actually kind of scary. There's a lot of bad monsters here. Rare flasks would be spawn. It'd be very strong though. There, this is Captain Arturi. And we have a Chance Orb. Chance Orb is uh, used on wide items. And here we have it in the quest as well as you can see. And we're going to log out now. We've already picked up the waypoint in this zone, so we can come back to it later. Um, Chance Orb can be used on a white item, and we'll turn it either into a magic, rare, or unique item. I'm about to sneeze. Maybe not. 
Almost easy. Um, only items that actually have a unique base for the uh, item can be turned into a unique item. Like, if there isn't a unique battered helmet, it cannot turn into a unique, for example. There, I think, uh, actually we could do, we could identify the chest. We don't have a chest currently. Quite nice one. We're only using, like, we didn't have a use for these links. And uh, this is a better base. We get a lot more armor innovation. And now we also got some fire and lightning risk. So 45, 75, 28. Normally I'm already resist cap, but I am not allowing myself to use the, uh, the crafting bench. Now we're going to move up here. And we'll have a full step-by-step -step guide for this ready for new league with exactly how I do it. Uh, I do it very similar to the guide, but we've changed a little bit. It's so difficult to understand what to explain to new players in PoE. Yes, it is. It's taken a long time and multiple people to get to the, like, Iraqi helps and, like, does we do loads of feedback sessions for all the Path of Excel University stuff, and we do take feedback from new players. I've also explained the game to my parents and Helena and stuff like oops, um, to try to realize what new players really struggle with. But different players are going to struggle with different things. You're never going to be able to get everyone. All you can do is to try to make resources as helpful to as many people as possible. And I think in the last time I did this, I just completely skipped over what SSF was, right? Like we said at the start of this one, uh, that it's solo cell phone. But it's very easy to just start using terminology. You, yeah. Very easy to skip. But we try to make it as easy to follow as possible. And you see, I pretty much always pick up every like, orb or every resource. I don't necessarily pick up every item. There. Weaver's Chamber. Weaver's pretty scary. Weaver's pretty scary. She's mean. Big evil spider. Gonna move through here and once we kill um, Weaver, we are able to move towards the end of the act. But more importantly, we are able to move towards the crafting bench. And that is going to be very big because a lot of you watching... And let me know, especially both on Twitch and YouTube, but if there's someone completely new to the game watching. And we, we would love feedback, not just with what isn't helpful, but what is helpful. Like what we're already doing right. Because we're going to be doing these basically every three months. I actually kind of want to commit to redoing this video, everything explained, every three months. Because I think it's so helpful to have um, for the people that like the long form videos, like the play along, a video where you can literally follow the video and you will get a strong build. This isn't necessarily the easiest build like there are some builds like very very popular for content creators to make worse builds but that are better for new players because they're so simple but they completely fall apart once you want to start playing the game this one is actually oh actually we should switch here this one is actually one of the stronger builds in the game um so having somebody like take you through that can be pretty good this is weaver on melee you really want to stay straight on top of her she can lob balls on your minions and on your totems. So, very scary no matter what when you have anything like that. Um, they aren't as scary in normal mode, but... She's, uh, she's fairly scary. Just curious, why did you open a private link for the guide? Because it's 10 bucks and it helps me make sure that I don't forget anything. Like, I probably would have forgotten... A few more things if I didn't. I just want to make it as like comprehensive as possible. There. Let's move back. And now we're going to go get a hideout. There. And. We want more ultra transmute. We want more alterations now. So I like, once I have like seven or eight transmutes, I like starting to try to get some more alterations. And you see that uh, we just got four alchemy shards. We don't have an alchemy yet, but we did get some shards now. Um, that's basically rare stats on blue items. Now we got extremely lucky and we got a instant life flask. This is especially important if you're playing hardcore. We are currently on softcore. 
Um, but on hardcore, that is the easiest way to die uh, when you're taking damage rapidly. You're very rarely dying from something slowly. This is a pretty scary zone. They added some scary monsters here lately. These. These are new. Just kind of move through and again just keep attacking while moving. Our playstyle will change when we hit level 28. And um, it'll be interesting because in Arch Nemesis this build was very extremely easy. And seeing as it's most likely not going core. Like it's not going to be part of the game anymore. And... We don't know if the new link mechanic has that type of rewards. We don't know if we can get the starter items as easily. So I'm actually going to play it as if we don't have any items like that. So it might be even easier than, than what will be shown in this guide. And we'll be able to show you that because I'll be uh, playing this most likely at least start. The only, uh, the only thing that could make me not do this league or build at least start would be if a bug for detonate dead, a different build, doesn't get fixed. But I think most people are expecting, since it is a bug, not a nerf, we are expecting it to get fixed. Basically exploiting the uh, corpse health of monsters, and it was supposed to be changed, but it never got changed. This is actually, we can browse around a little bit. This is one of the worst zones in the game. Uh, I've already memorized the zone, but this zone is, I would say, three to four times larger than what you currently see. It has a large amount of dead ends. It's a large area over here. Uh, for a lot of people, it is the worst zone in the game. It has a big zone over here, too. Just remember every zone, lol. Well, this can't be good. There. We are now going to get a hideout, your own home away from home. And Einar is pretty much always here. There. Boom. Uh, you just hit tab again. You have to have auto, auto center map in options and then you hit tab again. What is the DD bug? Um, there's a specter called Auric something, and they have 50% more alive. Basically, the, the build that they did has 50% more damage than it should, so it's currently insane. That is a red beast that gives a unique glove. I'm pretty sure it's unique glove. I can't remember all of them. Pretty sure, though. We might as well kill it, and then we can show bestiary. Might as well. As you see, this one's pretty dangerous. Those tornadoes do a lot of damage. A lot of damage. A gem just dropped, and there will be gems periodically dropping. Every, like, everything filter and stuff would highlight any that are drop only, and there aren't that many that are drop only. Now, I already do have a hideout, but I will show you how to get one, as that is a sub zone in the Dread Thicket. Kind of annoying. Really, they should put in an act one. Like, perform a rail. In the ship graveyard zone. This should be in the ship graveyard zone. That's where it should be, for sure. I think you're getting way too late. Especially because it's such a big thing that every guide uses. I think every guide would normally mention to use it earlier. Frustrating, and you can't get it. We're looking for a side zone in this area. We're level 22, we're pretty overleveled. You'll actually find hideouts like this throughout your game, and you can clear them out and unlock them. See, we can use the brown mana potion. As you can see, I'm trying to upgrade my flasks over time. Um, you don't want to keep them super low level. So I've already done this, but we're going to do it anyway. So what you would do here is you full clear this area. We'll clear this area, and once you have done that and killed the two monkeys, then boom, you would get a pop-up. Once you've finished with uh, saying hideout unlock or something. Maybe you have to talk to Helena near the start. I can't remember. We already have it, so I don't think anything like that will happen to me. 
Anyway, I think Helena will appear or something like that. And uh, you can go to Act 2. And you talk to Helena and she's like, Thank you. Thank you for making my hideout. Go with courage. Um, let's see. What do we need here? We'll just ID somewhere for alterations. And then we're going to go... You can either click on hideout here or you can write slash hideout. I also have a macro where I just do shift H and it takes me to my hideout. All right. I take it. Keep your life to your own. There. This is a different hideout. But normally you would have um just in case that you have to. See down here. Oops. Down here. Uh, you have to expand that and then click on decorations and you might have to find the crafting bench You might have to find the crafting bench. I actually just can't remember if you have to put it out. I'm pretty sure you do Oh, it's behind me Down here Yeah, I really wish they would let you have the jukebox for just the game in general Like I don't know why it's just hideout only makes no sense I requested it several times Sag. Um, now, this is incredibly powerful, and now you will have access to this, um, for forever. You'll have access to your hideout forever. So now, you will be able to do this on your next characters whenever you're level 12. And this is incredibly strong, for multiple reasons. So, something that's very strong, and now we're going to go back and buy some white items, is the number one thing that a lot of people don't know is that the crafting bench can be used on completely white items. Uh, let's see. Let me... We'll sell the three armor scraps. We just want some white items. We'll take a uh, rustic sash. Why not? Let's see, They're fine because they have movement speed. Kind of... Kind of whatever. We will put on a topaz ring. Greetings. Sell that as well. Helmet's fine, the amulet is not fine, but do I need the intelligence? I don't. Uh, I don't want to waste a chance orb. We're going to buy a jade amulet for a transmute. We have quite a lot of those. There, I think that's fine. Sadly, our gloves are not ideal for this, but that's yeah. fine. Right. Well. And then we'll just boom, back to hideout. So, now... What's so strong now, you can see that I have fire, cold, and lightning rest already pretty high. But we can craft on white items. This is incredibly strong. A probably shocking large percentage would not know how many people, like, don't know you can craft on white items. Thank you, Tessa. So what we want to do now is get to 75% on all of them. And that is extremely easy once you know that you can craft on white items. Because now you can see that I have 75 all res and I, I I, haven't got any good gear. I don't have any of like, you know, the level of uniques that a lot of people would have. And a lot of people normally struggle. They'll be in like Act 4 or 5 and they are not resist capped. And that is because they don't know that you can craft on... Like so many people would have an item like this. They will maybe even try to use a transmute. Like, we can ask Twitch out right now. Hands up in chat if you would use a transmute on an item because you thought it needed to be at least blue or rare to be able to craft on it. It's a large amount of people. So it, it helps a lot. It helps a lot. And yes, we will have drops later. All right, let's see. Um, hmm. I want that, but I want it to be white. That's very annoying. I can't even cheat because I don't have my normal stash. So, uh, you've also seen as I've been leveling, the stash changes. What prompts the stash to change? Every time I level up, the stash will randomize again. So we will go check that again once I've leveled. Because I, I would like to get a double axe before I do Val. And we are going to share... Uh, we're never going to change out of that until we... Uh, until we do change out of that. Until we go Explosive Arrow. Sorry, the vendor will refresh every time you level up. Not your stash. <laughs> Where are my items? 
Let's see if we can get you to run into something. There's usually some rare stuff here. They usually move three times and then disappear. Okay, there's no rares here. You can just die. Let's see, we have talked about bestiary a little bit too. If I click H, you see here bestiary, and we can go down here, click on recipes. You see here that if I go fight that unique monster in the menagerie, I have to go talk to Einar and he'll transport me there. Uh, I will get a reward of a unique glove. And there are actually good unique gloves at the moment. However, I'm already using my glove as like it would be a lot of socket pressure for me to switch. None of my other items uh, currently work. So there's no reason because I'm never going to like the gloves that I get as a reward are never going to be green, green, red. And I don't have the currency to make or switch that right now. Early on, you're entirely at the mercy of the items you're finding. That's why, and especially with the power of how good white items are when you can craft on them, I am only looking at sockets early on, pretty much. I'll have one or two good rare items if I find them, but we are entirely looking uh, for sockets. Because you do not have any currency to switch sockets around early. Later you will. And later you will have, like, max, max sockets are like on everything. Oh. Never say never. Here's Kuru. He's actually pretty scary, but right now he's preoccupied with my minions. But he does a lot of damage. Yeah, I'm very tired. I'm always tired. And soon it's the start. I'm very excited. Always exciting with the new Path of Exile League. Especially when you're playing hardcore. It's so cool seeing all the global notifications for people dying. And things like that. It really makes the League feel very alive. Really wish there was a setting you could choose to make it more than top 50. It's a very exciting thing. So if you're currently watching this video, it's a very good time to get into Path of Exile. It starts the 13th of May. We're in May, right? May is the month we're in. Are we in April? We are in May. Right, I don't think I've clicked one of these. So these are crafting recipes. And the are for our crafting bench. So this is the first one we're getting. It's for movement speed on boost boots, and it costs three or above augmentation. And while I have your attention, I might as well show you another thing. This is another thing people don't know about. But the bench will tell you where you get every uh, recipe. You can't search for them, I believe, which is annoying and makes no sense. But you can scroll down, and here you see these are all the three levels of accuracy, and it'll tell you what zone they are from. It'll be called things like defenses, life, attack speed. And you can browse through and look. And then you'll see there are others that are only available at the end game from a special mechanic. But it'll actually tell you where each one are from. And for the end game one, it'll actually be very specific where, it'll, where it's from. So the crafting bench just give you a lot of information there. Write that down. So now we are about to level. I don't think I've seen a double X, but I, it's not like I have it on my filter, nor am I paying a large amount of attention to it. So it's clearly not that important. You could edit your filter uh, to look for one more and make it like very visible. I'm far too lazy to do that. There's also no reason to. I am pretty happy with my weapon right now. And uh, I'm just going to level up, check the vendor. If it doesn't have a double X, then we're keeping this all the way till explosive arrow is not a very important thing but since we do have the really nice essence i would prefer having really nice damage we're about to level now we'll click the white strong box you can roll strong boxes so i could use an orb of transmutation and i could use um alterations for example to roll the strong box this is never worth it on normal strong boxes and it is sometimes worth it on um Special strong boxes in the eight game, late, late, late game, the eight game. Words are hard. English is not my first language. All right, let's see. Let's go back to town. What troubles you bring now? Boom. There's no double axe here. There is an etched greatsword, however, which is more than enough. And we will use that. And do I have the gems to use that? Hmm. I'm kind of one red gem short. 
but we can recolor this right we're going to use my muttering essence of contempt so this is going to guarantee the 8 to 15 physical damage and we were really hoping for percentage physical damage now later on we will have the access to being able to craft percentage physical damage we actually get that uh in like there's a zone in i3 that we get it in anyway this is already better than my current weapon and it is slightly faster so we're going to recolor this with a orb of chromatic well chromatic orb not an orb of chromatic orb we put leap sum there and herald of ash there and we'll have to reactivate herald of ash we're, we're not going to bother with this, are we? No, we're good. Going. <laughs> there, and we are going to go back down the portal. Back down the portal. So, now you'll notice we have a large amount more damage. Our aura is back on as well. blue monsters you can see i always try to go a little bit out of my way to kill them pretty much always worth it rare monsters are always worth killing if they're a small monster but uh sometimes they'll be like a really really tanky big golem or something that will not be worth killing there we have very good damage now I will still be switching to Spectral Helix. Ooh. Just more single target damage. There, and now we are arriving at the Pyramid Apex. We can... Um, now is a good time to think about your life. Think about what kind of hobbies that you might want to have when you're older. I think of names for like future kids like you know you have so much time right now um if you know any good movies lord of the rings anything like that a good time to watch anything like that all right here we go finally he will go under and you just have to like you know kill the monsters he has a few attacks that we can show he has Slam. Gotta just run away from that. It's pretty slow, but it will one-shot you. He will summon monsters. He has a slow frost attack sort of thing. Like it'll put slow chilling ground on the ground. And he has a lightning attack. That's actually pretty scary. And he will also make the ceiling cave in. We'll keep him alive a little bit. There, do some lightning attack. We should also showcase dying pretty soon. There we go. So, the first attack won't do that much, but for the second one, you'll be shocked, taking more damage. Um, shocked is an ailment in Path of Exile, and there are several. There's quite a lot. Early on, we'll only uh, explain uh, Ignite, which is from Fire, Shock, which is from Lightning, and Chill or Freeze, which is from Cold. We are actually going to be using Ignite on this build. But those are all the attacks he has. Um, actually, we'll just die at the start of the next zone. Actually, we can die here, I guess. Oh. Okay, we, we could not die. Now, you do not want to wait. You can either portal back to town or log out, but you do not want to wait. He, for some reason, not only takes half a year to spawn, he also takes half a year to show the exit, and you already have the waypoint just by killing him. Thank you, amazing. There, we're going back to splitting steel. And again, if you don't like switching, remember you can just either keep using Spectral Helix all the time. Some people like that. Or you can use um, Shattering Steel instead of splitting. With all the steel skills, it's important to keep your steel shards up. And we're coming on one of the only quests that it's very important that you actually talk to somebody. First, you need to kill the guard captain, and then she will slowly untie herself. So, clearly, they haven't tied her up very well. And then you have to talk to her, and now she is in the next town. If you haven't, she will not be there, and you'll have to go back and find her.
there. Now we have to walk all the way to the end. There's no reason to go all the way back. And you can go straight out to slums. And during this act, we will be switching to... Um, we'll be switching to Explosive Arrow. Already now, it is not a bad idea to keep an eye out for a short bow. Short bow specifically. It could also... Crude bow is not the end of the world. Um, but what we're looking for is a extremely fast bow. This is going to be very important for the build we're playing. We're not looking for damage. We're not even really looking for gem levels this early. We are simply looking for um, high attack speed. It's very important for our build. We'll explain more on how attack speed benefits us later. But very important. You see our damage is amazing right now. It might even go down a little bit staying um or going explosive arrow depending on when we do it but it will eventually be by far the best choice and uh the problem with respecking is if you like if you like kept saying this for a long time it might be harder to go into your actual spec so sometimes you respec a little bit early just to save points bring the crematorium we're gonna grab two more life points up there we always want to make sure that we don't have more life than our accuracy. Uh, very easy to do on softcore. Can be hard to do on hardcore. Go down here. Grab another trial. We want to show ascending and stuff like that as well. Now ascending does nothing for this build early. Um, like your, your literal first point does actually nothing. And that is because the, the first... Like superpower point we get is um, only activated when you have a skill called Fortify, which the second skill gives. If we were an attack build, which we aren't really going to be, uh, it would affect us, but just, just because of the build we're playing. The first one is basically wasted until we get the second. So that makes that a lot of players will actually wait with Ascending until they're a lot higher level anyway. We did another one of those pesky trials. A three left to go. Actually four because I didn't I missed one in act one. There. That somber expression doesn't become those fetching features at all. Tear up and dance with me. And Heidi again. But at least now you finally get to kill her. She is gone forever after this. She actually taunts you in another place in here, Prisoner's Gate. I lied. I lied. You're going to see her many more times. You're going to see her many more times. There. Sorry, Clarissa, for your loss. Some people do pay attention to the story in this game. I didn't until a very long time. I think I had at least 10,000 hours before I even... I got sick with the flu once and read the story and lore. It's actually not bad, but most people don't care about it. Clarissa is currently mourning her husband's death. But she gave us a key. So that was good. You like the story? It's not bad. But it's not really why most people uh, play games like this. The lore is really nice. Hidden Cat Noodle has like a really good lore series. She explains all of it. Um, on hardcore, uh, hiding rare boxes isn't bad. On softcore, there's never a reason to. Um, oh, I should die. Let's just run into some monsters and die. Pretty sure I'm on softcore. I can't remember. I can't remember if I made the league hardcore softcore. I'm pretty sure it's softcore. Um, but we'll just die. We actually are like relatively tanky right now so it's pretty hard to die you really gotta try okay for softcore so on hardcore you only get the um i think it just says resurrect in town on on hardcore and then you appear in standard but uh here you have two options you have resurrect in town or resurrect a checkpoint if you put down a portal somewhere and you want to reaccess that portal you can resurrect in town however resurrect a checkpoint will just put you back either at the waypoint or lumps like the entrance
there. Now, in this zone, we have three busts that will give you a skill point. You only have one, sadly, not one for each. That'd be great, though. We are not too far away from moving away. And there's always one before the waypoint and two after. You never have to, like, run around looking, thinking there could be one over there. Oh, so I don't play soft for a lot. And I actually forgot this, but when you die, you have to re-enable your auras. I actually forgot that. Normally, I'm on hardcore. It's a very final thing dying. It does turn off your auras there, too. Just don't have much of a reason to turn them back on. We have the second bus and the third bus is over here on the right. There are a lot of different layouts, though. A lot of different layouts in every zone. Um, let's see. So we are level 26. We're actually going to be a bit over leveled by the time we actually get to swap. We're going to do a side area later called the library. And after we've done that, we're going to be switching to explosive arrow. We are going to need ideally an item that has a bl uh, red, red, green, green is what we're looking for. Um, it can be a bit of a pain getting something like that. So starting pretty much now, we are going to be checking the vendor every time we level so we want either gloves boots helmet or chest with red red green green we'll go back at the waypoint here hopefully we won't level up before hitting the waypoint hopefully we're using red red green green there we'll go check now I want a lot of alterations. Here we get the book of skill. Plus one skill point. Any red, red, green, green. We have a red, red, red. We have no four link. We also have nothing really for a socket other than that. Bring right. me back something nice, huh? So we'll go back next time we've leveled up. Oh, whoops. Let me just. Reload. I don't want to waste another portal. Is there a level rec for four links to appear? They appear at item level 25. I can't remember if vendors sell one or two levels above your level. I think it's one level above your level. So when you're level 24, vendors will sell. Well, actually, the Act 3 vendor will sell. Act 2 won't. There, we're going to grab Constitution, 20% max life, and 10% extra life. And we're going to grab the life mastery that gives just 50 flat life. Now, again, we do want to check on splitting steel and make sure we have 1,400 accuracy. We are flying. We're very tanky and not worried at all about losing our free extra damage. So we're doing really, really good on that. This is another trial here in the catacomb. So you don't need to do this right now. You can come back later when you're stronger and faster. Um, but I, I might as well do it right now. Might as well do it right now. There's no Endarial here. We'll be doing more late game content tomorrow. For more advanced players. This is more like... This is like supposed to be for completely new players to Path of Exile. I'm trying to think if there's something I haven't explained that I should have. Try to explain everything as we come across it. There will be a lot to explain when we change specs. This, do you think the service will be as bad as last week? Sorry. They were good. Weren't they? They weren't bad last week, sorry. They were good last week, sir. They haven't been bad in two leagues. I think out of the last, like, 12 leagues, there's only been one bad one. Was it after Ultimatum? It was Ultimatum? Yeah, there was one like disaster and, and other than that, 
very good league launches for a long time. They honestly like blow me away because no company gets league launches right or like launches right. So cre credit given where credit due. They they actually blow me away. You can see that traps are doing quite a lot of damage here. You don't want to saunter around in them. Oh. There. Pile of Ascendancy. We can portal back or log out. Whatever you prefer. Then... If I didn't have an instant right now, I would probably try to do that. Um, to try to get an instant. There's no pressure once you have one. I normally would try to have an instant at like level 24 and then again at level 42. And as you can see, I currently am not utilizing my sash at all. Um, so in Path of Exile, you can definitely like try the game for free. But I, I never like saying that it's entirely free to play because I don't know a single person that hasn't spent money on the game. Um, they don't have a bad business model at all. It's just, you know, limiting expectations. It will be pretty painful for completely free. Whereas it's very good for 20 bucks. Yeah, playing without the currency stab is uh, painful. Very painful. I have 630 hours on POV and I've never worn a crafted white item. Good tip. That's good. That's what we're here for. That's what we're here for. And now we have the option of going two different zones. A nice rule of thumb here I like to do is if I am under level 24, I will go to the right or like straight up and go to the next zone called Solaris Temple. And if I am 24 or higher, I will go just straight to docks. The reason for that is that uh, the zone is slightly lower level than Solaris. So it's easier to get XP there. Whereas it doesn't really matter once you're already 24. It's kind of whatever. Actually, it's slightly faster to go docks because you need an item there for the other zone. Um, and we can talk a little bit about how zone level and how XP works in Path of Exile. So you can see now that I'm in a level 29 zone and I am level 27. And in Path of Exile, you get full XP in zones three levels above or three levels below. So if I'm level four in Path of Exile, I'll get full XP in a level... Um, one zone and i will get full xp in a level seven zone this number increases by one every 16 levels so if i'm level 32 i will get full xp at level 37 zones and i will get full xp at level um 17 no 32 so i'm 28 28 right 27 math is hard EU math. Yeah, 27 to 37. Because you would have five levels above and below. And at 16, it would be full XP from level 20 uh, to 12. So 12 to 20. It's pretty easy to like figure it out roughly. Because um, sometimes, especially if you're trying hard to go faster, maybe you've seen me or Tai Tai or other players try to like zoom through the campaign and you're like, I really want to get faster. It actually is pretty easy to get just faster. But what ends up becoming really difficult is becoming faster while maintaining the XP you need. So especially in Act 4, a lot of people end up being like 8 to 10 levels below the zone and then they're suddenly not getting any experience anymore. And that can be a problem. So we are looking for a waypoint in this zone. You can actually tell if a zone has a waypoint in it. Um, so for example, this one with the black hole, they do not have waypoints in them. And we've actually picked up every waypoint right now. Uh, but if I go to town real quick, you'll see what a zone looks like when, it, when you haven't picked up the waypoint easier. It looks like that. You can see that it's like, when it's a small dot, you want a big dot. That means you've gotten the waypoint. We're looking for either the waypoint or just the quest item. Either is fine. This is also a really good zone to level in. And good leveling zones really have like high amounts of monsters. Oh, we actually have already seen the quest item. I just didn't pay attention. Um, 
Yeah, good leveling areas or good zones people recommend leveling in are known for having like high density of monsters. You'll notice that there's a lot more monsters here than in the other zones that we've been fighting in. They are actually like fairly dangerous, so it's definitely a zone you could die in. But uh, yeah, there's just so many monsters. So it's very fast to level here. There. Don't worry, you can't land in the water. Now we're right next to the waypoint as well. There's not much left of this unexplored. So we could just go pick up the waypoint and then we have it for future needs in case maybe I feel like I want to be level 32 or something before we spec an explosive arrow. Um, it, it just depends a little bit, right? On, on how strong I feel. And then this would be a good zone to over level two. There. Now... We are going to start taking skill points that don't matter anything for what my current need or what my current build is. We are going to take um, skill points for what we're specking into. Honestly, we might as well go left side. I kind of prefer having a flask to soul phasing anyway. We'll talk about that flask when we find one. Um, and again level up the gems as they level it's not an emergency if you like clear half a zone with it like while there but these gems for example hero the rash and hero the purity they are currently not gaining experience and an important thing to note uh, i remember when i was new i was always worried like do my gems level faster like what if i only have one gem does it level really fast no gems always gain the same amount of experience no matter what doesn't matter if you have 50 gems leveling or if you have one. They aren't sharing the experience. And um, something that can be good, especially for builds like this, you want to eventually level gems in your offhand. So later on, especially once I um, like 8 to 10, uh, act 8 to 10 or at the start of maps, we have a weapon swap. And I would like here, I would be leveling 6 explosive iron gems. This is very common. And I would say you should always be leveling 6 gems in your offhand. And that is because they actually provide quite a lot of value once they are level 20. Because once you have a level 20 gem, you can use a special orb that has a chance to turn it to level 21. Or improve the quality. And other players will want to buy these off you. So it's like a good little extra passive income. It's worth leveling gems there. It's also good for um, what I end up doing quite a lot. I play solo self on, so I don't get to trade with other players. And I'll sometimes pre-plan like, oh, I really want to play a ball lightning build or arc or something else. And um, I don't necessarily want to start from scratch. So I will, on one of my really powerful characters, level gems for future characters. So that I will just be instantly able to... Um, have pre-level gems and I get a lot of power from those. Nice little power boost. That is the Valorm. We haven't found one yet, so I'll explain that once we find one. I'm trying to explain things once we find it, then people get sort of a, a natural playthrough. And if you find a if you're sitting there with an orb you don't know what does, you haven't found it yet. We'll like try to explain every orb by the end of the playthrough and just there's no orb you should use by now that I haven't used, so just bank it. Probably too money, I don't know. I've never done that. I never bother farming that. My nice card. Takes a while to farm. Here's another contempt. We don't need these anymore. Huh. It would be good if we were going to... Well, actually, it's, it's a low essence as well, so it'd probably never be good. Um, but, yeah. There's no reason for us to use that anymore. We're about to switch off being a physical damage build. Is that you have? Not a the new gem sockets is just for... It's a colorblind feature, but I can show you real quick. It's just... Um, can user interface. And then you have default mouse cursor. You can change and you also have socket notches. It's just like colorblind features.
So, we uh, talked to Diala and got the quest item, the Infernal Self, and she also gives you an amulet choice. You can choose, make sure that you have the stat requirement. Like, sometimes you might need int, sometimes you might need strength or dex. Um, we don't really care about leveling int right now. Yep, we are currently resist camp. We have a white helmet, but we are also... Oh, oops. I need to go see if I can get a four link. Does a colorblind feature? Yep. I mean, you can use it if you think it looks cool, too. I don't think we need anything Jen? here. Oh, we can pick up Brace, because we, we might as well. We will be using that a lot later. For leveling, we'll be using another aura called Determination. Brace is an avoidance-based aura. That is a four link, but it is not a good enough four link. Hmm. Okay, let's go level up and then we. Yeah, let's just kill a monster in docks and go back. As soon as you're level 24, the Act 3 vendor will start selling you four links. You also find it in. Uh, as soon as you start getting item level 25 items. 5 link or 5 socket is 35 and uh, 6 link is 50. 6 Good socket. Alright, let's see. That one, if I link it, that one isn't too bad. Right. Normally, you would have had a 2 red, 2 green by now. We are going to have a dream. One meme, one dream. Okay, I tried using my fusing orb. I came here expecting a four link and I didn't get one. And you'll notice I'll pick up like pretty much every item type, even things I don't need, like once, just to get alterations and stuff. Stay out of the shadows. Right, boy. You normally never find binding orbs this early. Sadly. Um, binding orbs is a guaranteed four link. But, um, it's stupidly rare. Stupidly rare. It's mostly something you get on your endgame characters for new characters. Let me keep building the skill tree there. We are now, instead of going straight to piety, we're going to go to, um... Oh, actually, there's something else we can look for. For the vendor resets again. We uh, wouldn't mind finding a high item level short bow. It's kind of rare. Kind of rare. So I'm going to check Act 2. I don't want to go to Act 1 because they'll always be available in Act 1. I can just go get one whenever. Well, I might as well just go get one now. Just on the off chance that they're not there. But uh, Short Bow is really good for the next build we're going to be playing because it has a very high base attack speed. The biggest thing people fuck up with the bow build we're playing is that they'll do like a long bow or something like that. Yeah, there is in fact no uh, short post, so it's a good thing I checked. We uh, have to find that. If not, we can make a new character and that will very quickly be able to find a short bow. Some builds will also do something we refer to as muling, which is, for example, quite a lot of Ascensis don't get onslaught early on. So you'll make either a Scion, which you don't have access to as a new player, or you will make a Duelist and kill Hail Rank, and then you can buy uh, Onslaught. But uh, nearly every build wants Onslaught early on. It's nice for that movement speed. Why is there a permanent cursor in the middle of the screen? That's probably on your screen. There's no cursor on my screen. Ghost cursor. The dark spot to the middle of your head? You mean this? That's a um, door stopper. That's the door stopper. The marker in the map? That is my character. That is telling me where I am in case I get lost. That is my character. Or stop for MTI. 
Ah, oh, there's the double X, but now it's too late. What if it's really good? It isn't. Um, so we can like explain what a really good item would be at the moment. Um, so we would be looking for, obviously you can see we have physical damage on my current weapon. And in Path of Exile, it's not super important to explain for this, uh, but we are using it early on anyway. If you get percentage physical damage and flat physical damage, they work together to increase the total damage on the weapon. And then the next build we're going to be leveling is very different. It is not not like base the same as a normal attack skill. We get a lot of damage per level. And uh, we are also going to be scaling Ignite later. Early on we are attacked. There we're going to have the waypoint here. And then we have to find the secret entrance that nobody knows about. Special trick just for you find a hidden bookcase and then down here we will be able to uh, grab every every gem and we're actually going to start explaining a lot more about gems now in general so far we've only explained the things that we are using so far and there's probably a lot of people that are just playing along and they don't really know that much about it I'm trying to like draw it out a little bit bit different than last time because I feel like it very like it becomes a bit of a content overload very easily so we'll see how new players feel about this I'm trying to draw it out a little bit and not just super overload with information you don't necessarily need so we're going to talk and explain gems more in detail now I would really love feedback are there any new players watching on Twitch like completely new it's a little tight around the well, mostly mostly YouTube watch on YouTube but me kinda I'm a complete noob okay well I like feedback for her. if it's better to draw it out a little bit because I feel last time I like it's very easy to content overload people in act one we're gonna explain gems a lot more now Is there a way to farm the steel skill jewel on SSF? Not really. Ancient orbs. And heist. Not new, but every time you explain a gem mechanic, I learn something. That's good. It's a very advanced game. These are div cards. Um, they are basically... You complete a set and you will get a reward. You hand them in. So I could stay in this zone. This zone specifically drops this color. There will be other zones like it that will drop this color. And once I've got all three, I can talk to an NPC and hand in the div cards. There'll be loads of good or bad rewards. Every divination card is player made. Every single one. DGD as a company hasn't made a single one. Obviously their staff can buy it too and make one personally. And the community manager has a card. But uh, as a as a company, they haven't made a single card. So even the ones that are really bad, somebody paid a thousand bucks for him. Kind of interesting. Yeah, it's on YouTube already, Noxley. Out of craft. Go back to town. All right, let's see. I think we've leveled since last time. We want to check for short bows and we want to check for a two red, two green. Keep that just in case I find more fusings. No high level short bows. That's fine. And I'll probably wait with switching until I get a two, two red, two green. Whoever paid a thousand dollars for 40 wisdom scrolls is mad. Uh, let's see. No short bow here, but it is a good quiver. Kind of don't want it to be blue, though. But I do want that quiver. If we find a white quiver like this, a feathered arrow quiver, that's actually going to be very good for what we're doing. See if we can find a short bow. 
a lot of divination cards are tribute to like uh loved ones and stuff like that Still alive, are we? there we get that's the highest item level we can get in act one Stay we have a shitty short bow we could just throw that away um we are going to get avatar the hunt doesn't do anything for us now i have three i've paid for three well two well one we basically said how fast can we crowdfund a div card and it took 10 minutes and then we bought the alteration card right um i don't think any of these is something we use if i remember but you do get free one here but there's nothing here we can use so that's fine um we are now going to buy explosive arrow normally you have to kill a gravishis to get explosive arrow however we um we did library and what it library does is it lets you buy every gem for what every character could buy so some gems are locked and you can't buy them it's a very outdated and archaic system i do not feel it adds anything for new players because you still see so many there's only 10 to 15 missing and it just confuses new players even more in my opinion um if it was a small amount being shown to begin with i would understand it but either way once you've done the library you'll have access to it. this is every gem that exists to this point there will be more gems in act four um but yeah this is every gem so um the way gems work in path of exile is there's multiple ways to see if things are working so obviously right now i've just been like telling you what to use and not really how it works and you know what let's do the in-depth explanation when we switch to explosive arrow because that'll make even more sense then and you can see the swap so we are going to move towards piety and we'll hopefully get one more level and get the two red two green we need by then i don't i don't want to do that when i'm about to level we'll we'll Buy a few things if I need it. I really want to avoid that. Can't you buy them in your hideout when, while doing without doing this quest? Nope. Not at the start of the league, and especially not as a new player. And this video is for new players. Here's another divination card. It is not a very good one. It is never worth picking up. It does nothing. We do not need to kill Garishis. The reason for that is we've already done library. He's actually pretty dangerous. The only time I've died during everything explained was to Garishis. Alright, whoops. Fine, right, thank you. And... For people following this build, like we will have an up-to-date guide for um, like doing what I'm doing now should be exactly what the guide will tell you to as well. And if there are for any reason any changes, we will put that in the description of this video. But there should not be any. There should not be any that I can think of. But we don't know until later today. But they've been like hinting that there are very, very little changes this time. Normally they do a balance manifesto outlining what changes and things like that they're planning to do. And the difference this time is that they said um, to start planning builds early. And I don't think they would do that if they were going to do any like traditional nerf. Personally, I'm mostly expecting DD to get nerfed through the bug fix. No nerf, just reworks. I, I just don't think they would say that if they were going to nerf anything. That would affect things like Explosive Arrow. We're not using any bug mechanics. It could be a major troll. I just don't... I don't believe it. I don't think they would. I'm expecting no nerfs for this build. Right, let's see. We just need one more level before we get town, and we need to try to get the two red, two green. 
Um, let's just go back and kill some monsters. And hopefully... We get the two red, two green by now. Normally, I feel like I would have had it by now, but... A little unlucky. It happens. Worst case scenario, I will play... With a three link. And people that are watching will hopefully have a four link. Should be fine on a three link, too. Let's see. Hello. There. And we found our first unique item. It is a comb sign. It is not very good. But it is uh it'll sell for alchemy shards. What's up? It's in the bill guide shadow. It's very easy. Any two red, two green. No. There is not. No good for link either. That is unfortunate. Need something? All right, we are going to buy a fusing from the vendor. So there are currency exchanges uh, without talking to other players. So four jewelers will sell for one fusing. You can't vendor it. So when people sell, say, sell your jewelers for fusings, they don't mean literally vendor them. They mean buy them like this. See you. Okay. That'll have to do. We'll just have a lot less damage. We'll just have a lot less damage. So we will actually play on a three link. So what I'm going to do now, as you see, I have a bunch of alterations saved up. Let's see if we have some luck. I'm hoping for any attack speed. I'm going to use the augmentation when there's a prefix. And hold down to see which is which. So the physical damage is a prefix. Obviously, I just know them by heart. But we are looking for the suffix attack speed. And it's very common to just get any tier. This is now already okay. That's all we need now. Uh, I'm going to take a quick break. And we'll play some ads on Twitch during the break. I'm going to go to the toilet. And uh, we'll be back. If you're watching on YouTube, you can just skip this break. I'll be right back.
Not new here, but I got a question. What corresponds is good mechanic practice? Positioning and rotation with class. I played for 2,000 hours, and mechanically speaking, I haven't felt the need to learn a lot of tricks compared to other games. I mean, watching speedrunning videos by Tai Tai is really good. And yeah, positioning is huge. Always moving. Let's see. We are... Might as well... Did we take the bow master yet? We don't actually need it since we don't have a cool rain, nor do we have the good quiver that I want. I want to get a white one so I can craft one. Don't want that. Don't do anything like right, that. let's do a big swap. I am going to go buy all the gems I need. Um, we keep this just in case we have a big change of heart, which we shouldn't do. We'll wait with vendoring it. Right, let's see. Let's go buy all the gems we need. Um, some we can buy already leveled. A downside to buying them in Act 3 of the library is that they are level 1. Whereas, uh, there are some that we want high level. So, for example, oops, Balo. Ballista Totem Support. If I bought this in library, it would be level 1 and my totem would fall over instantly. Yeah. Wait, no, we do need this. Uh, yeah, it would fall over instantly. Um, I don't care that much about the stats on it. That's fine. I can just craft fire ass on it. There, we're gonna do ballista totem. We are gonna do let's see, where's the explosive arrow? Did I not buy one? I did. Here. Here's the explosive arrow, and then we are going to do lesser yeah. multiple projectiles. There. So now I have a ballista totem, explosive arrow, and lesser multiple projectiles. Once I'm done buying all the gems, I will a and explain exactly how the skill gems work together. Um, we are also going to now go buy faster attacks. The reason for that... Actually, we'll get it as a quest reward. Um, we are also going to buy elemental damage with attacks. Now, the reason we're buying faster attacks, even though we're not even going to be using it, we'll just put it here, is... See, I'll move them around so it's easier to swap those two. We don't have that much single target early on. So, we are going to use the lesser multiple attacks for clearing and killing monsters, and we are going to use the faster attacks for single target. Okay, no good quiver. We'll check for that later. We're looking for the projectile speed one, and the reason we're looking for the projectile speed one is what do you remember the mass race I showed you earlier? Here at the bottom, it's increases and reductions to projectile speed, also applied to damage with bows. Um, so getting a quiver with 30% projectile uh, speed would also be the same as 30% projectile damage. And there is a bow that the currenting mechanic makes it very easy to get called Quill Rain. It's in the guide as well. It's the best in slot for leveling. Uh, it's usually very easy to get with league mechanics. I'm hoping and... and anticipating that it is going to be easy to get with with every league mechanic but we don't know so i'm going to be leveling without one um so we'll uh we'll wait with taking that until i get the quiver at least um they're also very common to find and if you're in trade league they're very easy to buy assuming they're easy to find so they usually are we are now going to go for farsight and we can see it's slightly different now than what i would have in the guide because normally I would take the Ignite nodes here, but I don't bother leveling with Ignite anymore. Um, so that's the only change I can think of. We are also going to be taking uh, Elemental Equilibrium. I actually should have taken that now. Uh, let's see. Did a refund there. So to refund, you just click the refund button and then you would unallocate it and click accept. Um, but we'll take Elemental Equilibrium now and then I'm going to set up here and explain how that works. Actually, a bit of a more complicated node. Yeah, more of a complicated one. Let's see. Don't need any of these. We can just sell all of that, actually. What else do we need? We want to go get Blink Arrow. And we're also going to get Flame Dash. We might as well buy them at level 1. Doesn't super matter. Some cooldown recovery. So we are going to buy a flame dash. That's in tab five. That means that I need an int amulet. And we are going to get a blink arrow. I really like using both. You technically do only need one. Let's speak again. I like both. 
There, what else do we need? We don't need Herald of Purity. We're actually never going to use Maim. We just never got a four link in time. Don't need Chance to Bleed. No longer use Onslaught or Splitting Steel. We are going to need to start using Determination soon, so we can buy that now. Boom. We are going to use Flammability. We'll show the full gems once I've gotten everything. Definitely need more Int. Um, need Frenzy. Frenzy is important. Not that many things to use yet. And we can also just have... Um, we put the frenzy up here, so that has faster attacks. No reason not to. Now, if let's see, just buy a herald. Oh, I buy herald device. Just buy a herald device uh, in case we cannot get um, Go with care. damage on a necklace. Buy that for later. I don't think we need anything else. What is it? Let's see. I don't have that yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy one Orb of Transmutation and buy a Lapis Amulet. And then I'm going to use my Orb of Contempt. I really would love to get... Obviously, it's going to guarantee the flat physical damage. It wouldn't be bad if I had an Essence here that um, forced elemental damage. I'll explain why in a second. Okay, this is great. Then we don't need the Herald of Ice. So it's important to see here that we have the 1 to 2 cold damage to attacks. Very great. It's also got open suffix so we can craft resist. Um, that means I'm going to need to go buy another orb of transmutation. Less important on softcore. Obviously we're okay running around not being rest cap. So we're going to craft some lightning res. There. Boom. That's our last transmute. Right. I think we have everything then. Don't have a quiver. I'm not going to bother with one until I get one that actually does something. And obviously I would really recommend being four linked. I wouldn't be bad to stay for another three levels, two levels in docks. Trying to get a four link. Um, and that's probably what I would do, especially on hardcore. So you have two options. You can either over level, which will give you a large amount of damage. And sell everything we're not using here now. Protector, Spectral Helix, Herald of Ice. We'll keep the Grace. We'll keep the Flammability. Okay, we're going to sell everything we're not using. Um, Overleveling is so big for this build. We'll get a large amount of damage. Nice. There, and then we have Flammability. We want to make sure that all our abilities have the always attack without moving. What I do, this is a neat little trick. Oh, I actually need one more blue socket. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to put a jeweler on my boot, giving it more sockets. That's what jewelers do. And gloves, helmet, and boots can have a maximum of four sockets. Chests or 200 weapons can have six sockets, can have up to six links, and one handers can have up to three. So I want one blue socket here. We're going to use Aura Chromatic until I get one. I'm going to put my flame dash here. Now, what I've done is I have rebound some of my hotkeys, and I can mention that now. So Q is on my second bar now. I don't really use Q a lot. And I blink arrow, and I put my uh, movement ability on space bar. And then on the second one, I rebound the third one, which is normally control E. I rebound that to mouse button five. You have a second skill bar that you can see what's on it with control. You don't actually need to hold control down to use whatever's on the second skill bar. So you can see um, whenever I'm using my flame dash. Oh, there. Might look like I was using that one. Like it's nowhere on my bar right now, but it's still on mouse button five. Let's see, So there, that's pretty much all I need. It's not a lot of buttons to press on this build, so it's pretty easy. You're just going to be running around pushing down your totems. And now you can see we're a very different build. And it might actually feel a little bit worse now in the start. So let's explain everything we've just done in detail for new players. So currently we have a blink arrow. And that is our new movement ability. It leaves a clone behind. You can see it has a cooldown. And I can use blink arrow and the new ability flame dash. So we have two that you can use together. You can use them separately too. 
Um, but they, they're they really, really good combo together because they do not use the combo. Like, or sorry, they don't put each other on cooldown. Like, I can use Flame Dash into Blink Arrow and like... If I see when I'm um, using Flame Dash, you can see that it's using a charge. Whereas Blink Arrow doesn't. That's what makes that really good. Next up, we're leveling a Grace Gem. The only reason we're doing this is uh, we're going to be using this in our end game version and getting levels on this early would be really good. I've also actually forgotten a gem, which I'm going to go by now. It's called Skitterbots. That's kind of all we need to use for leveling is Skitterbots. It's... As Aura. We actually do want to have a lot of mana free. Again, right. I am going to move Precision over here. We hopefully don't need to use Precision. I'm also going to use Determination over here. And then I can color my gloves to get a blue socket um, without worrying. So as you know, already tell sockets and socket pressure are a bit annoying in Path of Exile. They are going away eventually. Right, okay, we'll continue. Flammability, this is a curse. This is something that I will put on the enemy monsters, and in this case, they will lose 25% fire res, and I will have a higher chance to ignite them. The only time I bother cursing is on bosses or like really strong, unique monsters. Next up, Skitterbots. This is a very confusing thing for new players. It's just an aura and I set it and forget it. And what it does, and it's used in almost every build. Um, summons a chilling and skitter shocking skitterbot, which will trigger your traps and detonate your mines. And this is why it's so confusing. because We're not playing mines. We're not playing traps. What it also does, though, is um, that they will shock. And it doesn't really say that. So it, I, well, it says that the two, top two blue lines. Shocking Skitterbot's aura shocks enemies near it, and chilling Skitterbot's aura chills enemy near it. And what that basically means is that we, at the end game, end up getting 18% more damage, and our enemies will move slowly. So they are really good for every build. If you are shocking naturally, then people generally don't use them. So like a lightning-based build. But we aren't, so we're just getting a lot of damage and some defense from these, and they're pretty cheap aura. So they're really, really good. Our main damage support, or our main damage now, is Explosive Arrow. This is normally just a um, bow attack, and we can remove the totem to see what it would like. You could self-attack with this. This wouldn't be very good. Um, the reason that wouldn't be very good is you'll see when I hit something, it detonates. However, when I attack the same target multiple times, these will stack and count as one explosion, but with multiple fuses. And the more arrows are stuck in one target before it explodes, the bigger the damage it will be. And that is why the Ballista Totem comes into play and it completely changes the way the build is. Because now we can have three. Three Ballistas already. And this is really great. Um, so at the late game, we're going to have as many as six Totems. And you very easily get to five. And... Um, yeah, we'll, we'll be able to get a large amount of explosions in our enemy. So you can see, that is kind of hard, um, or how Path of Exile is, where the, you have support gems that completely change the way the gem works. And there's a couple of ways you can see if this is working. I wanted to take this now instead of at the very start. But now, for example, look at Explosive Arrow, right? You see that they're they're highlighting both of these. Lester Multiple Projectiles and Ballista Totem get highlighted when I look over this, and that means they're working. Another way to see that they're working is you see the letter changes on this one here. Now, do notice that this is a 4 socket and we do have elemental damage with attacks as well. It's not doing anything. That is because they are not linked together. So we're just having this leveling. That's what we would like to use as the fourth one. We would love to use elemental damage with attacks. We simply do not have it. <gasps> um... Other than that, we have Precision. This is just for in case that, let's see, we'll click on Explosive Arrow and then Offense. Currently, I have 980 accuracy and 707 life. So if I drop below that, I would turn on my Precision. As you can see, it uses a large amount of my mana and it would be a bit of an inconvenience. Uh, you could also be running around with Determination. It would be tanky. However, look at how often you're going to need to flash. It is a bit annoying. So I am just going to run around with just Skitterbots until mana becomes less of an issue in the future. Um, other than that, we have Flame Dash, as I showed you. And that is pretty much it. 
Oh, and we have Frenzy, and I will teach you how to use that as we're using it. But Frenzy is just something we're going to use for a buff. Later, we're going to be using it to curse as well, but that's a bit more complicated, and we'll explain that then. And yeah, that's like the special thing about Path of Exile. Like, every, every skill can be modified in a really cool way. And if you're coming in late and asking questions that's already been answered, either somebody in chat will answer it or I will skip over it. So you see a lot of things people are asking has already been covered earlier. We're now going to go to Lunaris Temple and we're going to see if this is playable. Normally I have a four link at this point. Still at rank one, even Why after swapping. So from home? Let's see if the sick witch is in. So, the way this works now as a playstyle is I am running around and just um, putting down the totems. And there's a really special mechanic, and I'll explain why I basically suggested you there was a chance we were going to use Herald of Ice. And that is because of Elemental Equilibrium. If I hover over my explosive right now, you can see at the top that is 2 to 3 cold damage. Or here, you can see it does physical damage and cold damage. And more importantly, no fire damage. This is actually a very complicated mechanic. Hits that deal elemental damage, remove exposure to those elements, and inflict exposure to all our elements. And what this means is it, if I hit an enemy with cold damage, they will lose 25 fire and 25 lightning. Men. If I hit it with cold and lightning, it'll still only lose 25 fire. Um, however, if I hit it with fire, it will not lose any fire resist, and we're missing out on a lot of damage. And the reason this works on Explosive Arrow is even though we're primarily dealing fire damage, we have a two-staged attack. So whenever you see me deal damage now, we're hitting them with cold damage. And the explosion is fire. And you see the explosion pretty much always kills them. And it also refreshes when we're hitting them with cold damage again. So it might be very complicated, but basically what this means is as long as it doesn't say main hand fire damage anywhere here, you are getting 25% more damage. It is very strong. You don't really need to understand how it works. You just need to never have fire damage there. That also means not using Herald of Ash or having fire damage on any of your gear. You could have percentage fire damage. You cannot have flat fire damage. Even flat fire damage to spells would not do anything. This is a big damage boost for us. And uh, you would really, really notice it if we didn't have it. And as long as you're doing one damage, that is enough. You don't need to do a lot of damage. Just need one. It's a really cool mechanic. Not everything can use that because most things aren't a two-staged attack like the one we have. Like, for example, if I was using Fireball, then I'm hitting with Fireball and I'm just removing my own damage. Or rather, not gaining any. Um, but, but we're very lucky that we have a two-staged attack, so we get to use this mechanic for additional damage. It has actually been nerfed a lot. It used to be even stronger. It is very good. It's a very, very easy thing to mess up. Later, you might have been like, you might be three hours from now. You might be thinking, why is my damage so low? And hopefully you'll remember, oh, let me look at my damage. And you'll go back in the panel here, you'll click Explosive Arrow, click on Offense, and you'll see that you have main hand fire damage. And you're missing 25% damage, which is a large amount. Very large amount. Um, normally, as well, I would be on a 4-link, so this would look even better. And again, remember, this is without any leveling items. We don't even have a Quiver. The reason I'm not using a Quiver is the majority of the ones that were for sale right now have fire damage built into them, so I can't use them at all. Uh, and I really want that light. Projectile Speed Quiver. Now we're coming up on Piety. She's a fairly formidable boss. So I'm going to switch in faster attacks with this and multiple projectiles. Just to get a few more fuses into her. So you've chosen to end our affair, duelist. I shall cherish your memory. If we find a GCP, we'll do the higher spike. Oh, and we also need to curse her. So you can see that there's a curse floating around her now. Indicating that she is cursed. And ideally we would have... Ooh, Scary. So, Ice Form is the only one you need to be scared of. Fire Form is a lot less scary. Even just moving slightly makes so not really enough damage. Um, and now you'll notice we're using all our abilities. 
So in fire farm, I usually just run around a little bit. So you can't do much. But you can see the frenzy is this little thing here. Players gain more damage and increase attack and cast speed for each frenzy charge they have. Basically, it will give us more attack speed, but also 12% more damage. And now you'll be hearing that I'm saying more damage very specifically. And a lot of people call it path of multipliers, multipliers for a reason. Because you're obviously getting more damage from our keystone. We're getting more damage from frenzy and it all really adds up. There we go. Society is down. Now we're very heavily looking for a good four link that we can use. Sorry. Very heavily looking for that. Someone we're also looking for a quiver we can use. We also Why? have probably sold a little bit too many things for transmutations and not enough for... Sorry, a too much for alterations and not enough for transmutations. That's fine. Um, these boots are technically better than mine. Do I bother switching? I can. Do anything I, would. Uh, I can get a green socket here. The reason they are better is because they have cold res on them. I don't need the dexterity. They have the same amount of movement speed. And in a pinch, I can craft an additional What's res on these. That's because this does only have one suffix and it's a rare item. So it's two more suffixes to craft on. Now, do note you can only craft one stat on an item. I can't craft five, six, etc. Only a fire damage one. And I don't think I see a four link. I also don't think I've leveled up since last time I've seen. So I'm going to level up again and then go look. And we will check that once we level. You can see even by hovering over the enemies you see at the top they are 10% chilled and 15% shocked. And like I said earlier to see prefix and suffix or more information on anything you hold alt down. Gives you all the info you need. It's great. Generally, alt in Path of Exile is just more info on anything. So, now we are not going to go straight to the door. We are going to go up here in the corner to get the last trial. Ideally, it will actually be my second last because I forgot the first one. There, ow. There, so now we're only missing prison act one. There is a recipe over here. I never grab it because it is um, not something I use. I'm never going to craft all the tributes. Um, so I usually leave this one and you don't need to pick it up. I would usually use the tier 2 or tier 3 recipe later. I normally don't have stat issues this early. Not bad to pick up though. There, now we're gonna go in here, and once we get the next waypoint, I will go back and we can get the um, last trial and we can show ascendancy. Um, actually, no, we're definitely going to wait with that. I would feel pretty okay doing it on a four link, but you also gotta remember oh, and we need to switch back. You also gotta remember we are pretty weak early on compared to where we'd want to be right now. We're missing a link, and there's no reason to do it. We just we don't get a benefit. So normally on this build, I would do my Ascentance when I'm like level 55. Drops will be available in this channel later. 4 hours and 30 minutes. Right now we're doing a tutorial for new players. Not, not taking a lot of questions from chat right now, but people in chat can help ask the questions. This is a proximity shield. It basically means that whatever you're dealing damage with needs to be inside the bubble to deal damage. Very annoying. In fact, probably one of the most annoying things in the entire game. And you see we have pretty okay damage, even on a three link. We really would want a four link ASAP, but we are killing most of the things we want. Technically, this is a two link since less than multiple projectiles is simply for clearing. Simply for clearing. Wait, oh, straight down. Do this just yet. Let's see. <sighs> I have to decide a difficult thing now and what I'm going to do for the next time. Do I go down for Panopticon first or do I go up to Elemental Overload? In Gauntlet and for myself, I usually go down to Panopticon. It's probably the safer best bet going up to Elemental Overload and Ancestral first. 
I think I go up first. It's better for new players, especially. I might not do that myself. So sometimes, especially when you're playing both solo southbound and hardcore, you'll do sometimes like different things on the fly. And then we always think of like, what is the easier and safest doctrine for new players? Um, for whatever the guide is. Right now, we're just moving through the game. Here's an exile, the first one we've seen. These are, um, you know, rogue players. They're not really players, but they're, you know, supposed to emulate players. Um, and they drop a lot of, um, a lot of loot. And we were so lucky. Look at this, a quiver, and it doesn't even have fire damage. Wow, look at the great stats. Surely this is perfect for our build. And very many people would now put it on. But look, suddenly a lot of your damage is gone. You're barely dealing damage at all. So what has changed now? That is because the Quiver has Pierce. And what that does is that it'll go through the monster and the explosion will not stick in the monster. So we're, we're basically, if we get Pierce on this build, removing all of our damage, sadly. So there are two Quivers you can't use. You can't use the fire damage one and you cannot use the Pierce one. So this is some very easy things to mess up for this one. Sadly, because it was a really good quiver. Really good quiver. So what makes this quiver good? It had life on it. That's great. It had accuracy. We used that. It had dexterity. I mean, that's okay too. Uh, it has resist. That's awesome. I like not dying. And it has lightning damage to attack, so we don't need to worry about having that on another item. Now you can have lightning and cold to attack, so you just don't want to never ever have fire. We also do not have a Valor. Alright. We also didn't go for the waypoint, but that's fine. We'll just go straight for the boss. Alright. This might be a little slower than I like on a 3-link, but it'll still be fine. I guess it's always better to show the most scuff than not scuff. And then people that find one will feel great. Welcome to the greatest of arenas, duelist. So in fights, you really want to, um, like, in actual boss fights, you want to keep your frenzy up, and you want to curse the enemies that you want to kill. Great thing about totems is that it allows you to, like, keep your distance and not be the main thing that they're trying to attack. So we should, we should approximately have, like, an additional, straight up, just 22% more damage than this. And like I said, a really great thing about Explosive Arrow is if you just overlevel, you get 15% more damage roughly per level. You get a large, large amount of damage. Just by leveling. That's why um, when uh, experienced players are doing new characters, very often they'll like focus on like things like gem levels on their new characters from their high level gear. Like twink items basically. There. So there's a lot, a lot of mini monsters you have to fight here. This one is the only one that starts becoming kind of scary. And this one. So the two last ones are very dangerous. Um, that's because they are specifically physical. Well, that one's fizz and fire. This one is just fizz. Uh, whereas the other ones are elemental damage. And we are resist capped at this point. And hopefully by now you know how to easily get resist cap with the uh, crafting, crafting bench technology I showed you. Oh. So, that big blue move, he is actually supposed to say Touch of God. For some reason, this is bugged and he just... I don't know, maybe they felt his kill count wasn't high enough. But, uh, that one. It's supposed to have voice lines, which I'm pretty sure I have turned on. Yeah, I have dialogue very hard. Dialogue is a really good indicator, normally, in Path of Exile, that a boss is about to do something scary. It's pretty bad that it's bugged. Because as you can see, it does a large amount of damage. I was actually expecting that to one-shot me. Anything that's slow in Path of Exile will generally do an insane amount of damage and have a big chance to kill you. So, as you've seen in the cycle I'm doing right now, I'm trying to keep, make sure there's three totems up, I'm trying to keep my three frenzy charges up, and I'm trying to keep the enemy cursed. So that's a bit of a cycle. 
it's not the end of the world if you aren't keeping all of them up permanently. Um, it's just more damage. So, especially by level leveling, you could just like slap down the totems and they'll die pretty fast. Is everyone going explosive at a start? If so, I'm going something else. Lol, too expensive. Um, it depends on the patch notes, but probably a large amount will go explosive arrow. But the good thing is that the build is cheap no matter what. It's a build that can't become expensive. That's why it's such a great starter. And if you're new and wondering what he meant, uh, very often when a lot of people choose the same build, the items for that build will become very expensive. There's just no rare items used in the build. Except one. Um, a natural instinct. Very expensive jewel. The only item that will become expensive. Other than that, everything is very cheap. That's what makes a really, really good starter. Sometimes people will make build guides. I'm pretty against this, but sometimes people will make build guides for beginners. They use very, fairly rare items. And whenever you have a few hundred thousand people trying to make the same build, those will skyrocket in value. And you just have a lot of sad people. Will never be expensive, Mario. That's what I just explained. Please don't die, please. Will never be expensive. You don't use Polaric Devastation in the build. But yeah, all of this will be incredibly cheap. There, right, let's go switch back to Lesser Multiple Projectiles. You notice I'll swap each time. Especially if you're on a 4 link, you don't need to do this as much. Um, but especially on a 3 link, you have to. Especially on a 3 link. You see, we're clearing really well. Actually, clears better than our damage right now. How do you see the massive red aura of the previous boss? You actually want to stand inside that. I should have explained that better. I've not been explaining boss fights as much as I could. Um, so the, the last boss Dominus, he has like a, he makes like a shield for you that you're supposed to stand inside. It's when you panic and run away from him, you die. I'll, uh, I'll try to explain bosses a little bit more like I was. Kind of forgot about the aura. There. We're almost leveled up. Maybe we'll, so now we have two vendors. Once we get to town here, we have two vendors that can um, sell us four links. So now we should very quickly get four links. I kind of want to avoid leveling up actually before we go to town. Just so we get a second try. Four link is pretty core this by this yet. point. Yeah, if you run outside in the rain, you'll start bleeding and you'll die. Okay... So there's nothing good on here, and we're also like not too keen to switch around a lot of gear until we find something really good. Um, let's see, that helmet is very good. This is all the four stats that we need, so we are likely going to change to that. Um, so if we look at that helmet, it has life, it has cold rest, it has a bunch of accuracy, and fire rest. It does not have the links that I need, but I can just boom and... I need one more boom, but see, we can sell this too. There's just no reason for us to stash that away. Are there any four links? Anything? Oh, okay. I'm going to buy that because that can be too red, too green. And I would rather, like I said, go check again. Act three. I don't have I checked this level. I don't think so. How you doing? I don't think I've checked this level. Here's that. Here's Quiver. No, nope, nothing. Is there any saving beginners from YouTube guides? Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of people just re-upload old guides and change what the tags. Sadly, yeah, I don't really want that either. I mean, it would be good to have a Quiver, but I don't have a transmute. Right, let's level up and then we'll check them again. 
Wolf pelt was four leg. Yeah, but we already have a four leg helmet. That can easily get two red, two green. I'm just trying to avoid getting a helmet because I kind of want to use the guild to sell it. We're level 32. That is a fine level for progressing. You want to be at least 31 or 32 at this point. If not, you could overlevel a little bit. No reason to explain that right now, Subi. They don't have a way of getting more. The hardest thing about making content for new players is you don't want to over explain things. You in fact on purpose have to lie. There's so many things that are pointless. Like, it doesn't matter if you can find an item in heist that defies the rule you're saying. It's not going to matter to new players. A liar. Yep. Like earlier, for example, I said there are only three prefixes and three suffixes on an item. It's not always true. But it is always true for a new player. And that's all that matters. You're lying to us? Yep. I'm lying to you to save you. For the greater good. I've been doing this for a while now. I can't be bothered swapping. I, I guess I should. There. Slightly more damage. Very tanky. Doesn't do much though. He's got a few slams. Gotta stay away from them. Shame realized to his uh, viewers in shocking video. Yeah. Because I remember like the... Like, it, it, it takes a while to like get to know how to make better beginner content. And a lot of like I, I try to make content in a way that people want to come back for more content. Not necessarily just get the most views. I want to get the most views long term. That I just did you a favor. Right there. We got the banner. We need to progress. As you can see as well, um, as you can notice. We have not picked up any quest pretty much. We are just running around killing things. No quest needed. Which is really nice. The, we'll kill a few more monsters. Make sure not to level because we obviously want to check the vendors every time we level. There's no other way to um, reset the vendors other than de-leveling. It's just not important right now. Do this just yet. All right, let's see. Let's see what the vendor has for us. Yes. We do have the helmet we can switch to. We can identify that because we don't really have a belt. Uh, we did not get a good one either. We can identify gloves. We don't really have good gloves. They are not really good enough to switch. Now, there is nothing on this bow that can be good. There's no reason to identify it. Um, even if it was plus gem level and attack speed, maybe if it was plus gem level and attack speed, but, uh, it's just so important with high attack speed on this build that there's pretty much nothing that bow can have because it's too slow. Like we're pretty much only going to use either a short bow, a grove bow, or a thicket bow. That's like all the same base. It's similar to the concept used in Diablo, where there will be a normal Nightmare and Merciless, or normal Nightmare and Hell base of the same item. So, every bow, the only reason you would identify things like that is for alterations. Like, you don't need to ID them to try to use them. And then, we actually need transmute, so I need to start selling more things unID'd. Um, I really want the projectile speed quiver. May fear guide you. Let's go back to Act 3. Get in there. No, it's normal nightmare in hell in Diablo. 
There, there's the quiver we want. Are there four link on a different base? There's not. All right, we're going to do the helmet. This should very easily go two red, two green. And the reason for that is you'll see where it says required level 23. It also says 28 strength and 28 deck. The more of a stat something has, the easier it is to get those colors. So colors are tied to strength requirements, or sorry, to stat requirements. So for example, these gloves, they have none. Um, they do actually though, um, they do have none, but that means it's less than 10. Um, a strap mitts will just pretty much always be evasion and energy shield. Um, the lowest stat an item can have is 10. And then the lower it is, the more likely it is for any other color. So if this was 128 and 120, uh, on both, it would be very unlikely to roll blue. It's actually quite likely to roll blue right now because it's only 28 strength and deck. So the higher this number is, the harder it gets. Um, and then, for example, a thicket bow would have like 158 or 156 dexterity. It's very unlikely to roll red and blue on those. Right, okay. Um, we're going to switch these over. So we really have a stat. That's fine, though. I was really looking forward to use that chest, but not so lucky. There, we're going to move those over and destroy that old item. And we throw that on. And then we can finally take the mastery I told you guys about earlier. Increases and in reductions to projectile speed. So this is 23% damage now. Once we get an essence or something, we'll use that. And we will keep this in our stash in case we get a different four link opening up our helmet slot. Breakbind drops in... Courtyard, Orchard, as early maps. Right, good luck. Well, it depends. Actually, they they could um they could switch the atlas today. Ooh. They probably will, right? They'll probably switch the atlas. Um, they'll probably switch the atlas. So we'll see. But I'll, I'll make a list. We have videos on how to make the bow for this build. Wait, what did I do? <laughs> Whoops. There's nothing like making a ground shaking entrance. No way. What am I missing? Oh, there we go. I had their gems wrong. Very important not to mix up. So now we have Ballista Totem, Elemental Damage with Attacks, Explosive Arrow, and Lesser Multiple Projectiles all in one. And um, we have faster attacks here, so I can just swap those easily. So now we got a large, large amount more damage. And you'll notice that now, even without swapping, it'll be able to kill this uh, relatively quickly. This is a fairly tanky unit. Didn't drop anything. Um, I already mentioned, you can hold alt to see things that your filter are hiding. By the way, all, especially the game has a ludicrous amount of items. Um, it's in a pretty bad state. And you, the game is unplayable without a filter. Um, these are part of a mechanic that we aren't going to cover. However, they are super important to click because they can give you a divination card that gives you 10 alterations. And those, you know, are great. But we are not going to be exploring Delve at all in this. I've been playing for years and never realized the color preference was proportional to high, how high the requirement is. Yep. Yeah, a lot of people think it's just space. Is always about the stats. That's why if you ever have something with 250 deck, Actually, it is not really getting much else than greens. There are other ways of coloring things that we're not going to cover in this though. There. And you can see the amount we're getting the league mechanic. This is probably the amount we're going to get the new league mechanic. And like I said, we're not expecting this to go core at all. Not expecting this to go core. Just be an awkward mechanic to have core, I think. You don't need to kill Hammerstorm, you can just run past. So this was another side quest called Deshiree. She is a ghost, and you click her, and uh, you go back to town, and you'll get a skill point. If you haven't found her by the time... Like, I wouldn't run around looking for her too much. If you haven't found her by the time you're leaving the area, I would drop a portal, and then when you're at the next waypoint, go back and look for her.
So we, we did pick up uh, a couple of soul uh, sulfite deposits without getting. So if you hadn't got it, just drop a portal here and come back at the waypoint. Because you do want to grab all the skill points. But what if you miss some skill points? There is actually a command. You can do control slash passives. And it'll show you which ones you have so far. So far we have Dweller of the Deep, Marin Mariner, The Way Forward, Deal with the Bandits, and Victorious Secrets. And now I just inform myself that I am missing a skill point. This is very common. And very often we see streamers have like level 85 to 90 characters while missing a skill point. Wait, was there a Valor behind me? Did I miss one? Oh, I did. Thank you. Oh, great. I can explain that. And then once you've killed Act 10 Kitava, it'll actually show you. Um, so a new player wouldn't know that they're missing one right now. But uh, once you've killed the last boss of the campaign, it'll show you what you're missing with that command, which is great. I am currently missing the one from Killing Piety. So if you're following the video exactly, like you should be, you've done the same mistake I have. Good. You get an extra skill point. I'm sorry. I was missing a skill point when I was level 96 this league. Nice. It happened. We'll go back to Act 3. It's just because he's so far away. This is my most um, common thing to miss. There. What else do I want? Now we are going to take Farsight. Even more damage. We are going to now you have the choice between the resto stream and comb stream. I always go to resto first. And um I will basically do half of the zone and then half of the other. And that's actually because of levels. Normally I am rushing so much that it this is probably the most dangerous place to be under leveled, or rather the place where you are in the most danger of being underleveled. You're very often like 30 to 31 here. And being 34 is fine. I'm 100 percent getting all the XP I need. So now I can go all the way to Dereso. But if I'm in danger of being underleveled here, this is uh, where I would like be very careful about how I'm XPing. I can't do this just yet. Very careful. Oh, and I can demonstrate the thing I was talking about earlier. I'll show you here so you can see the charges. Uh, but if you can see the first one is completely instant. And the second one has a cast time. And when you're doing Blink Arrow and Flame Dash, they're both very instant. No cast time on either. Technically Blink Arrow has cast time. Right, we got another skill point, we got Farsight, so now we're starting to get up about damage. This is Barkul, he's the guardian of this zone, you gotta kill him and then you move on towards the actual boss. Gonna finish killing everything in here. Bump two or three waves. There. So now, like I said, especially if I'm worried about being underleveled, I would at this point um, go to Comb Stream. Because you're going to get a way better experience. Uh, the next zone is one level higher, so you're in danger of being underleveled. We saw our explosive arrow just leveled up at the same time that I get a extra damage notable. So I now have a large amount of damage. Ooh, like. Currently, we are not leveling Determination, and we are not leveling Flame Dash. That's not something you need to panic about right now. Um, we are about to use those anyway. We'll use them later. There's a Chaos Orb, and next time we're in town... Oh, I will... Sorry. I will yawn in your face. I will explain the two new orbs we found. Chaos Orb is great. Everybody loves the Chaos Orb. I love the Vol Orb. My favorite.
Props are enabled later. Starts in four hours. Three? I might have to pick up the pace a little bit. We only have eight hours for this video. You know, it always it always seems so stupid making a video like this, to be honest. Because I remember I got I got borderline bullied for it in the start when I started posting my five to eight hour videos. But then they started getting like 200 to 400,000 views with like two hour average watch time. And that is great. So people really like the long videos. Gotta, you know, have content for different people. Yeah, it's not started yet. Not started yet. There, and now we're in Calm Stronghold. We're just going to continue moving. It helps, noobs. Yeah, it's just, it's such an overwhelming game. It really helps having something like play by play. Um, and we'll, like, thanks so much for my feedback in my Twitch chat. Like, especially people that are watching this on YouTube, please give feedback, especially if you're a completely new player. Oh, what could have been explained better? What was explained good? Because we want to, I want to remake this every three months. And eventually they'll be, they'll probably never be close to perfect because I'm, there's no way I'm scripting an 8-hour video. I'm just not doing it. I can't do this just yet. Oh, maybe Nightbot's bug. For the record, this is from Peewee Newbies. Your videos are godsends. Thank you. That's good. As you can see, we're just shredding through the zone right now. A lot of people were always like, oh, this build is not going to be any good without a Quill Rain or without a Tabula for leveling. We have no good leveling items. None of the traditional things people use. And this is more than fine. And like I said, we could over level more. We could be level 40 here. Uh, and we are actually going to over level a lot in the next act. A really, really good leveling spot. That is a div card that gives a unique axe. I have no use for unique axes, nor am I planning to make other characters this thing, so we are not even going to pick that up. It is worth picking up pretty much every div card, especially when you're a new player. There. My spirit is spent. Oh, nice, Arkin. That's awesome. And thanks so much for... Uh, all the subs and stuff like that. And yes, that card can give Soul Taker. Okay, so. I am going to take another Mastery. This is very optional. You don't need to take this. I really like taking it and will be taking it myself. Blink Arrow and Mirror Arrow have 100% increased cooldown. That makes it very, very fast. And I'll be able to save more time for the video. Makes me very, very fast. Oh, I need to... Um... There, I need to put in faster attacks. It's a little bit annoying swapping. I also, ooh, like, it's very easy to forget. Very easy to forget. But it's just the same thing for every boss. Run in circles, frenzy, and curse. As you can see, most bosses are very stupid with their abilities. It's only Hail Rake, the first boss I showed, that has good artificial intelligence. Every other boss just, yeah. Crazy. We did find a grow bow. It's not a bad idea to use a few alterations and see if we can get higher attack speed on that. Attack speed's very big part of our damage early on. Uh, we should sell some of the items unidentified. They really don't have that many transmit. This is a higher item level, so this one can actually get pretty high attack speed. And has lightning damage. So that was super worthwhile. The, the rolls are super common, which is why that is a very good thing to do. Uh, and we can just chrome so we get that. Put flammability down here, that's fine. And then we put grace and blink carol back in. There. Sorry, thank you for the 78 months, dude. There'll be time give you a proper enough. thank you speech when I'm not recording a video. Appreciate it. The SUNY, um... We are going to talk to and get a skill point. Thank you for all the subs and resubs. Uh, let's see. But adding faster attacks to Blink Arrow make it faster? Yes. Either faster projectiles or faster attacks are both good for Blink Arrow. I usually do. I think projectiles is better. 
Now, you can take these for more damage, but it's not that much more damage as we are not going to be able to get proper ignite chance this early. So I don't, um, I don't bother getting it. I don't bother getting it. Are you going to carry through through the announcement? I'll be streaming all the way until the announcement and after, and I'll read patch notes after. They, I mean, I'm, I'm just assuming patch notes are going to be after since they have been the last two times. I'd be very surprised if there's no patch notes today and kind of tilted. Um, now we're going to move to D'Arezzo. I can't do this just yet. Thank you for the great teachings. Is managed to kill my first year brother SSF this thing. That's awesome, dude. Gonna keep moving. I pretty much will always play strong boxes. Um, on hardcore, you really want Freezy Moon. If not, you're gonna have to log out or die. Either works. Oh, there. It's a four link. All right, cool. We can switch back to the good helmet then. So that's why I wanted to keep the, the good helmet. I'm pretty sure I kept it. I'm pretty sure I kept it. Thank you, Brancos. Hopefully this is good too. It's got res on it. It does have open prefix for crafting. And hopefully you're seeing a pattern on the items I'm keeping. It's basically just res. Oh, I forgot to switch, but that's that's fine. We're about to kill another boss anyway. <laughs> I have to remember switching. Send the top of the bow. Excellent. Good job, past this rune. How do you choose the league starter? Uh, it needs to be very tanky and needs to not need any rares or uniques to be good. Or needs to have a very clear path to get those. Very often, I will see very, very many bad league starter options by clearly YouTube only content creators where they will recommend build guides that will be a hundred to three hundred x budget and they'll say that it's fine without it but they'll never show it without it i think that's a large reason why a lot of people do like my guides is because i actually showed them in dog shit gear with dog shit gear kind of shitty enough to song forever, i am a it's crazy. Like, it's actually been like several hundred exalt builds. Like, very expensive stuff. But, not good. There, we're switching to 36 mana potion. We should... What is it, I usually don't bother switching until I'm 42, watching. but we can check the vendor and see if there is an instant fuss for sale. There is not. I'll buy one and throw a transmute on one. Don't really want the mana removal. There, that's fine. Lose my uh, chili moon, but we have a stronger fuss. I am now going to switch. The I can. Hmm. Do you know what I'm gonna do? That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put faster attacks over here with blink arrow instead. I'll put that there so I can swap from here to here instead, and then blink arrow is slightly faster otherwise. Um, we're gonna switch out my chest. All right, we'll put it there. That's pretty fast. Then determination and frenzy. There, that's fine. Now I just got a big upgrade. I'm super resist capped. We can explain the new currency. What do you need now? There. May fear guide you. We have a decent amount of stuff. And just keep that on us. Right. Okay. The new currency. Chaos Orb. So whenever an item has been turned rare by either an well, either by finding it, by crafting it with an alchemy uh, or an essence, you can completely reroll the item. So if I use that on my chest, every single stat would be different. Well, most likely different. Um, a Val Orb is more complicated. New players should never use a Val Orb, um, and there is a large amount of uses for it. Uh, whereas Chaos is, you know, it's the main thing that people trade. Like people trade and 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 generally it's the main thing thing to trade with. Um there's another orb that we haven't found yet that would be the second most used, or at the late game most used, called an exalted orb. You can find one as early as I don't know what they've changed it to. It's either 
I have two or three now. Is it 35? I think it's 35. 35 sounds right. But after level 35, you can find Exalted Orbs and Mirror of Calandra. Uh, until uh, it used to be earlier. But uh, I'm pretty sure it's 35. It's just a bot thing. Like They don't want bots to farm good currencies. Um, so, yeah. Chaos and Exalted Orbs are the main currencies to trade. Ball Orb. It corrupts an item. It can completely destroy an item. It can change the implicit, so it can change the cold resist to all resist or to immune to poison, immune to bleed, a lot of things like that. Uh, it can add implicits to items that don't have it. It could it could actually six socket and six sync your item. It will change all the stats in this case. So it's not something you would use on an already good item. It's also very rare. It's like one in 300 or something. Um... And it can make a gem go down a level, up a level. So Vile Orb is a very high risk orb. You pretty much never use one. It can also give you white sockets. You can also turn Vile or skills into Vile skills. We don't have any in this build right now. Like there's no Vile Explosive Arrow. But uh, yeah, very unpredictable. Very good orb. And yes, I found three mirrors. I own our bathroom again. And for those that are new to the channel, I play three minutes of ads when I rag YFK, so it's a good time to go get some snacks or something. Oh, sure, yes. Not only can it completely destroy your items, but even in the event of a good outcome, you are not able to alter it further, with some exceptions. You can alter it further uh, through the crafting match, but very little. Mostly just sockets and colors can be changed afterwards. All right, I'll be right back. All right. <clears throat> I'm back. Let us continue. So now we have the Eye of Fury and the Eye of Desire. More like a sapphire and a soul, not so much eyes, but hey. And then we are going to go fight probably the scariest thing in the campaign, piety. Spoiler alert. She's back again, even though we killed her. I'm inside it. We are inside a big animal right now. Um, 
That's pretty cool lore to it, actually. And then after Piety, we have to kill Malachi, and then we are in a new act. And once we get to Act 5, we are going to overlevel there for a very long time. This zone is particularly scary because it has a lot of monsters that will bleed you. And normally you don't use a lot of currency rolling your flask at this point. And especially as a new player, flask is probably the easiest underrated thing at all. Flask is something people pretty much never really get right as a new player. Because a lot of people will be thinking like, well, how much power is there really in flask? And I would say like... Probably like, I don't know, 20 to 40% of your character power is your flask. It's insane. My flasks are incredibly strong. They're always underrated by new players. So whenever I do another show called Sunday Roast, where I will like roast people and make fun of their builds while trying to help them, the number one mistake people do, especially the ones that have a few thousand deaths, is that their flasks are super bad. Sometimes they'll have three life flasks, two mana flasks, and no utility flasks. No, Dodri is pretty easy. Uh, is there a trick to navigate the belly? It's the same as like every other Path of Exile. Don't just memorize all the layout. There's yet. nothing like in ledge where there's like an indicator. Not that kind of trick. I just memorize every zone. A few thousand deaths, holy shit. Well, it's very easy to rack up deaths on software because sometimes you'll just face rush into things. Um, I think in my 23,000 hours of playing hardcore, I think I have 180 or 200 deaths or something. It's like 20 or 30 less deaths than what is in my replay list. But on software, it racks up pretty fast. Racks up pretty fast. Like, I did a race event where I had, like, 300 plus on one character. That was part of, part of the strategy, since I made a character that dealt damage while dead. Which you can do on softcore. Oh, Can't really get away with that on hardcore. So oh, no. Um, I really should have switched. Okay. Um, unlucky. Right, okay, so Piety will do this, where she will spin. I usually like blinking through it. I can see that being a problem for newer players. There, let me switch. A little bit scary. She will do these, but you can see they don't debuff you or anything. They just periodically do damage. I'll let her slap me. She hurts. A lot. Um, pushing characters, she can one-shot. And it's pretty easy to like run around her if you are pretty close to her. She's very tanky, very high damage, and if you're running close to her and she slaps you, she can very easily one-shot you. So, be careful. Level 38. There. Piety is down. She's pretty much the hardest thing during the campaign. Uh, we're actually not going to bother switching out of faster attacks. We're just going to keep it. We don't need good clear speed for the next zone. We're going to keep moving up here. We're going to go get plus one totem and some reservation stuff and elemental overload. A lot of things we're going to try to get. Let's see, how is our accuracy compared to our life? 1280 accuracy, 900 life. So we're good. Good for a while now. You really want to keep on top of that. If you have more life than accuracy, you lose 40% of your damage. Playing hardcore versus softcore is completely up to yourself. Depends a little bit how much time you have. Uh, hardcore is very, very time intensive because there's so many things that are just going to kill you. And you're just going to have to learn by dying repeatedly. Like, I've never played softcore leagues. Dodri is very scary as well. Um, normally, I just fight her like this. I stay far away. You don't have to curse her. She actually gets stronger when you curse her. She will, uh, you see the purple glow she has? She eats my curse and gets something called Unholy Might. Makes her deal a shit ton more damage. Other than that, I just stay far away from her. Keep my totem sound and yeah, just stay at the edge. And I don't stand super close to any of the pillars. Because they will, her balls will hit the pillars and her balls hurt. They'll one shot you. What is the life accuracy thing? Can you tell again? That's a uh, precise technique.
we're just explaining everything the first time we used it. Let's explain it at the start of the video. There. Malakai, very easy. Doesn't really do anything that can kill you. Just decent damage. You're the greatest form. I never <laughs> Take comfort, Meligaro. These are very annoying too because they bleed you. Is always worth more when he's dead. Detonate corpses is very scary and the very large reason people die to strong boxes. There are definitely people that will identify each one. I am not one of these people. They just run away from the box once it's open. Now you are simply gorgeous. Yep, drops will be on later. And I'll be on until drops, so you can just leave it on from now on. Works as well. Maybe this is what I should do every announcement day. This is a great day. Oh, but it's not always. Flattery will get you nowhere with me. I was thinking I should do this every like I should do everything explained every day before this, so people have somewhere to be as well. But we don't normally know that there's going to be this little nerf. So I have to do it later normally. To be fair, it is still good enough for new players. Oh, nice Herdix. It's still good enough for new players, unless he gets completely destroyed. Yeah, nerfs really don't explain new players as much. They don't. It'll be more endgame related. We'll see. But either way, like, yeah. I know we'll probably wait then. For the future ones. Um, so the boss fight we're fighting right now is honestly just moving clockwise. Literally every boss fight is just moving clockwise. The worst thing you can do is backtrack. Um, now Piety is actually dead. Actually dead dead. Sorry. Um, in this stage, you will have to get him to a threshold and then the heart will open up. Like his horcruxes. Like that. There, and you have to do that three times and then you have to kill him. He doesn't really have many dangerous things. Like, there's not much he does that can kill you. Even this doesn't do like a crazy amount of damage. These don't do a crazy amount of damage. The only thing he has that can kill you, probably one of the highest damage slams in the game, is a incredibly slow slam. I'll face tank it when he does it so you can see how much it does. That's pretty much the only thing that can kill you. It's, it's a very easy boss fight. Like I said, piety is a lot harder. Will he even do it? He's just dying too fast. No. Okay, he has the slam. It's pretty much impossible to get hit by anyway. Very slow. Oh, here. So you would have to stand here like this for it. Oh, I actually dodged it. Whatever. He just didn't want me to die. I tried getting hit by it. You you basically have to try. You have to try to get hit by it. It's a very easy fight. Um, Compared to Piety, which is actually an insane fight. We're going to identify the gloves. We're not going to bother identifying the helmet. We'll it's identify the bell. The is done. And that's all. Other than that, I'm going to vendor things for transmutes. So, like, we're, like, we're always trying to keep in mind, like, what item do I bother want to upgrade? Because there's also going to be, like, a... Realistically, probably not going to get a better helmet. Until at least 10 levels from now. See ya. And I really need transmutes. Dodge this, sorry you evaded it. Don't confuse the newbies. Winky face? No, that's incorrect. It's very important not to overload new players with pointless information. Right. You can switch to greater multiple projectiles right now. I just prefer keeping lesser multiple projectiles. There's no reason to overload with information.
Go where you are needed. Right, this area is actually very dangerous, and we should switch back to lesser multiple projectiles now. We're doing this for the noobs like every league? Yes, I want to do this every league. And you want to, like I said, it's important to not explain too much. A lot of things don't need to be explained to new players. EOE is already too much information. And <laughs> we are almost to the next zone. Yeah, the game teaches you nothing. There is a tutorial. There is a tutorial. It does help. But just this is better. Following an 8-hour video is better. This is not exactly how I pictured my triumphant return to Aria. There's a tutorial. Yeah. I've pretty much been doing the tutorial for them the last three years. They don't really have a tutorial. I don't feel like I've ever had a new player say like, Hey, the tutorial was really helpful. I feel like they could do more or just work with the content creators they have. Um, but yeah, we're going to continue going through this zone. Now you're noticing that you're getting stuck in monsters a lot more. Um, and not being able to move through monsters is actually one of the main reasons of dying. So there is a potion that we'll have access to in not too long called a Quartz Flask, which will give us the skill Phasing. And that is very good. Because once you can move directly through monsters, the majority will actually miss you. A large amount of deaths, especially on Hardcore, is just getting stuck in a bunch of monsters. Oh, they're stalkers. Those are really good. That would be a really good find uh, for a lot of people on a league start. Those boots. They're not for our build. They do not work for our build. Okay, now I have to kill Overseer Crowl, and then we are in town. Oh, it feels good to have an audience again. Yeah, if you find those at least, or you can sell them to other people. Almost better than mine, but I'm gonna try to find some other boots here soon. No res on them. Right, let's see. So here we get the choice of a ring. The lightning is the lowest for me, so I'm gonna pick the lightning reward and hope that it has something good on it. It has nothing, and it's actually worse than my white crafted ring from Act 1. We're just gonna vendor everything. You really see the power of crafted white items. Like we're still using loads of them at this point. I still have a completely white quiver. Let's see, are there any higher item level quivers we can get? What item level is this? 33. I'm just gonna throw an alchemy on that and hope that we don't get fire damage. Okay. Oh, well, it's slightly better than before. Slightly better than before. No open. Like, technically, it would have been better just to craft lightning rest. There. What do you go deal this over which with explosive arrow? It's a better build. Um, explosive arrow on element list just has an insane overkill of damage that's not needed. And you can do all the content in the game on champion. And you don't have to die a million times. I've tried both. I've played Explosive Arrow Elementless on Softcore. And uh, the only reason I didn't play Champion on Softcore was because it was banned from the race we were doing. Right, now we've found a quality gem. This is the first one we've found and we haven't had quality until now. Each gem can have quality on it. And you will find a gem called a Gem Cutter Prism. And that will increase the quality by one. It's similar to blacksmith whetstone or armor scrap and the glass bar bubbles, but uh, slightly different. We'll explain that when we get to town. And 
Some gems will be really, really important to get quality on, namely explosive arrow. We actually really need 20 quality on explosive arrow. I can't do this just yet. So we'll do some mind blowing information in a sec. It's very important to get 20 quality on explosive arrow. Um, so we are going to need a lot of gem counter prisms for this build. Oh, it's true. The gap's in the fence. Yeah, that's worth explaining. I take things like that for granted. Good point. Let's go back and explain. Uh, <coughs> Ooh. Right. Go back to the gap. So, there'll be gaps in the fences here, and Flame Dash can just go through, like, open areas like that. Or, or both of my abilities can. Almost level 40. Actually, I'd like to leave this act at around 48. We do normal lab pretty soon too. There's no reason to. Um, but we could just do teach. Right. So, quality gems. If I hold alt, you can see what the quality does. So, if I had 20 quality, which is the max, it would give 10% increased area of effect. Currently, it does 12. Now, there is a really cool thing about quality. So, if I had a white item... Actually, let's go grab one. Let's go grab a white item. So, there's loads of different quality. So far, we've been selling all the quality currency. Because we haven't had a uh, reason to use it. Right now, we have armor scraps. If I use an armor scrap on a white item, it'll gain 5 quality. If it was blue, it would gain 2 quality... And if it was rare or unique, it would gain one quality. And this is the same for the whetstones, and it is the same for the flask. However, it is not the same for gem coated prisms. They will always only do one. And when you're selling something for a total of 40 quality, or a singular from one source of 20, it will sell for its parent quality. So if I sold, um, let's say that I had, well, four other storm rams. With uh, 12 quality, that would sell for 48, which is at least 40, and now we get one gem counter prism. You're going to be picking up every quality gem you find, save it away for when you have a bunch, and vendor them. And that's how we get a bunch of gem counter prisms. And on Explosive Arrow, the reason it's so good is that it is chance to ignite and uh, skill effect duration. So it is really, really good and a big part in our build late game. Good part in our build late game. You'll get a bunch from divination cards and just playing the end game, etc. For right now, we just gotta level and keep working. Well, sorry. Yeah. Now we have all the quests we need to go in here. And we get the waypoint. Think of right. Let's see. To say to the judges the so we're on our way to go up here. Is where we want to go. And we'll explain elemental load, load when we take it. I can't do this just yet. Did you grab the dash root skill point? Yeah, we have it. Everything so far. Oh, we actually we actually should have enough time to get to, through everything before the announcement. I just want to get two maps, and then tomorrow we're talking about like a bit more end game stuff. <laughs> tomorrow at three p.m. we're doing mapping, so we can. We'll continue this character tomorrow for like a second follow-up on everything explained. Early maps and stuff like that. That would be a little bit more like general theory because we are expecting early mapping to change. Like they'll, they usually shuffle what maps are where, which is the endgame system. We'll explain all of that later for tomorrow. There. 
Almost done through the zone. And then we are in the best zone in the game. This is the Chamber of Innocence. And this is where it is a great, great time to overlevel. And especially on a build such as this, overleveling is incredibly powerful. Because we are basically going to gain... We're going to be leaving here with like 60% more damage than we came in with. We can even go do more. We're going to grab Granite Flask. Both Granite and Jade are good choices here. I prefer Armor for leveling. Uh, and we can explain a little bit of how, how Armor works. So, Armor is a liar. And that's actually surprisingly important to learn. We're just trying to get some good stats. I don't know if we'll get one. Ah. Huh? Okay, we're, we're just going to take that. It's not great. But armor is a liar. So. Let's see. Ooh. Where is it? I even have a command in my chat. Now, I can't remember if this command is updated for the change, but the uh, the thing is the same anyway. So if I if I go to my hideout right now, we'll see that using this Grunner Flask will give a large, large amount of percentage fish reduction. And look how much I have. It says I have 83% fist reduction. I actually have virtually 0% fist reduction. The game is a liar. And what does that mean? I'll read out the command from my chat. Armor does not actually grant the percentage reduction to physical damage that the tooltip states. There's a hidden mechanic where armor only grants at most 10% of the armor rating as reduction in physical damage. 25,000 armor will only ever mitigate at most 2,500 physical damage. I think it's doubled since we made that command, but basically that makes the armor is amazing at small hits and very bad. Okay, we should update the command, but it's not like the numbers aren't super important. It's just the fact that it's really bad. And like if a boss slams you for 80,000 damage, your armor is not going to do anything. But if like a hundred monsters hit you for small amounts of damage that would add up to 80,000 damage, you're borderline immortal to that. So armor still has a place, but it's important to know how it works. So you uh, mostly use armor to prevent like small hits killing you and to buff a guard skill that we haven't touched on yet called Molten Shell. And Molten Shell will probably, will probably reset things like that in Act 6. And talk about that. If the boss hits you for 80k, aren't you dead anyway? No, not if you use different defenses like endurance charges. Never trust in game stats. True. They are a liar. So now we're like not that amazing damage, but this is when we start getting a large, large amount of damage from leveling. And that's such a great place. And the reason for like over leveling a lot here, it kind of ends up like you don't lose that amount of time either because you can just keep running through everything else after this. So you see the amount of density that is here to do the rest of the game. It's almost like twice, sometimes three times as many monsters. And like we already pointed out, the blue monsters give a lot more XP. Every little corner has extra blue monsters as a guaranteed pack. Um, you normally do evasion and armor, but you also do things like endurance charges or uh, physical damage taken as fire, for example, because these are percent based. Like if I take, uh, if I get hit for a thousand fire damage, I take 250. So it is very good. Yeah, that's what we call effective HP. Like, there's quite a lot of things in the game that'll hit for 50 to 200 and... Wait, what's the highest damage? 180 or 220? And you can tank those with very, very tanky builds. It's all about learning about damage effectiveness and layered defenses. So people will use things like um, shifting damage. We have, like, a lot of videos. It's a little bit too much to go into for new players, but I'm just... The things are there to learn about for the future. They're not very important to learn right now. Important thing to learn is that armor doesn't give you the physical mitigation it says. So you can't like this face tank when you have 80%. And that's important to learn early. So the boss that we want to kill is right up here. We are however going to wait. We're going to get probably at least level 45. 
very often i will go all the way to 48 or 52 52 is usually for deadly competitions but uh it, that's an example of how long you actually can stay in this zone so we found a life flask, a 42 life flask on the ground here. We used a transmute on it and we got freeze immune. That's really good and I want to have freeze immune, ideally. What is the tooltip based on then? Oh, what this number is? I think it just, um, it like estimates what a random monster your level should hit you for. Like the auto attack of an average monster your level. Why doesn't GDD make it tell you exactly what it does? It can't really. Yeah, random white mob of your level. It's uh, it's kind of hard to do because it's... How do you explain that it does different damage depending on... Or d different mitigation depending on how much you take? It's hard to do with that one line. Did we explain opening a new instance of zones? Yes, sir. We explain everything the first time we encounter it. Anything that says like 6% reduced physical damage taken is 6% reduced physical damage taken. Armor is the only like really weird liar mechanic that I can think of. I think armor is the only mechanic that lies to your face. I guess tooltips. Tooltips lie to your face. You always have more damage than it says. Always have more damage than it says. That's why I never really care when somebody goes like, oh, I have 3 million damage or 300,000 damage. Doesn't really matter. You get a, you get a feel for the damage eventually. And normally, damage numbers are just clickbait very often. Very, very often. Bigger number, better person, according to YouTube. Um, Greetings. I'm guessing it's just complicated to do because even even path of building a third party software um, struggles on being accurate. Let's see, we could get a grow bow and get an even higher attack speed one. That's not really worth it. And the reason it was so easy to roll attack speed on the lower bows was um, that they are fairly low level. So there's not that many other stats there. But now that we're getting up in the years, we're getting old. There are more and more stats. So for like advanced crafting later on, sometimes people would do low level items to limit the amount of mods that are on them. Is, uh, the higher it is, the more mods can possibly be on it. We'll get to at least 45 and then we'll continue. Then we'll have a decent amount of damage. And if you're a new player, I would recommend staying here till 48. It'll be an absolute breeze leveling through. So just stay a few more levels. This is very similar to um, what the end game of the game is going to be like for you. Very, very similar. Has DGD confirmed if Pashnos dropped today? They have not, but I'm assuming they will. And yes, this is most likely my league starter. Is there anything else that we haven't explained that's not too much? So right now I'm at the point where I'm trying to think like I want to start getting gear. And normally you want to gear up with the league mechanic in this zone. Um, especially on hardcore, a lot of hardcore players are too scared to interact with the league mechanic too early on. Um, in fact, most people unironically let me do it first because I'm one of the few hardcore players that will interact with the league mechanic. This does often cause my death, but I pretty much always will interact with the league mechanic. But the majority of hardcore players let me test the mechanic and if this is still alive by level 90, it's safe to do. Is, uh, very often, League Mechanics will be incredibly overtuned. So, most people aren't okay with doing them. 
I always do. Literally always. There was there was one league I didn't and then I won. But that's uh Yeah. I don't know, I just I like testing the content. Yeah, pussies. No, I mean it's a it's a smart choice for sure. This is the guy you have eat things to see if they're poisonous. You do tell them to less die less than you do? Yeah. I do. I also probably have less deaths than most people. On average, 150 hours played per death. Not too bad. Why are you using portal scrolls instead of logging out? Um, I didn't boot up my logout macro and I'm lazy. But yeah, you can just log out. You can just log out. I have so many. I have six. Okay, I don't have that many. I probably should log out. I can't do this just yet. Will you stream during the announcement? Yep. You can just leave this stream on. It'll be uh, online when the drops start. We're not restarting. So right now I picked up two white rings. That's if I find like alchemies or essences. Honestly, very unlucky that I haven't found alchemies or essences. Um, oh, I just realized we can do a little mind blower. I did not realize that I had a gem cut a prism. That's the gem gem. Uh, that's the orb that I explained earlier. Will you do unban requests? Um, I don't have any. I usually unban people instantly. I, I, I just very rarely ban people to begin with. Um, I'm going to blow some mines actually. Well, can we? Here, hold on. Let me go look before we level. Let's go blow some mines. Any shark tooth. I ban people when I play Dota. I have one. Okay, cool. But generally, when people do unban streams, they have like a thousand. What is it, Exile? Any shark tooth? Wait, are there any quivers at all? May fear guide you. Hmm. Stay out of the shadows. Hmm. Yeah, they can be anywhere. Make it far. Ah! Alright, let's level up and then try again. I just want to show it. It's a cool thing to show new players. I didn't check Act 1. I don't think they can spawn in Act 1. Can they? Can they? Uh, Act 1 is 13. That's why. Can't spawn there. I'm pretty sure. I'll go double check. I'm pretty sure it maxes the 13. Can you do a PoE nursery for people that struggle with PoE university? This is basically PoE nursery. Yeah, it just, uh, it just stopped. Farewell. But yeah, this is supposed to be an episode for completely new players. I think I've explained everything I've done so far, right? I'm trying to have... I really, really want feedback on this. Because last time I explained too much that was unnecessary early. Right now I'm trying to explain everything I need. Everything I do. Without explaining too much. Which is hard. Have you gone over why you don't want plus iron totems? Nope. They can't get one yet. They cannot get one yet. I'll explain that once we're like level 60. I really like 
like how you're explaining things when you're coming across rather than trying to front load all the explanations like this is currency there are 67 kinds yeah that's the biggest chain i'm trying to do now there's so many things i haven't explained and it's killing me it's so hard not to just like here's path of exile get fucked kid I'm just trying to do like everything that we've done so far and that's it. I told us how to stone me said yes. I did. The Tarkov approach. I think I think we've done a decent job. I'll we'll see later because I they generally get a between 50 and 200,000 views, so we'll get some feedback from new players. I want to make it better and better. Have you explained when vendors reset? Yep. I've explained everything. I'm pretty sure I haven't missed anything. I think I've been a great, great teacher. All right, let's check vendors again. All right. Do I remember this recipe without looking it up? Greetings. We can blow multiple mines. We can show multiple recipes. This is kind of neat anyway. Remember. Uh, any chance or what does it, what needs to be rare? I have an essence or an elk. This is unfortunate. Okay, well, we need an onyx. We need an onyx amulet, and there is a recipe that turns any amulet into an onyx amulet. You just need a red, green, and a blue gem. This is just. It's not super important. This is kind of like forehead flexing. Um, it's just to explain that there there is a recipe system and show off more of the. While we live, we are blessed. So we have an onyx amulet, which I think needs to be rare. We have a shark tooth quiver. We have an orb of chance. We have a GCP. Oh, and I need a rain of arrows. The onyx needs to be rare. Okay, so I can't do it yet. Uh, normally, be well. you would have a lot more currency. We're not doing the league mechanic. So we are low on currency. No, Pavius. Also, it depends what build. Right. Um. Okay. Well, we need to find one. Oh! Oh! Thanks! Are they watching me? Give me 10 alterations. Mm, we might as well explain it in this zone before we do the vendor recipe. This is Delirium. So this you will interact with. It's very dangerous. And you can actually bind the key to end it. I bound mine to B. Oh, essences. That's funny. So we're actually going to be killing this. And now we want to run and kill as many things as possible. And pretty have a good pace. Because this cloud is chasing you. So already over here where we started it. It is all, oh, already starting to dissipate. And you have to kill as many monsters as possible. And keep progressing through the cloud. And it's kind of unfortunate whenever you're in a donut shaped area. Because it doesn't like, it doesn't smart follow you. It stupid follows you. So some layouts will be better than others. This one isn't particularly great because by the time we're in the end game area, we're going to pick up that white leather belt. By the time we're in the end of this area, it will have uh, turned back in on itself. It does not smart follow. It is stupid follow. It's shaped like a donut. I guess it's smart design in that way. It could be better. Um, you're most likely not going to get more than three. You can try to get four. But the way it works is whenever you're killing monsters in here, this bar starts filling up. Every monster you kill in here will start filling it up. And any like natural delirium monster will fill it up more. So if you see pustules and stuff on the ground, I'll try to show and point them out when I can. They will give slightly more stuff more juice and the more the more things you like these they spawn monsters um the more the more juice you get and the further away you get from the initial start the harder things will get 
And we're about to get... Oh, we actually might hit four. That'd be really rewarding. You notice very, very tanky now. Normally things die incredibly fast. And I would normally n manually end it once it hits four. Man, they're tanky now, eh? There, now it's at four. And you'll see by the time we get down here, see it's like flowing to the left. Um, it's going to end here soon. Yeah, so it's ending here before we get to the end. Because it doesn't follow around me. It follows like a donut. We got a bunch of essences. We get a cluster jewel. Not a chance in hell I'm explaining that right now. And um, you don't need it for the majority of your builds. And none of the builds I'm doing at the moment is using a cluster jewel. Cluster Jewel is a complicated craft your own extension of the skill tree. So if you didn't think the skill tree was complicated enough, you can expand it manually. Uh, we'll pick up the jewel, however. I'm still on portals. I'll just log out. Right. Um, and, and it'll always put you in the last town you were in. So since I was in Act 5 town last, that's where it put me. Uh, sorry, Act 1 town. Um... Do I need more transmutes? Yeah, I do. So I'm going to sell these unidentified. And I am going to identify the jewel. So these can have loads of good stats. It can have four stats, two prefixes, two suffixes. And you can see that you can put them in here. So I could, for example, try to craft this. And damage over time isn't bad for me. If I actually... Yeah. So here I got life, 14... Uh, or sorry, damage with bows. And if this had like damage with bows and life, then I could just take this for one skill point and put it in there. So this is like simpler cluster jewels. They're very simple. They just do what's on the label. And now I can use a Wailing Essence of Doubt. And we can do that on the Onyx Amulet. Uh, oh no, we can't use that anyway. That's good. Because I was kind of sad it hit 55 life because it looked like a good amulet. However, this has fire damage on it. So we cannot use it. Because if we have fire damage, what happens? We get... Fire damage here in the tooltip and we lose 25 damage like we explained earlier. However, we can blow some mines. Onyx Amulet. Orb of Chance. Rain of Arrows with at least 1% quality. And a Shark Tooth Arrow Quiver. Craft your own unique item. Next up, we're going to show Combs Heart, Shavs, and Headhunter recipe. I'm just kidding. This is pretty much the only unique recipe like this. There are very, very few unique recipes. But this is a very nice leveling quiver. Um, people like it quite a lot because it has a lot of stats, it's got some attack speed, and it's got cold damage to attacks, which is very, very needed. Very, very needed for our build. So it fixes all the stats while leveling. Now, I'm unlikely to use it myself because um, we already have a projectile speed quiver, and I'm more likely to try to get a different projectile speed quiver and use the new essence that I just found on it. The Onyx Amulet they needed to be rare, so I could use any essence or an alchemy. So I'm now going to go back and look for a yes. quiver. Take care. Because I don't really want to use this, I just wanted to show it. Because it is good to know. Go Very good to know. Here. Probably going to be low item level back in. What's the max level here? 20? Might. 33. Okay, there's no quiver. We have no scours. I basically am really looking to use this. Uh, that's because Essence of Woe on a quiver is 26 to 30 damage with bow skills, which is obviously exactly what we're looking for. Really, really good. Um, and it doesn't have anything else good. Right, what else do we want? We, we can throw away the quiver. Mine's better, currently. This is really nice to use in a ring for our build. It'll guarantee um, lightning damage if we didn't have any on our... Um, we have one on our amulet and we have one on our bow. And our bow is more than enough to use the lane game. We can get to maps with this. Uh, let's see what else. Here. And we're going to go up here. Oop! Because soon we're going to get to the point where we do not have enough accuracy. We're actually very close. Very close. We want to rush straight there. And then we'll explain that once we get there. I'm going to use Essence of Contempt on the belt. It actually doesn't do anything good on the belt. Except to guarantee that it's Fizz Reflect. Which obviously we don't want. But we do however. Um, just want to turn it rare. And hope that it hits a high life roll. 
I don't want to use precision. This is with this. I want to avoid using precision. Um, this is pretty good to use. Let's see. We could now start. So now we start thinking about gear. Also, fun fact, the vendor can sell you five links and six links. That does not, under any circumstance, mean that it's literally worth checking every time you level. You will go insane and hate your life and be slower than normal. Um, we are just going to buy an energy shield glove, I think, and we are going to use hatred on it. That will guarantee cold resist. We got really, really good gloves. Really good gloves. We're going to try to get three blue, though. Good stuff. None of these need to be linked. None of these are things that we're like using linked. Uh, we are level 38, so I could do that. I haven't explained it yet. That's fine. We'll do that later once I get more links. Ideally right now, the biggest thing I want to focus on would be boots. Actually, these could almost great if they weren't blue. Blue is very unfortunate. Even rare. I have two chaos orbs. So I really want new boots now. I have very bad ones. And I really want green, green. Because now we can start thinking about automating our curse. A lot of people are probably getting to the point where it's a pain to keep Frenzy and the curse up. And we can actually fix that. Um, really annoying that it's blue. Okay, we could do this. We need blue, blue, green. Ideally blue, blue, green, green. But even just blue, blue, green is fine. Right, this should be pretty easy. Please just go to four sockets. Right, okay, that was unfortunate. Um. Okay, we're going to have to level up and check the vendor again. We'll get new boots soon. Do we need new range? We don't really right now. We can throw one torment on this. Fire and lightning, that's perfect and that's an insane ring so this doesn't have a large amount of life it would have been better if it had a large amount of life but um it, it is triple res and lightning rest so really really good ring we are more than res cap now so now if we need more res we can craft fire res for instance on this ring so really really good and we, we were using just a random ring from act one until now and we still have that so as you can see, it's very easy to gear when you know, uh, know what you're doing um, and like how far just the white crafted gear takes you. Now we're just going to keep leveling. No, we're not. We're going to we're going to progress, but I'm going to go toilet. Uh, if you're watching on Twitch, I'm going to play three minutes of ads. Now's a good time to go get a snack or something like that. I'll be right back. I will be right back. No, we killed everyone.
I am back. I am back. There. Right, let's go kill innocence. He's not innocent, by the way. That's a spoiler alert. Yeah, three hours until the league announcement. So we are going to try to finish through the campaign by then. Not super important that we do. But uh, getting to Act 8 would be nice. We, I mean, we should finish by then anyway. And this takes a lot longer when you're explaining things. Antique Greaves. The road show. Orb of scouring. We've just found a new orb. So this will scour the item. It'll uh, clean it and it will not remove. Actually, it'll remove basically everything on the item. It'll, it'll remove everything we've encountered so far on items. It'll not remove implicits, but it'll remove all the stats and turn it white. Turn it completely white. And you can continue crafting on it. So you could do a scour orb and then an alchemy orb. Or a scour orb and then an essence. What was that? From. We already have really good gloves. We don't need to pick those up. I would love to get more sockets on my helmet and my boots. There's two more setups we would like to incorporate. I'll explain them when we put them in. Oh, nice marble. That's awesome. How do you like it? There are explosive riders level 8. So this is great. Eight is great. Um, we have a lot more damage than we started with. A lot more. You'll really notice like everything is cleaning up pretty smoothly now. We're only on a four link. On hardcore, I'll definitely be staying here till 48, maybe more. Probably not more, but definitely 48. We only have three totems right now. We actually can improve that number. We're going to throw in faster attacks instead of LMP like we normally do. And let's fight innocence. Very important to move and not backtrack in this one. And I don't think we messed up the elemental equilibrium. No, we haven't. And we have a decent amount of damage. And then we're actually pretty close to getting even bigger damage boosts. We have a large amount of res. We have decent gear that we found. Um... And we are about to lose resist when killing Katava, the next boss. So because of that, it's very important to already now be thinking about how are you going to handle the 30% resist penalty that you get from killing Katava. It's not something that you want to catch you by surprise because you can't just go back and, and farm with the same resist. You've permanently lost them. There's no way to avoid that. There. And yeah, soon we'll have an additional totem. Even during the leveling, we'll hit five fairly early. Depends how defensive you want to be as well. You could rush it a little bit earlier. The loads of stages. Um, now he has one dangerous move. Other than that, they're pretty easy. You just move in circles around him. Uh, he has like a few slams that will do half of your HP as damage, especially when we're over level like this. But he does have a bullet hell. Like now it's mostly stuff like this, does very little damage. The beam, you obviously don't want to stand in it. It'll start like a little burn you. And then that. A very, very telegraph fight, right? Very easy to avoid. However, I'm gonna let him live. I'm gonna let him live and he'll bullet hell me. Evil bullet hell me. No, wait. No. There. 
There, this is the bullet hell. Now, ideally, you're supposed to have a statue to hide behind. Like that. I don't feel like they ever really nailed that mechanic. I think it's kind of stupid he does a bullet hell that you like don't really have a good way out of because it's so easy for new players to panic and they just like they just fucking eat in all right. the bullets and like hum lum 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 damage yeah quote I have you deserve there now we get a jewel we're gonna take a green one that has the most mods that work for this build since it is not good we are gonna vendor it remember we do this for freedom Thank you, Grog. I appreciate it. You can ask. There. Oh, we need to talk to Thingy. We lost our vendor. One of our vendors are gone. He has actually betrayed us. Is there actually a way to avoid that? No, there's no way to avoid the rest penalty. I can't do this just yet. There is no way to avoid the rest penalty. There. Now we have Bannon. We lost Utula. He has betrayed us. Very sad. I'm devastated. Oh, we haven't leveled yet. I tried convincing Mathel he can stream at 8k bitrate. He refuses to believe. I'm streaming at 8k. I've been for a while. Betfin, thank you for the prime. They saved me the trouble of burning this place down. Once we get one more level, we're going to go take the vendor again. So, things like this, you can actually teleport through. It's a bit annoying, actually. You have to be very, like, careful where you click and where you stand. But you can. Which is nice to know. Not everybody knows that it's actually possible. Oh, that's a lot of monsters. And as you can tell, now Path of Exile is really starting to pick up in the amount of density. So there's like a lot more monsters. More and more monsters. Ooh. Yeah, I'm very excited for the reveal today. Loco, thank for the Prime, dude. To raise the place, but there, this is just excessive. It's a bit excessive. All right, let's see. Katava did nothing wrong. Katava's actually super evil, he eats everything. There's loads of good Katava lore, and the gods were very patient with him, too. Like, they would continuously invite him to outings and stuff like that. Um. And Kitava would eat everything. They once invited him to like a fish outing and he ate the entire lake and they were like, bro, Kitava, please. And he just would never stop eating. So they were like, dude, you got to stop. You got a problem. That actually is lore. It's pretty funny. Hey, he was just hungry, dude. Thank you for the sub, dude. Yes, I'll be streaming with drops. What do you need now? So, right now we're looking for a uh, this one. And oh, now I'm going to use my Wailing Essence of Woe. This is going to be an amazing quiver. It's going to have 53 life. It's going to have damage with bows. It's going to have one res. Okay, I had none of that. But sometimes you... You know, I can craft life on this. Um, It might be worth it. It has a lot of res. And it has the damage I wanted. So that's fine. What do you want? Sell my old quiver. We're good. And we can continue. We are now going to go get the next quest thing that we need. It's down here. Ideally, I really want boots. I should have checked for that. Um, I don't think he talk. talk. I don't know if he can talk. Right? I, I'm pretty sure Kitava can talk. Here we have Delirium again. See what the reward is. It's it's kind of whatever. Like, I don't really care about getting singular div cards while leveling. 
So I am going to just take two and then click my B hotkey, which is ending it. I got a stack deck. Stack deck is part of the div card system. Um, and it is basically a stack deck can give any divination card. No matter where it draws from. Div cards have like specific drop um, locations. This the lever like here and then you can... Boom. Physical damage rank 2. This is really good for leveling new alts with when you need physical damage. Like if you're leveling with a melee character. You can still download anything on his PC while you stream. Only if he's using the net limiter I set up. All right, let's continue. Then we have the quest. There is a skill point quest that we have to go do as well. And we have to keep this in our inventory before we're allowed to continue. We need that to be able to, uh, to go here, basically, up here. Yeah, three hours. We're at level 47, almost 48. I really should check the vendor for boots. Like mine are very bad. Very bad boots. I'm only going to bother checking my act at the moment. We're also getting to the point where item level starts to matter a little bit more. Um, it doesn't really matter that much in the start. But now we're starting to get like good stats. Let's see if there are any good boots for sale here. We need blue, blue, green or boots that can do that. Oh, there's basically no boots for sale. Excellent. So we'll go do the reliquary. And then once we have this finished, we'll also have level up and then we can check vendor one more time. There's a lot of rares in here. Um, They're not always super worth killing. Wait, am I still in single target mode? I am. I keep forgetting to switch. It is worth it though. It is worth it. Kind of ends up doing more single target on trash. Because the potions will hit from each other and we're hit based at the moment. Later we are going to be ignite based. We're actually going to lose the multiple projectiles unless we find a special jewel. You never find solo. Very mm -hmm. rare. Very unfortunate. Well, it's actually not very rare because it's very common or it ends up being very cheap in Trade League. It's more the fact that whenever you're looking for something, the game somehow detects that inside your brain and doesn't let you find it. Somehow a mechanic in every game. Very strange. It's the it's the one sensor. The law of desire. If thou want something, thou shalt not have it. All right, we're going to go grab the essence over here. You can never really have too many essences. They're amazing. Not that great to get super low ones, but they're still useful. Worth mentioning that essences do have like a negative feature built into them for the low ones. Oh, nice boots. So, um, do I want these? Uh, I mean, if the other ones fail. Right. So if we look at essences, um, upgrades a normal item to a rare with one guaranteed properties, but properties restricted to level 30 and below. So if I was using this on endgame gear, like item level 86, which is the highest item level in the game, um, they would only give me up to level 35 sets. It couldn't give me any endgame sets. Wouldn't give me any endgame sets at all. Pass run, thanks so much, dude. Hope you're doing good. But they're still very good while leveling. There, there we have all the three things we need. Now we get a skill point. Remember, Boom. We, do this for free. we are going to try for the boots first, I guess. Hmm. Oh, that sucks. There's a movement speed recipe with Quicksilver. I'm not willing to use that right now. 
Then I want blue. Okay, we'll try this one too then. Okay, that one did get movement speed at least. It's never going to get blue, blue, green is yes. the problem. Okay, you know what? We'll just keep finding more. We'll find something that can get blue, blue easily. Eventually. We'll get it eventually. If only I had jewelers. Oh well, we'll keep going. We're about to get another act unlock and that uh, will make it even easier to find there. Right, we have so much resist. So this part is a little bit depending on your gear. So I'm going to respect a little bit right now. So I have this wonderful ring, which I can throw. Let's see, what do I have with open suffixes? Okay, this one can have fire. We're just going to craft the cheap one. And this one can craft cold. Now, I am 131 res. We're going to lose 30, so I'm at 101. That means that I can remove this right now. And this. And that's all. We're back to zero refund points. And I can now go get elemental overload. And now the accuracy doesn't matter anymore. Not as much anyway. Um, I have 94%. At some point in enough to distant future i will need to start using precision you could just keep this too for easier gearing it's a little bit of choice a little bit of gearing so in the end game of this build the last thing that we ascend to will make the accuracy doesn't matter for us until then accuracy does matter you'll either need precision or you will need to keep these nodes and get accuracy on gear those are the true choices you have let's explain elemental overload Skills that have dealt a critical strike in the past 8 seconds deal 40% more elemental damage with hits and ailments. So how does that work? I'm going to show you. This confuses a lot of older players because they used to get a buff up there. You don't anymore. If you look down here now on... Well, I have to move the Legion thing. You see a prismatic crystal appear and that means that elemental overload is active so whenever i have crit with any of my totems all my totems get 40 percent more damage it's pretty much up all the time we do have um what's the crit chance five percent chance to crit and we're obviously firing a lot so most of the time it'll be up it doesn't last very long but whenever we're actually attacking an enemy there's a pretty good chance to crit so it'll pretty much always be up. It's just whenever you see the crystal is there. Pretty much whenever you see the crystal is there. You never notice that little crystal? Yeah, it's not the easiest to see. There, we are very close to getting plus one totem. I can't do this just yet. But yeah, even even with 5%, it's pretty much always up. Being like 7, it's pr pr pretty much literally always up. Are you talking about the crystals orbiting you? No, I was uh, talking about the crystal we hovered over on stream. Like, now it's behind the Legion thing that we moved. But that's why we moved that away. To show that. Drops enabled? They are. But drops aren't enabled on Twitch yet. Drops will be starting in 2 hours and 45 minutes. Then you tell me how to get those wings. I already linked my PU account with Twitch. Do you just have to watch your favorite streamer now? No. Don't watch your favorite streamer. Ideally watch me. Much better. Let's see. They have two blue but no green. Very unlucky. You're my favorite streamer, then stay here. Excellent choice. Go back to faster attacks, and now we're gonna kill Katala. This is now the hardest boss you've met. Um, definitely harder than Piety, and well, I'll try to face tank one and show you how much damage it does. Oh, not that. 
So these are pretty easy, um, but he does have a slam. His slam is incredibly fast. Uh, and there is a later version of this boss as well that is a lot easier in Act 10. But the Act 5 version, incredibly scary. I'll face tank one so you get an idea of how much damage and why you want to avoid it. So even though we have a large amount of HP, it almost one-shots us. And it can very easily one-shot you. You're dead on a critical strength. Thank for the sub rival. I would never use Priority of Elements. I usually don't use any other aura at this point, just to have more mana to make the mana potion feel less worse. Other than that, we're... Ooh, ah, oh no! I targeted my totems. That's the scary thing about playing totems. Because sometimes enemies will attack them when you don't want them to. Either way, pretty easy. This is fairly hard, though. Thank you, thank you, Bobby. Doing a video at the moment. There, and now you have to be careful. And oh no, oh scary, very scary. This is a great reason to over level to fifty on hardcore, especially if you're a new player. Thank you, Orange. Now we are about to receive a reduction of 30% all res. So that is, we have more than enough for that. Not a problem. Thank you, HGA. Thank, thank you. There. It's so easy to rest cap that there's no reason to use period of elements. You can rest cap as soon as you hit uh, Act 2. Like we showed earlier. Now it's pretty important to do the side quest here. Um, this will unlock Lily for your hideout and for all future characters. This is the best feature that they put in this week, lastly. Very recently. Very recent feature. Very recent feature. There's no elements that are going to be scary for you while leveling except freeze. You should get a freeze immune potion. There, nope, not explaining rogue markers, not me. There you can stay on the ground, rogue markers don't exist. You can pick them up though. I do have other videos explaining it, we're not covering that here. Ruby ring, another Viridian jewel. And in this area, the quest is to literally full clear everything. That's why watching a video like this can be pretty nice. You don't have to talk to any NPCs. You don't have to figure anything out. Just do what I'm doing. And yeah, it's uh, everything has to be killed in the zone. Now, I'm pretty sure, not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure that this zone can bug out and have a little hidden pocket of monsters. I've had six people searching the zone with me and we were not able to find the remaining monster. With six people, that seems pretty unlikely. But most of the time, it's just a ghost. Yeah, I've only had that bug with Abyss in the zone. We haven't explained that yet, though. There. All right, let's identify the amulet. Nothing good, nothing good. So pretty much, if it doesn't have life or resist, I instantly discount the item. There's nothing on an item like that um, that's going to matter to me unless it has life and resist. Hmm. I mean, it's not the worst. I am kind of starting to look for life items. Wait, oh, uh, that's fine. Okay, I am going to buy one jeweler. I have a lot of alterations. If this three sockets, buy one more. This is a bad trade. Don't do this. Oh god, this hurts. Okay, we got it. Um, we should be able to three link it. I just need one green. I have no chromes left. So I've been very bad at picking up chromes. This is normally not a problem for new players. New players are exceptionally good at picking up chromes. 
Oh, this is three link. Okay, right, we're gonna buy that on Alchemate and hope that it's good. I can't use that. Okay, that was unfortunate. I have no chromes here either. I'm just gonna have to pay attention and actually buy chromes. We're just gonna have to buy chromes. Either way, we can link it now. So we just need one green on that. I can't do this just yet. Thank you, Crimson. Thanks so much. Uh, strong boxes usually give some chrome items. Not always. Not always. These loads of different stats on the strong box. Contained items are always fully linked, are always great to get. Later on, when you want to get five and six linked items, they can be pretty expensive and rare. Thankfully, this build has an easy way to guarantee. Um, oops. Uh, easy way to guarantee a six link later, which is one of the big pros of the build. A lot of builds end up really struggling on that, and that can be like a pretty bad first experience for a player. Whereas on this build, it is incredibly easy. We'll cover that tomorrow. Tomorrow we're doing like an end game version of this. Another essence of woe. It's really, really good. It's not wailing though. It's only weeping, so it would be less damage than my current quiver. And an item that you might find while leveling is called a full rain. Full rain is oh, you could also find a storm cloud. It's not as good, but it is still good. And quill rain is extremely good, especially because of this node. Wait, this node. Uh, the increase in production is to projectile speed because quill rain is up to a hundred percent projectile speed. And it's a very fast, very fast bow. Um, right, we just got Orb of Regret. That is how you do respects in Path of Excel. That's how you get the refund points. You just eat these. You just go like, Hum! and uh, you get you get um, one regret point. Didn't really need any of this build, or at least very few. The ones you get through the campaign for free, which is like 26, 30, something like that. Um, it's more than enough. Uh, instead, what you can do on this build is uh, you can let the NPC eat them. Because you can sell them for one alchemy. You can sell them for one alchemy. And again, this is not, don't literally vendor them. You, um, oh, this should be good. Nope, it was not. You can uh, use the um, currency swap window. All right, let's see. We're about to fight a little mini boss here. We're very close. Two more levels, and then we get another totem. How you doing on trade league, Bobby? Oh, currency. Nice. This could come in handy. We don't get to kill that much. I guess we can run the other way. So we're supposed to run to the right right now. I'm going to run and try to get at least three on this just because currency at this point is kind of nice. And there's a few things I would love to get from my build. And normally I would have a lot more currency as well just from whatever the league mechanic is. It pretty much always has decent like generic rewards. I would actually be in okay with them not giving really good generic rewards and instead um, having more unique rewards like Heist does. Here is a flame wall. We're gonna pick that up. There, we're gonna end it here. Clicking B. Scouring. Blessed Orb. Blessed Orb, I briefly mentioned earlier, that is how you change the number on implicit. So I can make the ring go from between 20 to 30 lightning rest. There. Let's switch because we want more single target damage. We curse them up, keep our frenzy up, throw our totems down. The recipe here you can grab while fighting. That is the only dangerous attack he has. He has like a big slam. Other than that, he has just very, very tanky totems. They used to have literally no damage. Then they messed up and made them incredibly tanky for a week. Um, they took like four minutes to kill. It was very annoying. Actually, they might have fixed it on day one. I can't remember. 
I just remember I thought I had bricked something in my build. But yeah, other than that, it's a very straightforward fight. Very straightforward. There. All done. And we got an additional skill point for killing him once we go back to town. I can't do this just yet. And then we're just trying to get one more level. Once we get one more level, we have an additional skill um skill totem. That's what we're gonna call it now. Call the skill totem. See, we're actually gonna grab that superior mana flask. The up to 20 quality on a flask will give you more mana received as well. It's really nice. Um, I think the champion's the best version of the build. Especially for new players. The reason I don't recommend Elementless to new players, especially after last day, is we just had so many new players that did follow Elementless guides and they really struggled. Because it can really, really help to have um, very tanky defenses. Like a lot of people are just falling over. It's okay when you know what you're doing, but it's not when you're a new player. It, it's it's a bad guide for new players. Like, it's not a bad guide. It's just bad for new players. Having something that's just incredibly handholdy is, is generally what new players need. And EA is just paper. Hyrule is fine. I still prefer champion, but Hyrule is great. How do you know which rare items to pick up? So I'm picking up pretty much everything. I try to pick up the majority just to like vendor. When I have a full inventory, like I do now, then it's kind of whatever. I'll only pick up anything that I think I can get an upgrade for. Which is very hard to know when you're a new player. But I always want to have a full inventory for when I go back to town. So that I can just get alterations, transmutes, etc. like that. So right now, my helmet isn't super realistic to get an upgrade. It's quite nice. My glove is very unrealistic to get an upgrade. That's because it has two res and high life. Um, uh, my chest is pretty okay. It also depends on, like, how tight I am on the sockets on those items. Um, that's also a big factor. The boots, I'll, I'll pick up every boot. I'm very desperate for new boots. Very desperate for new boots. Here, we have two chromes. We just need one green, and we got it. There, we can remove the precision from there. We are now going to move Frenzy here. I'm going to remove and delete my old boots. See ya. I can show you. Here is how... Here is how you can buy Orb of Regret or Alchemy or everything like that. There. Right, let's see. Let's switch that out. There's no real reason to roll it. I also only have Transmute. Only one. Yeah, one skill point there. Putting me closer to plus one totem. Hell yeah. Right, now also we're not going to explain engineering room. You don't need to use them. They're garbage. Let's see. Then with Lily, what we did earlier, you can now buy Curse on Hit. You can get this in Act 4. I don't have an alchemy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my regret into an alchemy. Good tidings to you. There, and I'm going to buy Curse on Hit. No, we'll explain Pantheon at the end of this act. Only explaining what we're using. We're not yet using that. There. Right. Excellent. Alright. So now we no longer have to curse. You can do this as early as Act 4 if you have the sockets for it. Uh, but now, whenever I shoot something with Frenzy, you can see that it's also cursing it. This is great. And that is really nice because it'll... Give you more time to focus on dodging and keeping your totems up. I can't do this just yet. In this zone as well is... So this is for the next area. However, we are going to go another way. This is kind of a weird, annoying layout. Um, but over here, there is a trial. Another one of those pesky trials. Everybody loves the trials. No way, is it over on the left on this one?
this left, isn't it? Fairly rare layout. There, we can just blink over here. And, yeah. You can just dodge around it. It doesn't actually matter that much if you get hit. They don't really do that much damage. If I get hit here now... More than five when you start getting hit by two. That's when it hurts. Especially with a blink arrow though, you can just blink past so much of the traps. Blink arrow is exceptionally good. This is a pretty important recipe to pick up. Double resistances. That will make you be able to do like fire and lightning or cold and lightning. Very, very good for when maybe you're slightly low on two. Like say I had 57 and stuff like that on two different res. Then that comes in handy. Spells do not need accuracy. Only attacks do. We're in attack. We scale like a spell, but we are in attack. EA explosion doesn't hit. Only the projectiles hit. That's why EE works. That is not true. The EA explosion also hits. The reason why it works is because the explosion always have to, happens after being hit. And the hit applies, uh, like, it always happens after being hit by, uh, the initial hit first. Like, there is no scenario on Explosive Arrow where EE doesn't help you. Pretty much. Realistically. But the explosion does still, like, EE fire when it goes off, when the monster survives. But we're overriding that anyway with a new initial hit. It's always just a good thing. There. We just have to wait our way through the tower. This is like a play along. Yep, this is a everything explained. It's a really, really long video. People can play along when it's their first time playing the game. And we're trying something different this time. I'm trying to only explain what we're doing. Because there's just so much in the game that people don't need to know. So we'll see how people like this. Oh wait, I have my level up. Uh, can I assign it while fighting? Bonka. Hey, we got it. I got my fourth totem. So now we got a big bunch of damage. And we also like... We have more time to like just run around now. This is a chevron once again. Figured she would have been dead, but no. No. It's okay, guys. This is totally the last time you see Chevron. There, and this is Brutus empowered form. Chevron possesses him. Opium. Oh, ow. See them one more time. Two more, technically. There. Now, in Always this one, it is the same as before that you already have the waypoint. However, there is a spell damage craft here. So, it's not bad to grab that once. I can't do this just yet. There. Now, um, to our right... There are some goats. To our left, there is the skeleton. Um, and if you go further right, there is a boss called Aberath. If you kill him, you'll get a skill point and you will also get a pantheon unlock. We haven't explained those yet, which we will later. But um, normally, especially on hardcore, it's quite okay to wait with doing this. This is actually pretty dangerous. If you're in software, you can just go face rush. Thank you, Fufu. Pretty good gloves, but they have fire. Um, this is Expedition. I actually should explain this. It's not the most important thing to know, but it is so incredibly profitable. The number one TLDR, so... There are no buffs here. Okay, normally there will be things that will say like... Chests give you more rewards, or heads give you more rewards. But either way, even without that, the most important thing to go for is gold. You want as many skulls as you can get. And they will give you the reroll currency and they will give you something called logbook to 
Might have to bind this in settings, but at least for me, it's B to interact with this league. And uh, it will just go around exploding and unleashing loads of monsters on them, on you. They can actually be really dangerous. And that's the reroll currency. Even if you don't really understand the mechanic, doing this is still worth it. Because you will eventually want to use it. So even if you don't understand it, just, yeah. Explode some things. That being said, you can make them, for example, immune to fire damage or immune to ignite. So once there are the buff things there, you have to be careful. Oh, the first one always has no remnants? I don't remember that at all. Crazy. That's crazy. This is actually a pretty decent beast. We haven't really interacted much with bestiary. We haven't had any good ones. Uh, this one's really good when you get it early. If you get it super early, like three level... Well, like around, or basically if it's your first beast, it's a good one. That weird crab. It's uh, any item in the game, and at that level, there's not that many items, and a lot of them are pretty useful. A lot of them are pretty useful. Yeah, we'll have drops later. We actually have the best drops. Oh, I didn't even click it. There. Again, we're always clicking the soul fight. They are for a mechanic we're not really going to use now. But again, 10 alterations here and there. Very nice. I can't do this just yet. Very, very nice. To the left, there is another boss. We can come back for that later too. The reason people would choose to come back for it later is if you just wait two or three levels, you'll like basically one shot them. Whereas when you're here, like I would normally go back for them at a little 56 to 58. Um, very often, if I'm on a strong build or if I'm good gear, I will do them. Just, it's pretty okay to skip too. It's a volatile. They're scary. Don't get hit by them. Do a lot of damage and come one shot you later. Our chromes, a bad unique item that we don't need. Actually, we should pick them up anyway. Just for our alterations and alchemy shard. The random dagger we don't need have a benefit to us. We have some random moose. Meese? I really wish the plural of moose was meese. Sounds much better. Um, Didn't drop anything. We're just going to move on. We're about to level as well. Any tips for not getting stuck on damage while leveling? Play this build. With this build, you always have the choice of just over leveling. There, purity of flesh and now we don't have to worry about accuracy for the purpose of um for the purpose of what do you call it um having damage now well actually it's still a big part of our damage but not as detrimental uh we oh. we do want to start using precision pretty soon maybe now wait oh i'm not leveling it See how much of our mana tank. We can start using that now. And then once we get the reservation nodes, I will pop in determination. Later on, we'll be using um Brace as well. Wow, that's never happened during and everything I explained before. That's cool. Um, I've never gotten to explain an exalted art. Um wasted my league start luck. So, Exalted Orb. This is Something you just put in the bank and then forget about it because you're too new and you shouldn't have one at this point. And um, the way Exalted Orbs work is that they will add one stat to a rare item. They're also used for advanced metacrafting mods later on in the end game. Um, it's very advanced. I'm not going to explain it to you. I do have videos doing that. But yeah, very, very advanced crafting will use it. And um, people will use copious amounts of Exalts at the end game. To give you a rough idea, one Exalted Orb is worth 150 Chaos Orbs. It is a large amount of value. Uh, we should go bank actually. I want to check the boots. Three Orb of Binding. That is insane. That is insane. Um... So Exalted Orbs, what they are used for when you actually use one is it adds 
a set to a new item. That's not what they're mainly used for, though. Very few people would use that. There are other ways of doing that at the end game, so nobody really wastes them on that. Even on Soul Cell Fun. Right, let's see. Do I do. I think we do a red helmet. With the road to the Frisian forest clear again. Ah. I trekked through to the forest. Not the worst. To see if the strangeness. Farewell. So, this is hybrid. We can start using hybrid now to demonstrate. I actually kind of want the two red anyway. Yeah, we can we can explain one more mechanic with this helmet. So let's do that. We are now going to buy molten shell. We are going to try to vol it. Boom! First try. Lucky. We do not have enough to buy a cast and I'm mistaken, but if I remove my scourings, I can. Two scourings into one regret, one regret into one alchemy orb, and then we're going to buy cast and I'm mistaken. Uh, it's a roughly one in eight chance around there to get a cast when I'm mistaken. Sorry, to get a uh, Val Orb or to get a Val skill. I'll show what that does now. Already done, Creams. There. So we're going to be using this helmet. We'll put that in there for now. We'll have different sockets later. But this can now... I'm missing tier 2 life. Where's tier 2 life from? Life and mana. The beacon. Oh, I'm about to get it. I'm about to get tier 2 life. It's from the next zone. So this can actually craft life on it, even though it already has life. So right now this could have 40 life, but soon it'll be able to have 60 life, basically. So it's pretty great. Uh, and my current helmet isn't that special. However, I do need resistances now. Hmm. Right, we can craft it here. We can do some fire and cold resist. Fire and cold. And we do not have enough transmute. Very sad. So we're going to need transmute. We're just slightly under the rest cap right now. Barely under, so that's fine. Not the end of the world. But now we have a cast for damage taken set up. And the reason I wanted to do that now anyway is because it's actually pretty important to explain how it works. So... Trigger skills are kind of different from other skills in Path of Exile. So, right now, if I hover over Castle Damage Taken, similar to how I showed you how it highlights on other skills, it is only highlighting Mountain Shell. It is not highlighting Precision, it is not highlighting Determination. It only works with each other, it doesn't work with the other links in here. And currently, it works with Mountain Shell, but that doesn't always need to be the case. So, the way cast damage taken skills work is with required level. So if you see here, the cast damage taken support has a required level of 38. I'm actually not going to level this anymore. I'm going to keep this at level 1. Um, and the Molten Shell has a required level of level 4. I can level this all the way until it has a required level of 38 or lower. If this becomes level 39, which it does at some point, so you have to stop it at level 35 or 37 required, uh, if it gets a higher level, then it will not be cast automatically. So the way this will work now, while it is lower level, which we were what we're going to keep it at, whenever I take damage equal to 500 or more, it will automatically cast Molten Shell for me. So the way this works then, and why it's grayed out here, is that I start taking incoming damage, um, it'll cast it and start mitigating damage. And the way Molten Shell works, is it will give me armor based on how much, uh, or sorry, it will give me damage mitigation based on how much armor I have. It will also give me armor. So, there's Molten Shell and there's Val Molten Shell. And this is our first Val skill. Molten Shell is stronger than Val Molten Shell, but Val Molten Shell lasts longer. So, Molten Shell will give you 75% of the damage from hits is taken from the buff before your life or energy shield. So, it's a huge, huge shield. And it will be uh, up to 20% of our armor for a maximum of 10,000. So right now, if I just pop Mountain Shell right now, it gives me just 244 as the shield. However, if I pop my granite, it gives me 784, almost half of my life. And once we start later on having a lot more armor, this will be like five or 6,000. So it's a huge, huge amount. Now, why did we vol it? 
while Molten Shell is usable even though we have it on Cast and I'm mistaken. So now I'm putting Val Molten Shell on my R key. And Val Molten Shell will never, like, you can never trigger a Val skill. It's just very calm. Um, instead, that will get used whenever I want it to do. There's nothing you can do to trigger it. So now, when we're killing monsters, it will start filling up a bar. That's the souls of our enemies. And we're going to stop leveling Molten Shell at level 10. And it's one gem. Both Val Molten Shell and Mol uh, Val Molten Shell and Molten Shell is the same gem. But we are literally stealing the souls of our enemies and throwing it inside our gem. So we're just going to keep leveling that and be careful not to level cast when I'm mistaken. The reason for that is we want it to proc pretty easily. We want it to just proc whenever. This is a very good beast. This is a unique jewel. And there are several unique jewels we want in this build. So even if you find this at a low level, this is a beast you always want to do. We also want to pick up some belts because we don't really have a good belt. So throwing essences at belts at this point is very strong. There's a diamond flask. It's always worth picking up flask when you're new. Um, at least until you have two or three of each. Because you never know when you're actually going to need them. That over there is a dead end. It just looks like you can connect there. You actually have to go all the way back. I know this through pain. But normally you would try to go to the right and then realize it's a dead end there. I can't do this just yet. Why stop leveling my open shell? So it can be that's what we just explained. So it can it can be cast by the trigger. Like Val Mountain Shell is in the Mountain Shell. They can't level them separately. Still fight to it down there. So now you can see Val Mountain Shell is full. And I'll have my granite up. And that's giving me 1,200. But it lasts a lot longer. Here's another Gwenin. We're not going to bother interacting with that now. We're not really hoping to get anything good. Uh, we can't explain the buff things though. All damage from monsters hits can freeze. But... Runic monsters have a 50% chance to drop additional rare jewelry. So we can get rings and amulets and stuff like that. Here's increased pack size. That's one of the best things to go for. Uh, additional rare weapon. But yeah, it's, it's uh, very, very good for grabbing gear and stuff early. And then her mechanic is a little bit complicated. We're not going to explain that here. Basically, just gambler from Diablo 2. Wouldn't this be prob uh, problem be fixed if we level both Castle and Amstaken and Molten Shell? Okay, I'll try explaining it again. I thought I explained it well enough, but I will try to do a better explanation. If we level Castle and Amstaken, the number of how often it uh, triggers will go up. So if you have a level 20 Castle and Amstaken, um, if you have a level 20 Castle and Amstaken, it'll be a long time before it procs. So it might not save you. Whereas we wanted proccing quite often. We want that armor shield as often as possible, basically, whenever it's off cooldown. Now, there are some people that like having it at a high level. I would rather have it proc more. So I, I keep it at level 1. Does that make more sense? So we're going to level Mountain Shell till 10. It's also not a big... The other reason is there's no big benefit of leveling Molten Shell. Because you're already maxing out. Like, you don't get anything from it. As soon as you have 10k armor, which we are already at 4,000. We don't have any investment in armor. It's very easy to get 10k. I believe in traveling light. Do you? Do you? Oh. Damn, those are actually pretty great boots. But I'm never going to get them to be blue, blue, green. I'm most likely not even going to get them to be blue, blue. And I do need two blue blue somewhere. And there's nowhere else I'm realistically going to get that. And I just got really good gloves that I actually can get two blue. Unless I get blue blue green on them. I don't have too much. Oh, actually that makes it easier. Um, But I'm never going to get blue blue on them. Never mind. But they're pretty good. They don't have any other stat. But I can craft resist on them. So there's 75 life. Hi Scott. 
So, this place, as you see, it's very easy to just stand in the circle and kill enemies. There's nothing particularly crazy here. If you go out of it, it'll go back. You too, dude. There, our well moon shows always high level. Almost, almost high enough level. Now we have to click the ignition switch and then light the beacon of Condor. And then we can just teleport down here. Both Flame Dash and um, Blink Hour will work. You don't have to run all the way down. This is a very dangerous zone. It has a stone golem <clears throat> that will fucking one shot you. And it's just a random monster, not a boss. Good tidings to you. Wait, we're just gonna sell those. Bunch of wisdoms. And as you can see, um, that's actually a very good helmet too. We're not gonna use that though. We're gonna keep the boots, just in case. We'll throw a random essence of wrath on the belt. Very good. Now it's starting to come together. No open suffix. But it's starting to come together on the gear front now. I cannot switch out of that because I do not have enough res. So we're going to have to wait with that. Did I get enough resistance? I think I need two more transmutes. Which we can actually just buy here. So we can buy two more portals and then two more transmutes. Then we have some left over. Then we have six. We hide out. Why did that sell for an Augment Orb? Oh, I didn't even see. Thank you. Whenever an item has six stats, it'll sell for an Augment. So five or less will sell for Alterations. Right, we can just use this. We'll put Fire and Cold on it. We're rest camped once again, which we actually need for the next fight. There... And now we're going to go get slapped around by stone golems. Oh, and you're right. Thank you. We have the life roll now. So now we can craft life on the helmet, even though we already have. Okay, you know what? We're just going to craft the lower one. It's software. We don't even want that much life. Dying is fun. Um, so now it has 40 life on it, and it's pretty nice. And it can get up to later on, we can craft 70 life, then this would have 90 life on it. Um, let's see, what else? Nothing to craft there. And then we're just going to do a little check again. Somebody watching might have crafted fire damage on accident on their gear. So just make sure you check again that you don't have fire here. You can have cold, you can have lightning, you cannot have fire. We are going to craft bow damage or elemental damage with attack skills. Works for what we're playing. Now, now we have a couple of options. On Hardcore, I would most likely go for Serenity now. Because I want to do Precision and I want to do Determination and I have enough damage. You could, however, just rush down what we're going to be doing later and go to Panopticon. Just basically go... Um, oh, you can remove this whenever you feel like it too. I would normally go here, through the Life Node here, down here, and then all the way to Panopticon. And then iron wood is really good too. We'll have that later. Right. Let's see some stone golems. There they are. Animated reef. They're very mean. You'll hear like big slams. And if you see a rare one, it'll just slap you. Usually they just want to run through them. They are very mean. More chromes. Very, very mean. I can't do this just yet. Can't or won't. Two hours left until the release, so I gotta try to hurry up a little bit. I also wanna try to like explain as much as possible. So normally it takes me between two and four hours to level the new characters through the campaign. I don't can't do it at that pace while trying to explain everything. That's the problem. Either way, a lot of the information in this video is very front-loaded, I feel. Hopefully less front-loaded than normal. The glass blower, we don't need those. There. Here is the Branking. This is a very big stone. So strong. So Put faster yeah. attacks in. We found an exile dude. Crazy. Feast for his majesty on his wedding day. 
This is the Nessa girl from Act 1. She, it's, I don't know, it's a parasite. Maybe she ate uncooked pork or something, I don't know. Either way, she's got a parasite. Or Brian King too. Maybe he's not even a bad guy. Very cool though. It's like a weird crab. So in this um, second part, you can actually die pretty quickly by getting hit by the lightning. You have a very small arena to dodge. Other than that, I don't know. Usually he just does nothing and chills with my totems. What's up, bro? He doesn't really do much. There is a neat little trick I want to show you. If you find the fight very difficult, like dodging the lightning, you can just do this. You can even put down a new portal while you're safe. You have, cannot be damaged. So that can be really, really good if for whatever reason you've fucked up and you have like 30 cold rest at this point. Or lightning rest. Ow. It does go a lot faster if you stay down, though. There's no, there's no like effective HP per act they want to aim for because effective HP changes so drastically. Like, people mix effective HP and raw HP a lot. Like, I don't have 2000 effective HP right now. Effective HP is a lot higher. That takes into consideration your resistances and things like that. Like we have closer to like 8,000 effective HP. No good helmet. A lot of them though. Right. Cool thing to explain. This is a six socket item. This will sell for seven jewelers. So pretty much you will always be selling six sockets. I usually try to five or six thing with at least 10 to 20 fusings the first test I find. Um, just because like it does happen. It can happen. Uh, it usually doesn't, but it's nice. It does. Um, but yeah, six sockets are basically just vendored for jewelers. And then you can buy fusings for jewelers. So now we have pantheons. There are a bunch of different pantheons. Soul of the Brian King is probably the most used one because you can upgrade this once you hit maps. It's a little bit complicated. We'll do that tomorrow, but that will make you be cannot be frozen. And then Tukohama is the only other one. I usually switch to Rallakesh. That's the next one we're about to get. Uh, basically from Grus trying to kill us. And uh... yeah, that'll be good. Let's see. There. There is a little castle here, so I usually go until I see the ruins of the castle. Can't be there, it must be here. Where's my castle? Now we're gonna get that potion I talked about earlier. The quartz flask. Sir? Am I bad? It's this layout. Oh, I've already seen it. Right? Oh, I'm so confused. Here. You there, local. Oh, where now? Okay, I'll just go back to town, I guess. Be top left then. The only place. We'll go back from my point. There, and then I find a five link bow. This is a great example. I would actually not use this, even though it's 1.4 attack speed. Attack speed is that important that I probably wouldn't use it. Attack speed is like the number one people fuck up on this build. They'll start using like 1.3, 1.4 attack speed bows, and all your increased attack speed is like multiplied from the base attack speed. It's way 1.7. So we would not use this. Even though it might seem tempting. Orgy, thanks for 30. My spirit is spent. Yeah, it's here. Alright, this is what we were looking for. So this will give you the quartz flask. 
again utility flasks are super strong in this game the way the course fast works is it lets you through phase through enemies it'll also give you spell suppression which we'll explain after um but the most important thing is just letting you phase through enemies so i am now going to go down to one potion and actually kind of want to roll freezing me on it go with courage so these are kind of garbage they're not as good when instant they're kind of bait flasks okay i don't have any let's see can i get a 42 instant please uh that works okay hmm we can show bestiary then go to the menagerie and obviously we've killed a lot of yellow beasts to this point now we do have the jewel one that we want to do however we got very lucky and we had no suffix here if you augment uh you will get a random suffix however if i do they've changed the names of these uh, ceiling is bleed is it convection or damping damping is burning so then it's convection what a weird name anyway doing off convection makes it uh freeze immune I don't even know what that word means. Now, sadly, I don't have enough yellow beast to get my um, unique jewel, but we do want the unique jewel. There, we're going to do more reservation. Level 9. Cool. Connection is heat transfer. Oh. Right. Cool. Your eyes, Mary. Ceiling is bleed. There. At some point in this build, we're not going to use a mana flask at all. And you can see right now, I'm using one mana, one life. I can't do this just yet. One mana, one life. I'll pick up some more chromes. We don't have that many. Which bow has a 1.7 base attack speed? None. 1.5 is the highest. Yeah, even even right now in a foiling, it feels great. If you find a tabby there or something like that, it feels even better. Like it's insane once you have a quill rain. You don't even need a six link. In the current league, it was incredibly easy to get both a tabby and a quill rain. They're two leveling items. Um, and we can explain spell suppression. Spell suppression is the only thing we have is from the quartz class right now. You can see here, spell suppression chance ten. Suppression, spell damage prevention, 50. So, spell suppression goes all the way up to 100%. And what it does is it always uh, halves the damage of a spell you take. So, if I have 100% spell suppression, and I'm about to hit for a lightning bolt for 500 damage, spell suppression makes that 250. So, obviously, that's really, really good for any elemental spell, because we already have our resistances uh, knocking off a large amount. So if a lightning bolt is about to hit us for, let's say, 1,000 damage, then I take 250 and then 125. So it's incredibly strong. If I have 90% chance to do spell suppression, then it's a 90% chance that I take half. 10% chance that I take full. All right, let's see. A little bathroom here after grabbing this. Alligator. All right. And again, just want to point out, remember that we aren't talking to any quest giver. There's no, like, talking except to finish handing in the quest. I really like that. I'm going to go be right back. I'm going to play three minutes of ads. Now's a good time to go get a drink. I'll be right back.
Why do people ask? Why would anyone disable drops? I just want to make sure. I just want to make sure. Go with courage. Here. All right, now we're going to continue. We're getting close to actually being able to ascend to Crew Lab. Wait, actually, we, I completely forgot about grabbing one of the um, files. Go grab that. Oh, damn, Kim. Let's go grab the trial. There. Is up here. I can't do this just yet. There. There it is. And then there's one more trial we need. So there are only three trials for Cruel and three trials for Merciless Lab. And once you have um, these, then we can do the normal and the cruel one. And I will uh, I'll walk you through everything and explain how lab works. There. All right, all right, all right. Okay, we almost have enough mana to pop on determination and at some point I really don't know how I feel like it's a little bit about socket pressure too but you can at some point fairly early switch so that you're no longer using mana and that you're using life instead to cast but it does become a little bit intense on your life and you're gonna have to spam your life flask a lot but it is nice not to need a mana flask There. And now we are about to use our first map. This is like a tutorial, I guess. So you throw the quest device in the green map you received in the um, eastern part, the crypt. Where am I? And now you're in a map. This is basically what Endgame is like, but a more tutorial-based version. This is like a tutorial of the Endgame. Just have to follow the bridges, go deeper into the map, and then we'll eventually find Malidaro. He is back again. Spoiler alert, Dodri, you find her again too. Shocker. Armor reward isn't too bad. Give you unique armor, so it says a chance to give you five links or six links. Is worth getting to three or four. Probably not going to hit four, so we're going to end it now. What about Piety? She's actually dead now. Piety is actually dead now. There, that's the last time we can level it. Explosive arrows now 11. Uh, I don't think I bother putting on thingy. I think we have more than enough damage to not switch to faster attack. He's pretty straightforward. The main attacks, like these adds, don't really do anything. I don't think they've ever killed me. But that purple thing can. I guess everything in the fight is purple. Those. Other than that, just like, you know, don't stand in the same place. Don't backtrack. Okay. And that's just the last part. He will also do like let's see if we can wait. Yeah, there we go. Here you just gotta like be Neo. Get a matrix dodge. There, there's two bows. Again, we're not very interested in bows. It's pretty pretty much just grove bow. Um Grove bow, sacred bow, and short bow that we're interested in. Now, a really nice thing. Wow. Wow. That's basically an endgame helmet. Like, we're, we're absolutely going to use that. That is a great helmet. It's not super endgame because it doesn't have spell suppression and it doesn't have um, double res. But for this point, it's really great. We're actually going to want to four socket that and... I think we only need a two link right now. I think 
that's fine. Don't know if that's fine. Uh very unfortunate. I wanted one green. That's fine. I don't wanna mess around with my other. That is fine. We'll get it eventually. We'll get it next time. There. This boss does not need to be killed. Don't need to bother with it. But we do now, however, about to get the message. Enter the labyrinth. And traps in particular, honestly, the faster you go through them, the safer you are. Whenever you start doing things like this, that is when you die. Whereas if you notice, like, once you just, like, start running through them, they don't have that much of a surface area, especially with a Quicksilver up and dashing through them. So my tip for traps would be, you know, when you hear the damage, dash forward. It's a good habit to make while on softcore, they're probably never going to kill you. It's very, very hard to die to traps. Chisel! Not gonna explain today, we'll explain that tomorrow. It's an endgame currency. Not much to worry about. Nothing happened, don't worry. I can't do this just yet. Hey Talish. Alright, either way, we can enter the labyrinth now, so we are going to ascend. We're gonna do normal lab and cruel lab. That's excellent. Or sack the kill. See. There we are going to ascend. I'm gonna empty our inventory first. Because there's good loot in the lab that we want. Let's see. We'll take the hybrid ones. Yeah. Armor evasion. Let's sell everything. Except the nice helmet. It's actually not bad boots, but we kind of well. want different colors. And we can just, um... Do that now. I do have some videos on this too, but Path of Exile has a very cool affinity system. So for example, normally when I would be banking, the way it would look is it would ignore this tab entirely and it would start going straight in here. It's a really, really good system. It just automatically places it where you want as long as that's turned on. You can do this with normal tabs too. So you can have like, oh, I want this to be my currency and my delve tab. Um, really, really good. And if you ever want to ignore the affinity, you just hold control, shift click. Control, shift click, ignores the affinity. Now we're going to go all the way back to arc three and go to the starting encampment. And we are going to um, send here. Oh, I forgot about prison. I have um, I have crafting guides on on YouTube, and also Craft of Exile is a great tool for learning crafting. Right. Anyway, let's go find the first trial. Is this live? No, this is a recording, but we knew you would be here today. For mo most people that are watching this, like, it's it's intended for YouTube. It's like an eight-hour playthrough of how to learn and how to play Path of Exile. I wonder if there's anything I could say to fuck with people that are watching on YouTube that it's live. They've been watching a video. Someone's at this point now. And then just suddenly go like, this is actually live. It's not a video. To really freak them out. Right, we can enter the labyrinth now. Your eight hour everything guide was on my recommended. Yeah, I used to get bullied a lot for like long videos, but it's uh surprisingly popular. Very long videos. I can't do this just yet. There. Alright. So, this is normal lab. 
So you get the choice between multiple labs. You cannot go straight to Cruel. You have to do normal first. And if you open a website called peewelab.com, it's updated every day. You now see like, oh, normal lab. What's that look like today? See what he uses, like what weapons he has, and then some info about the layout. Not very needed for the first lab, but especially the end game ones. It's a good website or a good resource to know about. Everything in here is going to be incredibly easy. It's going to be very hard. I don't think I'm going to explain much about the lab on the first way through because it is so easy. We'll do some limited explaining. We'll do most of the explaining in Cruel Lab. Well, thanks for can explain. So there's always a recipe on each lab here at the first trial. The first area is just random monsters as filler. And now you get one of three boss fights. You have to fight him three times. So, if I destroy this, he will be weaker. Like, they will no longer spawn and support him. However, if I keep them alive, I will get better loot. I'll get a reward chest. An additional reward chest. It got destroyed, so I will not get an additional reward chest. You have to keep all three alive. I didn't mean to. I just killed it in a bad position. Oh, nice rave. Thank you, Spring. So that was pretty much the first stage. It was obviously so fast because I am super high level. I am super high level. But once we go on the actual cruel version of this, the second hard or second easiest, um, it'll be a lot harder. And mostly builds for the Ascend a lot earlier. It's just because it doesn't do anything for us. Like, there's no benefit to Ascend before now. Thank you, Skull. Yep, drops around. These are Gargoyles. And they will give them a massive buff by being left alive. You should always kill them when you're at, like, a level adjacent lab. They aren't. There, now we can do determination. Excellent. One cast per mana. Thank you, Ben. I appreciate it. Doing a video at the moment. There. I can't do this just yet. And then we just have one final trial to complete, and we are going to learn about enchants. We're going to learn about ascending. Loads to learn. There. And as you can see, I'm, I'm applying what I showed you in trials as well. The faster you run through traps, the less they do. In normal lab, they actually do less damage as well. In uh, the third and fourth lab, they'll do a lot more damage. It's still percentage based, just higher percentage. All right, there. Final lab. Now it's a slightly harder boss fight with some traps. And lab is pretty different than the normal content. If you die, you die. You don't die like hardcore, but you have to restart the entire lab. So if I die right now, I don't get to just come back in. I have to go all the way back. I have to do it all over again. You die IRL. That's not that bad. Not yet. Let's see. And you'll also notice I'm not picking up a lot of uniques, uh, always. You should always pick them up anyway and, um, sell them for alterations. Here's the Altar of Ascendancy. It'll actually warn you before the... I touched it once and then left. I touched it, didn't I? I 
think I touched it. I think I touched it and then clicked leave. I just didn't ascend. Okay, I haven't ascended now. But that's fine. That's actually not a big deal because it doesn't do anything for us anyway. And the normal enchants aren't cured. That's very funny though. Uh, let's see. Uh, we're, we're not gonna like... None of these have like sockets that I'm looking to upgrade. And they're all from normal. So we're not even looking at the stats. Um, I'm pretty sure I can go to Cruel Lab now. Because I'm pretty sure I have the points. I hope. I do. Okay. I actually did nothing. That's fine. So now I can go to Cruel. This is fine. Bug report. So if you try to leave without having clicked the altar, it'll stop you. Uh, let's see. We can show Dark Shrines as well now in Cruel Lab. So I'll open the website I showed you earlier and look at Cruel Lab. This changes day to day, normally around midnight my time. And I see that there's a Dark Shrine in my zone. And it was in a hidden lever. I'll point that out next time because we'll be finding more of these. It'll be different each time. It'll be like a lever around it. And it always looks very similar. Once you've done a lot. Once you've done a lot, you'll get more. See. That is not the correct zone. The next zone is supposed to be a trial. You should put a fail safe upon exiting lab. There is. Just not if you've touched the altar already. But we already have the points. I wonder if I can eat before the announcement. How long do I have? 1 hour 30. Right, here's another recipe. It's gonna be tight. I don't know if I get to eat. I'm very hungry. Right, now it's gonna start being harder. He has three different weapons. He has a sword and shield, dual swords, or um, a mace. Mace is by far the easiest. He'll barely ever hit you. Oh, we should have swapped gems too to do more damage. Because now he's very tanky. Um, and he has loads of different things. On this one, he will get massive elemental damage buff. Unless we click them like this. Now that we've clicked them, we want to kill him within 10 seconds. Or he will keep the buffs. How long do you eat? Five minutes? I just don't think we're going to be finished with this before the uh, announcement. How do you fly mush with no dash and skill bar? That was showed earlier in the video. So my second bar. I try to explain everything as we do it. As we do it. You can rebind whatever is on your second bar. Realm goes down an hour before announcement anyway. That is true. Uh, okay, we're not going to do that puzzle right now because that's for a treasure and it's not really worth it. Three point three hours, and I've never noticed he has different weapons. So, dual swords is the most dangerous. The wind slash will do the most damage. Then, the wind slash is like a. Um, I'll show you on the next one. Uh, it's a very scary move. And then the safest is the mace because he's a very, very slow slam. It's the dangerous move. I'll try to find another dark shrine. There's a dark shrine in this area. Right. Here is the dark shrine. This is one of the layouts. You'll see that it's like a little secret area here. There's no way to get there. Then you have to search here for the switch. And you see it there. You can't go here normally. Then I click that. I got the best outcome, which is B twice blessed. However, it doesn't matter in the lab I'm in. Because food enchants don't really matter at this level. Um, only the third and fourth lab matters. And pretty much only the fourth in terms of enchants. But they are very, very good. We'll explain them when we get to them, but you can have glove, helmet, and boot enchants. You can also have belt enchants, but they're more of a late, late game thing. Um, they are also, even if you reroll the item with chaos orbs, 
or even Vile Orbs, you will not remove the enchant. The Dark Shrine was what we just saw in the secret area. They can give different buffs. So we have a Massive Shrine, which gives us more life. And we have Twice Enchanted, which gives us two enchants instead of one. That was from the secret passage. Right. So now he's going to Wind Slash. And like, there. That's the Wind Slash. That's what kills most people. Also, the Goddess will like shoot barrages at you. That's also very scary. If you stand still like this, that can easily kill you. Just don't stand still in this fight. Move the entire time. Be ready to flame dash. Shova. There. Went a lot faster when we get that. Yeah, we might have to really rush then. I'm trying to think if there's anything really important I'm going to be explaining during the next two acts. Definitely will be some things. The most important stuff will be explained already by Act 7 or 8. The General. I'm pretty sure the Generals don't do anything except run around and try to kill you. They, I don't think they buff him. They're just, yeah, they just run around and try to kill you, the Generals. <laughs> I did, Gregory. But yeah, we'll try to pick up the pace a little bit. So we actually might only have 30 minutes left. Shouldn't I have global alerts? Like, it should say global alerts. If it's restarting. Maybe they forgot. Alright. Last level. We actually get to ascend now. And this is a very big difference. Also, like, uh, the traps will do a lot of damage, so be careful. You can actually get Dark Shrines that will turn off the traps. Ooh. That'll actually turn off the traps. Yeah, you can see they're just running around, being annoying, dropping loot. How dare they? Right. So to ascend, you just click the altar, and then you get the choice between Slayer, Gladiator, and Champion. Each character has or each different class has three different ascendancies except for uh scion she gets like a jack of all trades treatment and champion the one we're going uh we're going now here and these are travel nodes similar to travel nodes here they don't really do much they're just evasion and armor and increased damage with attack skills this one does nothing without that one but this one is you have 20 fortification the star here which is damage reduction so it's 20 percent less damage and this is attack speed while fortified and armor and evasion while fortified and cannot be stunned so it's extremely strong now we get enchants none of these do anything but we have a second one we can just do edict of thunder and kill sure why not um and we have the same one again and we can just do reduce mana if you've been hit recently does not really affect us we don't really care oh whoops we cannot put determination on yet. We don't have enough mana for that. Now we can leave and we are a champion. We've ascended and we are now incredibly tanky. Most people, especially on hardcore, will be very careful until they get to this point. And once they get to this point, zoom, dude, you can do whatever. Now you can go back and kill those like uh, the two bosses, Abarath and um, the uh, Ralakesh. No, Ristatha. You can go kill those now. I am actually going to skip them because I want to show as much of the important stuff as possible. And since it's so easy to just over level and then go back and one bang them for your skill point, it isn't that important to show. In this zone, there's nothing important. You just have to run through it. It's a decent amount of monsters. The second enchant was from the Dark Shrine we showed in the Secret Passage. Can Glove Enchants break your build? Yes. On some builds, they can. Yep, 
Yes, tell them drops. We have 30 minutes or 1 hour 30. It's 1 hour 30 until drop start and the announcement. However, I think this server might shut down soon. So I won't be able to do the rest of the video. I think. I'm not sure though. I'm going to go as long as I can. Um, I mean, you instantly see what it does. It's always like a riddle, but you always see what it does. Like, be twice blessed. Twice enchanted. And then it'll sometimes just give you a buff. There. This guy is actually pretty scary for other builds. It's very easy for us because he very often will attack our totems. But it's, it's incredibly easy. Once we get our next part of our ascendancy, it'll always attack our totems because they literally taunt. Very, very cool. Yeah, you have to have um, Twitch connected to your Path of Excel account, and then you just watch the reveal. Mm, yeah, it also comes up in Map Monster, at least some of them. Right, we're going to move through here. We're going to be going back here later to collect Fireflies, but um, I usually like to either rush through... And then put a portal at the cave you find. Or if you don't find the cave, I just go back. I go back later. Yep, you can just watch me. You can indeed. There. This zone, Blink Arrow, is really, really good for. Because there's quite a lot of things here where Flame Dash can't get over. So I really like having Blink Arrow. Especially for leveling. But even at endgame, I, I really like it. I didn't use it as much last time, but I definitely will in the future. It just feels great. Gives you a lot of extra control over the character. You see, we're just zooming through the zone. We're already very good level. We are the same as the zone. This Kishara Star gives you a skill point. Then we are rushing through here. This is... A lot of people really hate this layout. A lot of people really hate this. There's actually just like three. It's actually very easy to memorize. There, there's basically three. It's either... Uh, which I think it is now. Yeah, it's here. Um, I can't do this just yet. And there's a second layout. Which is quite rare. Um, where it's all the way over here and then it's like here and there's the third layout where um where it's like far up here but then there's a big chasm there's a big chasm uh that's a good div card i would normally pick that up This build will never be expensive uh, as a league starter. There, there's nothing that can make this build expensive. It is literally impossible. The only item that will be expensive for this build is whatever the jewel is. A natural instinct. Right, now we're looking for the cave while killing monsters where we want to keep our level up. Uh, higher item level Quicksilver, that's good. So there is item level on Flask as well. So, for example, there will be different like, levels of prefixes and suffixes on Flask too. That's also something you can look up on PoEDB. Oh, let's see. I'm surprised there's no countdown yet to the um, if the servers were going to shut down. So they're, they're right. Normally the servers shut down and they patch so they can show new supporter packs. Very odd that it hasn't yet. It'd be great if I have a full hour and 20 minutes. Another scouring arm. So these are the fireflies. We need seven of them. And there is another boss in here called Grithkull. 
Here's this heal point. Uh, I call it the bear deer. It looks like a bear and a deer. Um, it's actually very dangerous. This is the most skippable one on hardcore and come back to later. It can very easily kill you. I usually don't skip it anymore, but a lot of people do. A lot of people come back here at like level 65. It should die pretty quick, even without swapping to our build. Like, we have a really nice build. Obviously, it'll die 30% faster if you swap. But it still dies pretty fast. Still dies pretty fast. It's just got some bad degens. It kind of hurt. There. Oh, we can grab the fencer helmet. Like, we could get a better helmet. Kind of unlikely since we found that really nice one, but you know, we could. We are at the point now where items roll well enough that they are actually like kind of end game viable. There we got all the seven fireflies. Deliver the fireflies. Then we get one skill point here. Two skill points here. Fare you well. This always feels great. Then another skill point here. Boom, dude. Three skill points. Look at that. Right. We're going to take another mastery here. And this is um, Mana Reservation. So I'm not going to in-depth do Mana Reservation. But it basically lets your auras cost less. So now I can have Determination as well. It makes me a lot tankier. If you feel like you're struggling with Mana at this point, it's not a terrible idea to do Righteous Decree. Uh, we are getting closer to the option of switching to, um, we're getting closer to the option of switching to Blood Magic. Not too far away from that. Not too far away. Yes, Life Tap. That's what I meant. Life Tap. Right, we're going to move south now towards Panopticon. slightly from how we used to do it like when i first started playing this build we would go up here and grabbing night stuff there i'm not a huge fan of that anymore i don't think it's needed so we uh we will go straight down and get an up on and get an extra totem basically changed how i did it a bit in the last event worth doing best area while leveling best area can have really really good rewards yeah it's also good to have at least like three Yellow beasts or four yellow beasts for um, um, fixing flask, like we did earlier on mine. Um, but yeah, even yeah, worth doing, super worth doing. Oh yeah, we'll we'll be changing that for sure, Sai. Sure, we'll change it. I feel like we changed our builds a lot in Gauntlet and throughout the league. I play it very differently now. Kind of end up the same, but I level differently too. Right. Temple of Decay level this 2. A lot of here as well is another place where Blink Arrow is really good. It goes further than Flame Dash. So like, actually here Flame Dash goes, but there's a few of them where Flame Dash doesn't go. Artisan Shrine, it'll give like armor scraps, whetstones, things like that. Or nothing. Wow. Okay. There. More whetstones. Always worth the pick up whetstones and armor scraps. I usually stop when I have like 3,000, just so you have enough wisdoms for the entire league. I can't do this just yet. It's nice to have a large amount. There's also vendor recipes for blacksmith whetstones, for example, for more bl blast blur bubbles. Here's another recipe. We are never going to use that. We have no chaos damage in our build. Now, already now, I do feel like my mana is a little bit annoying. Like, it's not comfortable anymore. Um, but now I'm extremely tanky. We have 11,000 armor now. If I put Bomb Molten Shell, I give me 3.5k extra life. 
Um, that'll be taken before him uh, for my life. The nice shield. Okay, we want to switch to faster attacks here. This guy really likes spiders. Like way too much. There. Stage one down. It's got two. There, we might as well assign more strength. That is pretty much the only move you gotta be careful of. I think even these don't really hurt that much. I think. Yeah, there's not much else that really does damage. It's mostly that that can blast you down. Then she'll just periodically move around until she gets killed. All right. Easy. Easy. I'm so confused that I there's no global announcement for the server shutting down. There would be, right? If they shut down, there would be an announcement. Um, this is a thicket bow, and it is high item level. I'm not going to bother trying to roll high attack speed on it. It's a pretty good battle trick it's got. I think mine's better. I feel like there's usually a shutdown by now. Hmm. All right, we'll just keep running. Appears pretty late though, like 10 minutes. Oh, you're right. Maybe we'll just get a 10 minute warning. Oh, that would suck. We're still explaining most things, thankfully. And I'll keep redoing these every three months anyway. You there, local. Come here. I'll do it. I'll start earlier next time. I had a haircut today. So I was like, eight hours, that's enough. But if we only get seven hours, they usually do end up taking eight hours. Uh, I might, I, I'm done to, I normally wouldn't do this. I'm just ditching determination to have more mana. So we can make sure that we explain everything. There. It smells just like the Theophilus. And then there are all of this for alterations. Watch Getting a higher item level Quicksilver is pretty nice. Yeah, there'll be drops. It's hard to look good when I'm always braving suits. Right, in here you see phasing really comes in handy. Even without me attacking, being able to run literally through the monsters makes it so much safer. You can see that barely anything is hitting me. And I'm running straight face first into a bunch of monsters. Because when they do actually hit me, things actually do a decent amount of damage. Not that much. I'm still a champion, so we are very tanky. But things are literally not even hitting us. And on top of that, we have a really good defense. There. And now we are coming up on... For a lot of people, the hardest thing during the campaign, Dodri. This is the second last time we fight Dodri. And there is a Broadhead Arrow Quiver. That's what we want the most. As I said, attack speed is key on this build. And again, that's just because you want as many fuses as possible in the enemy. It multiply, it multi multiplies your damage. Words are hard, dude. How hard is this game? Can somebody explain? So right now I'm doing a tutorial and the tutorial is eight hours. If that sums it up. So it's basically like a play along. To like teach people how to play the game. It's pretty difficult. Well, it's not that difficult, but it's pretty depth. It's a lot of depth. Right. Um now we're at Dodri. There's a lot of tricks you can do to make Dodri easier. So, she will always jump a few seconds after coming down. So you can place your totems 
they're in a good spot. Now, we would kill her before having to do this, but especially if you're on a lower damage build, clicking the valve will make the debuff she's doing go away, give you a few seconds of being able to attack her, and resets everything. So, a lot of people don't even know that there's a valve you can click. And be scared of the thing on the ground. Ow. It just makes her a lot weaker. Oops. After that, I need a bath. Oh, we can pick up the chest. There is a valve. Yep. Figured I'd mention it since I know a lot of people don't know that it exists. Be able to go through those. Match. Totally didn't know that. Yep. Been playing for six years. Didn't know about the valve. Wow. We're just going to run through here. There is a side quest. Uh, there is a side quest in this zone. It is uh, Clarissa. She is back. And she wants you to help resurrect her dead boyfriend from Act 2. So she's down here. Uh, or rather, the, the item you need to pick up is down there. It's just a green Ankh quest item. And you normally just pick it up. And um, then you bring it to the end of the zone. And I'm going to show you a neat little trick that I really like. Trying to go a little bit faster just to show and explain things. Right. So she is to the right here. However, um, normally the zones are quite a lot worse. And there'll be a point where it splits off like this. I put a portal there. And then I go back to it later. Now I've done literally zero backtracking. Which I'm a big fan of. I've never in a game been a big fan of like running Paros things that I've already killed. So whenever there's like that big split, which is near the end of the zone, um, I put a portal there and then come back to it later. You'll learn that eventually. Like it's more of a trial by error kind of thing. And then you can go back and do it now. Um, or you can like go after this zone. Because there's a skill point in this zone too. I am actually going to skip it. There's not really much to tell you about the fight. Um, it's basically you're just fighting Tolman. <gasps> um, and he will do that corpse explosion. So you just stay out of the red circles on the ground. Here, it actually points you in the right direction to go. In front of every door you're supposed to go, there's a dead corpse. Or where you're coming from. So either way, what way are we going? And then here is the Gemling Legionnaires. These were like the first people able to use gems. These will give you a skill point. E. Here you see another corpse. Honorable literally beast. chopped in half. My gift to you, As opposed to a living corpse. There are living corpses in this game. So yes, this is opposed to a living corpse. It is in fact dead. There, there, there are, there are dead corpses, and live, living corpses. Then we have zombies. Taking on delirium. Nothing good. It's just random items. I'm just gonna end. Wailing greed. This is great. Definitely want to do that. That'll guarantee like 40 to 50 life on an item. Depends if you use it on a chest or a glove. Oh, it's actually 60 to 69. Or 70 to 79. Wow, it's great. Great on chest. Way even better than I thought. I thought it was 50 at that level, but... So much life guaranteed. Nice. And then we're just going to grab the waypoint here. And now I can go back to that other zone where I have the portal. We are just going to run past though and ignore it. Wait! We didn't get a 10 minute warning either. What if they don't warn me? What if there's no warning? What if they just do it? No, they will patch it. Because they it's to show off their um, cosmetics. So they do it they do it before the um they usually do it a while before the actual announcement. Because they need it up by the time the announcement goes live. Maybe they're stalling to help my playthrough. So like, it, it won't be at the same time as the announcement. They, it, it needs to be up by then. Right. 
Now you grab that waypoint and then now is actually a pretty great leveling zone outside here. Um, so you don't need to go do this quest right away. You can go to one of the next zones we're going to, which is Harbor Bridge. A really, really good place to level. Uh, if you're a character that doesn't need or doesn't plan on farming a tabula and blood aqueduct. Um, and stuff like that. There. See, how are we on accuracy now? Yeah, we're using precision, so we're on 99%. There, I can keep that. Essences are great. It feels are really fast too now. You see that we're clearing a lot better than before. We do a decent amount of damage. I'm realistically not hitting three, so we're just going to end it now. There. We move on. And as far as like reading these zones and the layouts and stuff, that's not very important. This makes you go faster. You're playing the best build in the meta though. The, the entire build, the, the entire video is for people following. Literally this, this video isn't for people doing a different build. This is literally just for this build. That's why we chose this build too. It's not the easiest build to play for a new player. I honestly feel like if you're following a video like this, then most people can can do it even though it's a slightly more advanced build because like very often people will do a build that's pretty bad um but is really strong in the campaign and just falls apart in maps so a lot of new players will um yeah just get to maps and then they don't have a build this isn't too bad but we're not going to use it um don't really want it there's no resist on it do i have any woe essences not any high ones though. Rip. So basically the same as my existing one. Eh, I can't be bothered switching. I was hoping to get a decent amount of life, basically. Essence of Woe is really good for keyboard crafting. Uh, quiver crafting. I can't do this just yet. Is this a dead end? Yep. Then we have to go out of here to the right. We have a better helmet than Strakonia. 120 life. Also never gonna get three red on a Strakonia. All right, we're out. Now we need to go to the opposite side of this act and get the blue similar boss to the one we just killed. And then we need to fight the end boss of this act. And then we're in act nine. Nine is pretty fast. Here's the waypoint. There, right. and here is a really good farming spot, especially in dangerous events. This is better than the next zone. The next zone is very popular because it drops a divination card for one of the best uh, leveling items called the Tabula Rasa. Tabula Rasa is a six link chest. Um, just screw over on mana cost, though. But it's very, very popular for leveling. Thank you, Gold. Alright. We have one hour left, minus whatever time they make the patch. So, yeah, I really like leveling here, especially if you have a build that kills all three sides at once. And we actually do kill quite a lot of the sides. Our uh, explosive arrow like hits the side and, and starts killing things there. Things climb up and stuff. We might get DC'd in three minutes. Maybe. They usually do it an hour early. Pick the contempt. Either way, we've done most of it. Most of it. And we'll continue tomorrow. There's no way this league is boat league. All right, let's see. We're going to move through here. We got the waypoint. There's some other areas of the zone too. 
That is a side boss called Yugul, which gives you a skill point. And um, there is a... Uh, that's part of how you ascend. As well, to the, the third. The third lab. I'm trying to think, what else do we need to explain? We'll just explain things on the way. There's not too much left. Up asking if uh, I think my league start was sub three hours to match. Was it sub four hours? Yeah. Hey, there it is. Okay, I have 30 minutes. I can't do this just yet. I have 30 minutes. Oh, there was early. Always. Thanks, GGG. At least they didn't do it now. Okay. We're going to try to go zoomies. So I can try to explain everything for the rest of the run. I thought I had one extra hour. Actually, that's not true. I thought I had 30 minutes more. Would have been more than enough. There's less and less to explain the further you get in Path of Exile. Well, that's not true. Less than a beginner guide. In the campaign, it's less and less to explain. A lot of the information is very front-loaded. And then we'll take feedback on this one as well after. And we will do another one in three months. There's only Syndicate left. I'm not explaining Syndicate. It's a 20 minute explanation. Even for basic shit. Like, I do have a video on it that's very good. Should make a new one, actually. And a lot of things we're going to be covering tomorrow. Like, end game, getting ready for maps. Stuff like that. Like, we're continuing this tomorrow. Just want to get to maps. There. All right. And then we just have to kill this boss and then we are almost at act nine. We have one more boss to kill. It's easy to get to that one. There. This one is more dangerous. This one actually has a few attacks that could kill you. Um, that one hurts, but it has like a barrage attack. That's actually pretty crazy. Uh, that one. That, that one can actually kill you. There's a recipe up here for minions. We don't like minions. There. And then now we're just going to run in here. We also have not picked up. Because I've not picked up all my skill points. Then we're going to move down here. Did I bring out the orb entirely? Ooh, thanks chat. It dropped so fast. I'm trying to be fast. Thanks. What would I do without chat? Maybe I need a tutorial. Right there. It is all picked up. I'll grab the skill point too while I'm here. Nothing else. We're going to be missing a few skill points too. There. I can't do this just yet. There. And then we'll make a new zone as well. There's no reason to do this except the fact that you want to kill more things. Yeah, the bridge is really good. I love leveling here. I usually don't farm a tabula. There's no need. Like the build is strong enough without it. Most beginners won't be in time to need to reset. That's true. The instances only last like 8 to 15 minutes. You are right. Oh, let's swap that in. Yeah. 
There, and as you can see, we have really good damage. And we're not even, like, overleveled now. We're just on par. And we're on a 4 link. And you can get a lot of damage by overleveling. And the zone right before here is perfect for overleveling. Ow. The spare is very dangerous. You always want to go behind her when she does the spare. You want to stay out of degens on the ground. And you want to stay out of uh, her, like, big ceiling attack. You can see this does do you a decent amount of damage. That one doesn't do that much, but her, like, spear. This one. Nope. Oh, she's... Are you going to do it? There she is. That does a lot of damage. She was about to do it. You can see, like, she puts something down and then gets ready. It's ready to spare you. Right, pretty scary. Solaris, Lunaris. Hey, no crazy items. We're just going to move on through. Eclipse calls five. There. We're just going to run through. We are just going to run through. So this is a very, very good farming zone, arguably better than the last, depends if you need a tabula or not, does have more scary monsters, the revenants can kill you, they're very scary, um, shit, I have to go to the bathroom as well, I'm not gonna make it 25 minutes without, oh, and I have to play enough ads before, um, like, I want to make sure I've played enough ads that we don't have any ads during the announcement. Or people will kill me. I gotta play ads now anyway. That's good. I'll go pee. Yeah, this is, uh, this drops the humility cards here. Yeah, I'll play ads now. I'll go to the bathroom. Don't worry, we have ad block. Actually, a lot of people turn off that for my stream since I... Only play ads when there's nothing happening. I can't do this just yet. Actually, only 10% of you use that. I will be right back. Come back. 
I'm getting a new chair, actually. I'm getting, um... Um... You can go. Oh, you must have... What am I getting? Herman Miller. Didn't get any ads? Not everybody will get them. Depends where you live. Pretty sure it's a body I bought. It's actually impossible to get to Belfast. They're like, literally reached out and are like... But especially shipping it to me. I'm pretty excited. I can't do this just yet. It's funny, Noogie got the last chair to Belfast. For Brexit. Drop start in 50 minutes. Yeah, you don't get ads of yours, so. And I, I try to be very careful with when and how I play ads. Right, let's see. We're just going to keep racing through here. We have 20 minutes left. Technically, I can make it. We just got to really zoom. Do explanations on the fly. Want to make sure we don't miss anything. And we also want the character in Act 10. Didn't see now we're like really zooming with the blink arrow set up and you sort of get a rough idea of how I play with that. Um, with a blink arrow followed by flame dash. You can always finish the axe tomorrow. Yeah, I just want to have as much in the video for people as possible so they can see what I do with skill points and stuff. But we are also making a new guide for this build which should be exactly what we're doing in this video but it will be like loads of stuff. I like, I like, um, I like doing a new one of these. If I was really dedicated, I would do one of these for each one of my build guides. I'm not that dedicated. One every three months is enough. It's surprisingly tiring to try to explain every aspect of the game that you can think of. And then you also, at the same time, have to try to not over explain things or explain useless things. Wait, I missed something. No, I haven't. I don't need that. That's just a side skill point. So there is a another thing in the uh, Wisteria Desert that unlocks that cider, which is another skill point. You do want to do that. You just clear the zone and you'll find it. Sounds like a quick way to burn out. Yeah, I wouldn't do that. There. We're level 60. This is a great level. It means we can use Divine Life Blast. And that will be your end game life loss. There are no better tiers of life loss after that. And now there's maybe some not new players going like, wait a minute. What about eternal life loss? So the next tier of life loss is level 60. Uh, it's called divine life loss. And after that, there is one called eternal life loss. However, it is worse. It is worse as long as you want it to be instant or bubbling. It is only better if you want it to be strictly healing over time. Which you generally never want your life class to be. In before this changes this patch. Yeah, okay. It's not. Why would they change that? That makes no sense. I'm not gonna change that. So divine is the best. And you want your class to be rolled with bubbling or seething. My spirit is spent. Hi. There, we got a ring. We don't need any of the other items. Items is the hardest thing about this game. In the start, you're going to be a hoarder. You'll probably identify and look at every single rare item you find. You'll be scared. Um, if you have friends that play the game, you're going to be messaging them. Is this good? Is this good? Uh, this is a respect quest, actually. Killing this guy. Hold her back. Um, and it's terrifying. It's awful. And that's how they get you. Because then you're going to want to buy more stash space. And you're gonna to want to buy more stash space. I can't do this just yet. Everybody's allowed to stream the re expansion reveal. Yep, absolutely everybody. Everybody has drops as well. I have better drops though. They're cooler drops. They drop harder. But yeah, so it's it's. Don't be scared if you're like a little confused at like me picking up items and stuff. Like, I, I did try to explain it, right? Like, we're focusing very hard. Like, we want new boots. Um, gloves now, again, I would care more about picking them up, right? We're a little bit later, so the item levels are a little higher. We can find slightly better loot. 
Um, in here is the next trial. We're going to skip that. We don't need that right now. We'll go back for that later. For the third lab. And then helmet. Like, and I, I will always pick up like two by two items for alterations and stuff like that. Because you can always get an upgrade. But on Path of Exile, it just becomes at some point like, well, am I going to get an upgrade realistically? Is it realistically going to be better than mine? Let's say, let's say I had a helmet, right? With 120 life and 40 uh, fire and 40 cold res. And then a third slot for like something like spell suppression or maybe a third res or chaos res. Yeah, I'm realistically not finding a better item than that. So then I'm probably going to stop focusing on... Um, Stop focusing on, on trying for getting things. Forty five minutes, yeah. Well we actually only have fifteen. Fifteen. I I would do champion in software if you're a new player. If you know what you're doing, elementless can be fine, but I don't recommend it. By fifteen, because that's what it Shuts down. It's all gone. Right. Now we're in the refinery. As long as you have the basilisk acid and um, the item from the refinery, that's all the horcruxes you need to open the next area. It's not seven like Harry Potter. All right. This guy that we're about to fight is incredibly tanky. Absolutely going to be switching to faster attacks for this guy. And honestly, normally I would want to be more overleveled on hardcore for this. We're going to have a little bit low damage. I very frequently level all the way to 65 to 70 before doing Act 9 and 10. It's very common on hardcore. Because you're never going to rush straight into maps anyway on hardcore. You, like, you really want to get a bunch of gear and you want to get some levels. As you can tell, it's starting to get tanky now. It'll be fine for software, but definitely would not mind. You see, there's like earthquake on the ground as well. There's aftershock. There's loads of just damage everywhere, dude. He's a mean dude. Ow. Tries to explode everywhere. There, you have some chance orbs. I can't do this just yet. Very tanky. I'm going to go back to LMP for a bit because now we need to go through a very dangerous area. This guy sucks. Yeah, it he has like more HP than anything. Even the end boss doesn't have that much, I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure the end boss doesn't have that much. Belly of the beast. He has block, that's why. Yeah, maybe that's just it. He's, he's a main dude. Arcanist Shrine, these are really good. And the first shrine you're going to encounter that is worth rolling. It's worth getting either additional items or a percentage quantity. I, especially in early maps and campaign, prefer additional item drops. Because quantity seems to scale more off, you know, other quantity and there's no other sources at the moment we haven't gotten to that point yet so additional items is the best thing you can do here you can see it would be amazing to have bleed immune this would be good to have on a mana flask at this point and we're getting absolutely shredded by bleed and we don't have any defense against damage over time we have very very large defense against hits but there are two different damage types um damage over time and hits that are very very different but we have we have nothing right now against damage over time and they've also recently buffed damage over time or rather they they buffed damage over time massively then nerfed the player's damage over time and i think they just forgot to nerf monster damage over time because everything that has the damage over time thing like ignite which is what we're going to be using later or bleed or poison just in time. very scary I thought drops additional items were literally items and not currency. Nope, not from an Arcanist. The only non-currency an Arcanist can drop is a unique item. If you get drops one additional unique item. Just in time. 
Like there's no unique currency. There. So much damage, dude. More revenants that we covered in Blood Aqueduct. They're bad. Scary. And now we are about to be almost at the last time of Chavron Dodri and Maligaro. Already am drops enabled, yeah. There. I can't do this just yet. Wouldn't steel skin work? Yes. I'm not gonna use that though. It's fine. We'll get bleed immune on potion in not too long. Here is also a good time to switch to faster attacks. Any boss that's kinda tanky. Like I said, normally I would overlevel quite a lot more before this. Most people do. Even on softcore, most people get to at least 64 before doing this. So you are missing 30% damage. So basically the same as a link. Most people don't do this a little 60. Even on software, you want to be at least like 64 to 66 before mapping. Kind of wasted if you're not. Unfortunately, rushing a little bit. How do you fight this Chevron version as melee? She does different moves when you're in literal melee. It's not too bad. Not too bad. See how much do I have left? I have nine minutes left. Hmm. Stutter again. Can you see the hits? Like this is actually very, very high damage for a lot of other builds. Like, like we would have died three times on some other builds. But since that is hit based, it does nothing. Whereas you saw the bleeds for like doing a lot. And we're like I said, we are quite under leveled too. Nine minutes should be plenty of time. Nah, because we have a damage issue. We, we don't have a chance to get Kitava. Because normally later, if we had leveled appropriately, this fight would have been over in 10 to 15 seconds. But right now, we're just missing a lot of gem levels. Very under leveled now. But that's okay. It's not the end of the world. Um, we have explained most things. My spirit is spent. Do we stream started? Yeah. There's no reason to watch that though. Not gonna happen anything for another 40 minutes. Yes, or she got a surprising amount of chaos orbs. All right, Malagaro. So he has two phases. He will, he'll get him like kind of low, and then he'll start summoning clones. Whenever we get any P V two details, I doubt it. I sincerely doubt it. I so sincerely doubt it. I would be shook. I would be shook. I'm actually feeling a really pog announcement. I'm feeling it's going to be good. I think it's just going to be so good if they're not going to nerf much. I'm excited for that alone. Because this was already such a great league. I think a lot of people that skip the league are kind of terrified. They're like, please don't be trash, please don't be trash. Because they probably feel a little bad that they skipped a really good league. So I bet you there's a lot of people who are like, please don't be trash, please don't be trash. So it's like actually the best PoE league ever. Yep, that's me, yeah. Right. This is our last time fighting uh, Dodri, Malagaro, and Chavron. 
Now we definitely have like I would consider this very low damage. And that's all just from like being under leveled. Um, we're also missing um damage steel points. Like we would have normally we would have one additional totem. We would have five totems. So we would have I'd say like 60% more damage. Because not only are we getting one more totem, but we would also be getting higher level on the gems. So just a large amount more damage. Let's try bunk. Give me mana. Not that much to do next ten. I don't have time though. We'll probably end it after killing this. The only thing to do in Act Ten is um I have no mana. The only thing to do in Act 10 is basically re-kill Innocence, or reincarnate Innocence, and then you have to kill Kitava. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll do this at the start of the end game leveling tomorrow, and then we'll do the start of maps as if you're a new player. But I think I will level this. What I'll do, this is what I'll do for the people watching on YouTube. I'm going to continue leveling this character off stream after the video. Uh, before tomorrow and then we'll include the changes at the start of the end game video um because it shouldn't be that much and uh, we'll level up to like 65 or 68 or something and then tomorrow we'll do act 9 at the start of the video and the start of maps so that's the plan either way i hope you guys enjoyed the everything explained the main thing we wanted to try for this one was not over explaining everything so i've tried only explaining what we're doing we're not overloading with a lot of information. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please give feedback on what you liked, what you didn't like, what can be done differently uh, next time because we're going to be doing uh, one of these every three months. So thank you so much for watching on YouTube. Sub if you liked the video. And more importantly, try to die less than I do.